Welcome to EPT 2023. I'm cleaning for my cat. I'll take up there. Baleo bags the first ever EPT Paris trophy. I'm about to change the world today. I'm calling shots that came to play. I think I'm back. Watson does the double in Monte Carlo. He won the foot, he won the foot. And I got me, huh? <laughs> Witsiak makes the call and wins EPT Barcelona. It's time to crown our next champion. Who will be next? Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made yeah. the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Cyprus and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day five of the 5K main event. Coming to you from the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa, the penultimate day of the main event, playing down from the last two tables to the final table. 16 players coming into the day. By the close of play, we should have our final six. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Mr. Nicholas Walsh. Hello, hello, thank you so much for having me. And this is the second to last day of the festival. That means just one day left of streaming after today. We'll watch them play down to six, and tomorrow we'll watch them play down from six to a champion. And a reminder that we are going to be live tomorrow at the slightly later time of 1 p.m. That's 1300 Eastern European summertime. That is noon Central European summertime. So a 30 minute delay or a half hour later with our on air time tomorrow across Twitch and YouTube. And a reminder that if you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, you can use the live chat to get in touch. Over the course of the day, we welcome your questions and comments with the caveat that Chat Pro Saturday is not a thing. Twitch, YouTube, we're on X, formerly known as Twitter, using the hashtag PokerStarsTV. And of course, there's good stuff going on on Facebook and Instagram as well. So we played down to 16 with 37 minutes left on level 25. We'll pick up where we left off with the blinds at 20K, 40K, with a 40K big blind ante. Let's take a look at who the chip leaders are coming into day five of this main event. Starting with the shorter stacks. Only one player who is approaching the danger zone. Danger zone. Alessandro Minnesi with 15 bigs. Everyone else hovering around the 30 big blind mark or above. Pretty deep stack right now. The top end of the leaderboard includes two players who are going to be on the main stage at our first feature table. Both Andrea Dato and Gilles Simon are going to be at the feature table, 153 and 110 big blinds, respectively. Former November Niner, Kenny Hallett, also in the top five. Nathan Tatar was chip leader for most of yesterday. He is fifth in chips. And yeah, well now we're down to two tables. We'll try and stay across as much of the action at both tables as we can. But of course, only eight of the 16 players can take a seat on the main stage. These are those eight players. Hello, Interesting, if we look at it from a seat Hello. assignment point of view, Dato and Simon sat next to each other. Hmm. Your bluff was amazing, my friend. You're, you're really good. Tell your bluff. We also have you, the shorter stack in the tournament, <laughs> Alessandro <laughs> Minassi. It, it was good, appreciate it. And we will play out the 2040 blind level and then roll straight into the next level. We've been recording the whole time. Where there is a camera, always assume someone is watching you. Actually, in 2023, just assume there's always a camera. 
And if there is a microphone pinned to you, assume that someone is listening. Always watching, Wazowski. Always watching. So you know the drill about virtual all-in. We already spoke about it yesterday. You know our policy. Oh, soft hand for hand. If you leave a, like an irrelevant amount behind and facing an aggression, you will put, be put on 30 second clock for the first decision. You won't be able to use any time bank cards. And then if you decide to forfeit your stack at this, point, at this moment and play with a small amount, all your decision will be put on the five second clock. <laughs> We were talking about it three days in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's a big topic. <laughs> it's important everyone's got the message. Just so you know, it's from uh, the very beginning of the bubble, yeah? Today I'm we will use the stop and for end process. So basically, we're not going to synchronize the table really sharply. We will really keep a track of ends. But every time we will be on a pay jump, we will do what we say, what we call end, stop and for end. So if there's only an all in call on one table, <coughs> I will freeze the action on this table, mm -hmm. wait for the other table to complete the action. Obviously, we'll close the clock at this moment. Why and were we doing it? Because Why? we have pay jump. So basically, when there is a pay jump, and you know that there, there is an all in player uh, over there, ah, you just have to wait for the players to do it. No, 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 not okay situation when two are all in in the same time, yeah? No, we're not talking about this. If, if they're all in the same time on the same hand, and they just bust together, they will, we will split the prices. Split, not stacks, not stack sizes. But no, no, not stack sizes, different table we split. But during the hand that has stopped and for hand, we will freeze the action on one table if there's no end and call, pause the clock, wait for the other table to finish, and then do the showdown on your table so that there will be no uh, people waiting for one, of the two, one player to bust and so on. Okay, Joe, you can draw for the bottom. So, like this. Pardunian mentioning, oh, we've already heard this spiel. I promise you there will be someone today that doesn't understand how it all works. Yeah, and at some point in the next hour or two, somebody will make exactly the mistake that he's describing. Correct. You you're, uh, played with glasses first day, yeah? Drawing for the button at the feature table. No, I, I played with glasses every time I played the TV table. Ah, button is in C5. Ah, yeah. It's not comfortable for you. And looks like we're almost ready to go. Get the clock running. Kick off the action here on day five. That's your box, yeah? Yep. Yeah? Two yeah. Two so, so that's mine. Yes. And save yourself here. This is not your box, this is yours. I know. And mine, I Thank you. <laughs> I wish you all the best of luck. Have a nice day. Oh, well, now Dato's an expert. <laughs> here we go. Action underway. The remainder of level 25 of the EPC Cyprus main event blinds 20,000, 40,000 with a 40k big blind ante. The penultimate day of this 5k tournament. We started with 1,320 total entries. 16 players remain. By the end of today, we should be down to our final six. One fold. First hand of the day, action has been folded to Timur Three Vardanian. 2-4 we were playing here. 2-4. 24, yeah. Here we go. Kind of uh, annoying to have to open this hand and not be able to five or six bet get it in. <laughs> Although maybe he'll get the chance. Yeah, uh, an opportunity for a, for a four bet potential. So rounds the blinds, Halil Tassirak folds the small. Chip leader Andrea Dato is in the big. All right, yeah, the five trade defend here in the big blind. Dato Dominato. Well, that is a pair of threes for Dato. Both players with straight draws. Vardanian with the backdoor flush draw. How the heck is Ace Five so far behind here? Feels like it should be ahead. Yeah, I think you could probably just check here if you want. I mean, probably 
pretty close between checking and betting with the gut shot. This feels like the kind of board that's going to hit the big blind range pretty hard, though. And you do have showdown with the ace high, so not necessarily required to inflate the pot, but I can see the value in both lines. So 220k in the middle is going to be a bet. Yeah, around half pot, and that's the kind of size you're going to want to use on these sort of low coordinated textures. If you do have a continue at all, just because if you do have some stronger hands than ace five, maybe some over pairs, for example, jacks, kings, queens, um, you're going to want to really apply pressure to these sort of one pair flush draw type hand, one pair straight draw type hands as well. Possibly just some direct straight draws with over cards, like maybe like a hand like queen five of spades. Dato calls the 175, taking us to the turn. The king of hearts, so it's Dato who picks up the flush draw on the turn. 87% chance to win the pot outright. While Danny and drawing pretty thin. So frustrating. How are you supposed to know you're this far ahead right now? Dato checks. <clears throat> and Vardanian checks behind. And the river card is a four, and they are both playing a straight to the six. It took a while, but finally, finally we're going to chop one up. I know we had one, but still. Oh, we had several yesterday. I don't think I was. You weren't here. Here for any of them. I think this is only my second. Do I have infinite time? It must at least be your third. We have one with Maria. Ah, oh, it is my third. You're right. Hundred and forty-five thousand. That was very precise, very specific. Does he even have the change to be able to? Okay. Yeah, we got <laughs> the five K chips are still in play. I thought he said one hundred and forty-nine thousand. So the greens, the lime green chips, the twenty-five Ks, the blues, the five Ks, and the, I guess they're red and black. Those are the hundred Ks. Straight. You both have a straight. This is a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. Seems pretty reasonable. I'm liking Dato's color scheme today. The black and yellow. Start of the day as chip leader, still holding the chip lead right now. More than 150 big blinds and still more than 30 minutes until the blinds go up. Dato and Simon in the blinds. That means the short stack, Alessandro Manassi, will be first to act. Starting the hand with a 15 big blind stack. King five off. Really? No. <laughs> Well, Froggen has folded. Queen, Jack of Hearts, the team of Ardanian. A not unattractive hand, Nick. No, very sexy hand indeed. Queen, Jack, Suiting. Uh, definitely one you want to play here. So Vardanian, just really quick, guys. Looking at about 44 big blinds. Four 
Not going to miss this moment. A bet of 80,000, and the hood goes up. Now, this is new MO for Vardanian. Is this something that he's seen looking back at the stream that maybe he was giving away information? Maybe he just doesn't want to stare at the person next to him this time. Maybe it's player specific. Simon defending his big blind with deuces. And we have an ace 4 4 flop. So deuces still ahead. Action goes check, check. Nine of clubs on the turn. Gilles is now almost a three to one favorite. Check. Quite surprised not to see a continue on ace 4 4, but I think Queen High can get to show down here plenty and be good too. Especially now, right? Yeah, but if Queen Jack is checking flop and turn, the intention is probably get to show down, getting to show down, and therefore the deuce is probably make it there too, and we'll probably win this pot most of the time. If you were going to bluff, you would have bluffed on a previous street, I imagine. This is a great run out for Queen Jack to still be winning, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and the deuces yeah. just get to show down for free. I think just a single bet on the flop probably would have got the job done. Maybe sometimes it'll take two, but there you go. Unfortunately for the Queen Jack, this time deuce is going to take it down. So Gilles Simon started today second on the leaderboard. He, of course, was the winner of Dare to Stream back in 2019, earning himself a platinum pass. We spoke to him before he took his seat at the feature table today. And when you, when you began uh, streaming on yeah. Twitch, could you have believed that you'd get to this stage? Did you always have the belief there? I don't know. I always took things like a little bit more short to midterm, step by step. So I wasn't really thinking ahead of like playing at this kind of a stage in the future. But I mean, maybe looking back, uh, I obviously had that dream and had that belief and now for it to become reality, you know, me from uh, what's it been now, four or five years ago would definitely be proud of uh, making it here. And your stack, you've got a lovely stack to work yes. with. Do you think we're going to see an aggressive view today or are you just going to play as it comes? I think you'll have to find out by just watching. And finally, your opponents, what do you think of the remaining field? Some strong players still left in there. Yeah, there's a couple of players in there still that uh, I also play with once in a while online. Uh, there's a couple of uh, really good other players that I hadn't played with before, I wasn't really familiar with, right? Uh, with Cyprus bringing in some other people from different corners in the world, I'd say, um, to the usual EPT slots. So yeah, I think overall the remaining field is, is definitely not uh, to be underestimated. But I'm just going to play my game and see where that gets me. When we come back to the feature table with the action on Gilles. With an ace cracker. Yeah, 9 8 suited, facing the raise from Cousin Kai. He calls. By the way, I don't think you remember, Joe, but in the PSPC, not only did we have Platinum Pass winner Gilles Simon, there was also a French Platinum Pass winner called Simon Gilles. And the problem <laughs> I do remember Simon Gilles, yeah. is the player list. Sometimes the first names and last names get reversed. Yeah. So it was often hard to work out which player was which. Was there um, a moment we thought someone had entered twice? Did that happen? The different flags made us think that probably it was two people with similar, if not identical, names. So... Top pair here for Gilles. Obviously, Cousin Kite still a big favorite with the over pair to the board. Didn't a dude named Gilles win Dublin? No, you're thinking of Gilles Bernier, who was the runner up, runner up. to Dmitry Abanovic in EPT Dublin 2016. Yeah, that really weird breathing pattern. Yeah. We 
got two hands here with potential crack aces. I'd be hoping to be a lot further ahead than this on a 9-7 deuce flop. Yeah, well, we're going heads up to the turn. Huh. And that's the folded. Okay, well, neither player has a spade. Three of spades on the turn means Kozenkai is now a 9-1 to one favorite. Interestingly, Bjorn Kozenkai only has $70,000 in live earnings, and his best live cash is 10K, so he's already bested that with 16 remaining. So Kozenkai here betting 155K into 280 on the flop. I think this is probably a card that he slows down on a bunch, but I can see the value in continuing as well. Plenty of one pair flush draw combos mm -hmm. here. So yeah, it does continue and not slowing it down in fear of spades, which I, which I dig. And 330,000, so nice, nice chunky size here into that 590. Uh, I would argue this is a very confident turn bet Definitely an opportunity to get away from that nine, but it is hard to fold top pairs in, in the game of Texas Hold'em. Nice work there from uh, from Gilly, though. I reserve the right to say whether or not it's nice work because I don't know what the river card was. If it was a <laughs> nine or an eight on the river, I think it's a bad fold. <laughs> You're only going to get so many chances to crack aces. You really shouldn't be giving up on them quite so often. I-M-O. I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood today. I, um, I bit my lip real bad at breakfast. Ooh, that sucks. I hate that. And uh, it was in the middle of answering a real dumb question from Griffin. Oh, that's even worse. So now I'm, I'm mad at the world and furious with Griffin. Like, my mouth should have been moving in the first place. <laughs> Here's a hand you're going to want to play pretty much every time. U2G plus two, Schumacher, ace, nine, clubs. Let's go. 80K. There you go. Just the min as is customary these days. Dotto does have a pretty hand here, gang. So Dotto, 153 big blinds deep. Schumacher at just 32. This is not the most unreasonable three betting hand. I actually would love to okay. see a three bet from Dotto here, but three betting, I get it. Makes sense. Chip leader passing, I think I like a little bit more. Yep. Because what happens when somebody in the small blind gets ace king? Oof. I was only off by two. <laughs> and by two, I mean both cards. Yeah, I think fly, I think folding is also totally cool there as well. I mean. Jack Nine suited probably plays better as a call from absolute position on the button, but even then, definitely not no no shame in folding that one. By the way, I would like to just start off by apologizing to this fucking guy. Yeah. I'm sure he's heard this his whole life, right? There's no way that I'm the first person to think to look and I go, oh, this fucking guy. But it's new to us. And there's so very little things for us to riff about. So I just have to say I'm sorry. I'm sure he will eventually hear your apology, Joe, and hopefully appreciate it slash understand it. <coughs> Uh-oh, time's running out. Fog and firing with the open ender. Top pair for Schumacher. <laughs> top hat, top kicker. Improvement for well, I guess technically an improvement, right? I hate that. Pair of sevens now for Foggin. Yeah, I feel like Mr. Foggin probably 
won't be uh, won't be that unimpressed with the memes, especially if he were to take on and go on and win this tournament, right, Joe? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure he'd be very happy to be this fucking guy who is also this fucking guy who won <laughs> EPT Cyprus. Yeah, interesting spot. You probably can find another barrel here, but I think a check is also not completely unreasonable. Just to try and control the pot a little bit, hopefully not blasting off into a seven. I think generally speaking, you're going to want to fire a second bullet here, though, and at this stack depth, maybe 300, something like that. I'll take it. It's actually closer to the pot, but I, I do prefer larger sizing here. A little protection there. Yep, definitely a texture where you get plenty of value from certain hands and also a little bit of protection, as Joe said. So nice pot there for uh, for Schumacher, up to 40 bigs now. Still got quite a few hands to play at 2040 before the blinds go up to 2550. A reminder, we're going to roll straight into the next blind level, just playing out the last half or last section of the level we were at last night when we got down to 16. Next redraw, by the way, we'll, is when we get to nine. Once there have been seven eliminations, we'll be at a single table of nine. Final redraw of the tournament takes place, but then we continue until we're down to six and those six players return tomorrow for the final day playing for the trophy title and first prize of just over a million us dollars simon opening from the cutoff with queen 10 round to the blinds mark Foggin has six five off folds the small timo vardanian in the big has ace deuce Guy is such a goober. He went from staring people down yesterday to just completely hiding everything today. I am enjoying the theatrics. Yeah, I do like the uh, the pomp and circumstance here. So much of poker is a performance, you know, guys. Five seconds. Three ten. We raise. 310,000. 310K is the three bet. No live read this time. Don't tell him it's working. Especially if you're lying down on the table, I'm not going to be able to tell shit. Mm -hmm. If it was at 2011 or something like that, that's, that's not the reason, you know? You can do it with one card, not two. Yeah, there was that ridiculous hand yesterday between Timo Vardanian and Gilles Simon, ace-10 versus ace-queen. We had the five-bet bluff from Vardanian with ace-10, who then snap-folded to the six-bet jam from Gilles Simon. Felt like poker from more than 10 years ago, but I was here for it. It was fun. Yeah, very cool stuff. I just have my idea. It's not the game. Vardanian has been an above average stack for most of this tournament, has more than 100k in live earnings, but mainly plays his poker in Eastern Europe. I just felt like gambling. I just felt like gambling. You just fell it. You don't think about timing, okay? I had a good hand, I had to go all in. It's a good hand to go blood, but I prefer to have suited combos. Okay. <coughs> Five seconds. You know, in most table tournaments, we often have the situation that you will prefer the suited combos, but you have not even this sort of hand. He prefers suited combos. I prefer pepperoni pizza combos. <laughs> 
Well, Danian versus Cousin Kai, blind v blind, unraised prey. Club. Join the club. If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club. I'm probably the only person here who remembers those commercials. I just referenced combos. It's a snack people in America haven't even eaten since the 90s. It works on like the. You want a three piece combo with that, sir? I do love a three piece combo. Yeah. You're guaranteed to get at least a little dark meat in there. So, considerable draw here for Kazinkai. Not that he needs it. Well, no club on the river, but Kozenkai still has the best hand with ace high. Can Vardanian push him off it? There's 190k on the turn. Card. Everyone would have gotten an additional six cards today to go with any they've saved over the last two days of play. Yeah, I think Vardanian just kind of thinking to himself, blocking Queen Jack. Do I want to fire here, try and rep something? Yeah, but what is he unblocking? <coughs> You owe another card, buddy. Seems like there might be more better uses for this later. Yeah. That's more comma better, not more better, which isn't a thing. I'm also not a huge believer in like, oh, I've taken too long. You know, sometimes people say I've taken I too long. I think that, but I think that's a myth. You're right. I'm I, with you on that. But, but I do think that this is quite an extended use here and I don't know if maybe that might work in his favor or against it really depends on the opponent doesn't it Joe this would be he's sick. gone pretty chunky there was 500,000 in the pot and he's gone close to full pot 450k and no ace high hero call from Kozenkai very nice time banks well spent Certainly not playing like a fellow who's got only $103,000 in live mm. earnings. What is happening? I'm not sure. I thought all those sites were blocked here. Yeah. Well, maybe someone's making their own entertainment at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Manassi with jack six of spades faults. Yeah, I figured this might put my Yeah, it's tough with the legs. Nine deuce of spades for Mark Foggin. You did it too high, yeah? Hmm? You did it too That's high? That's a fault. Three faults. You said he did it too high? Yeah, me. I, I, I was doing something like this at the, my first TV days ago or something like that. Yeah, the deck's a little different. Six, three of diamonds, so Vardanian not insane, played the button. Insanely at this box, and the player from your box said that he, he, he saw my cards. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too, like, with the, the time thing here, mm. like, being CD8, it's always good. Five, four. Thanks. 
Awesome Kai completes in the small with five deuce. Schumacher with Jack 10 in the big. Checks his option, we're going to the flop. And we have a queen nine four flop. So the open ended straight draw for Schumacher, who's still ahead with Jack High. Kuzenka might be tempted to uh, to just put in a small bet right here right now. Plenty of folds in a limped pot here, but obviously not going to get Jack 10 to fold. Checks it over. Seems good as well. Schumacher probably likely to just fire a bet right here right now. I mean, a lot of the queen X combos that Kuzenka has will bet flop. Sometimes he'll check back a nine or a four, but plenty of hands he'll just fold directly. And even if he does have a nine or a four, two of our cards in a straight draw, pretty good equity regardless and an opportunity to build the pot in position where you can make some better decisions on later streets. Schumacher wins it with a bet. So nine and a half minutes left on the level. No break. We'll roll straight into level 26, the 25.50 blind level. Happy birthday, Raksha. And still 16 players remaining. No eliminations so far today. Moderator birthday. Happy birthday. Where was the button? Was it in the very first hand? Can you that, Andrea? I was the big blind. You would be blind at the first hand, yeah? I need to work on a birthday? So we'll play it one round in 28 minutes, yeah? On a Saturday? Three snow. I think she mentioned that, uh, one round, yes. despite all that, the fact <laughs> that you canceled Chat <laughs> Pro we'll Saturday is making it a happy birthday indeed. Will we have a break now? Will the we'll ultimate break now? present. For a mod, especially. It's like canceling the caddy swim for the lifeguards. <laughs> what is it? One till 115 once a year? <laughs> and you can see why. So what, what, what happened at Chat Pro Saturday, guys, I missed that? What, why was it canceled in the end? I thought, honestly, Dick, that chat was pretty good most of the week, but I was not here, and James just decided it wasn't happening. Uh, well, I thought so as well, but... King Joffrey know, over here. You, you, we, we just, we just got to take his word for it now? I mean, was there an incident, Does it or...? it really shock you to learn that there were examples of gross idiocy from some of the viewers? No, it's not shocking, but... <laughs> I feel like there's a certain amount, there's a certain baseline we have to allow for. <laughs> My tolerance is very low. Very low. I think that as long as Prague's Saturday doesn't fall on the final table, we owe them as a Christmas gift. Okay, maybe. As an end of year. We haven't done a Chat Pro Saturday in months. I will consider it, but I remind everyone that it's something they have to earn. Is this a real consideration? Because it felt like a fake one this time. You were like, oh, you guys are going to have to earn it, and then it just didn't happen. No, no, no. There were specific things that happened okay. yesterday that, that drove me over the edge. Okay, and fine. It, it, this, is, this is coming from a Joe Stapleton who bit his lip <laughs> retorting to, uh, to uh, Griffin. To the ultimate chap, the life chap pro, who is Griffin Benger. <laughs> the professional chap pro. To be fair, I did unplug Griffin's microphone the other day, so I... Um, oh, he thought it was hilarious. He doesn't understand that it's genuinely something that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> he bragged about it at dinner. He was like, the funniest thing happened. James unplugged my microphone. I'm just like... <laughs> it's like when you whack a puppy with a rolled-up newspaper and it just thinks you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Stop biting. No. <laughs> for the record, before people come for me, I've never had a puppy or a dog, nor have I whacked one with a rolled up newspaper. Ace nine for Cousin Kai, raising from the cutoff. Curling Master says it's not much better if you whack your colleagues, Joe. We're talking about Griffin. Yeah. I think we can all make an exception for Griffin, right? You know how people like uh, justify fishing by saying, like, oh, the fish, they don't have any feelings in their mouth? 
<laughs> Griffin has no feelings when you whack him. He does not feel it. It only in ball pocket jacks. Yeah, we've had the open from Cousin Kai, the three bet from Schumacher on the button with Ace Queen, and now Tassirek in the small with Jax. Five seconds. Six seconds. Four bets to 600,000. Yep, cold four bet here, looking wicked strong. Schumacher probably not loving that Ace Queen as much as he did about two seconds ago. As we all know, Tassirak is actually one of the Infinity Stones. <laughs> it's hidden right in his belly. Five seconds. Schumacher folds the ace queen. Nice, nice, nice. Nice pick up for Tassirak. Yeah. That might be the, <coughs> the best, 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 best way to play Jack. Best I've ever seen Jack play. <laughs> Excited. Like, it's one of those spots, right? You like, it is strong enough to cold four bet, but I probably don't want any more action than, than that, right? Correct. Yeah. So this is one of two tables, of course, with us being at 16 players, two tables of eight. We are keeping an eye on any significant action from the other table, where Victor Uge is chip leader. You might remember last night, he eliminated Anton Wig in 18th and Atanos Malinov in 17th, taking us down to 16 and securing himself a big stack for day five. Kenny Hallett also among the big stacks at that other table. Cousin Kai raising with Queen Eight of Hearts. Cousin Kai a bit of a conundrum. A little loose with the opens, pretty tight with the folds. When facing aggression, we'll see if that tracks. Well, he's been called by Tassirek on the button with King Seven of Spades. Ace King. Always excellent in my last play. Shouldn't say tight. Get, has given up easier than I would have expected, given how loose some of the opens are. But I don't think we're going to get to a flop on this hand either. Yeah. Are you on board with the campaign, Joe, to spam this willy to support Gilly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Re raises to 400,000. That doesn't look strong. And two crit faults. <laughs> Yeah, chunky squeeze there. 400k from 80k. But who cares? The chip leader going to do his chip leader things, yeah? <coughs> You're asking me? Huh? You're asking me? No. I'm, I'm not, not chip leader. I'm not asking. <laughs> Take on chip leader, doesn't matter. You are the, the last chip leader at the, that hand when mm -hmm. Andreas fold, folded his hand. Threefold. Reminder of prize money, by the way, with 16 remaining, everyone is locked up. 43,275 dollars. There cool. is then a money jump when we get to 15. Four 51K, fold. if you can ladder it to 15th place. Fold. It's not until we get to the last table, it's not until we get to nine players that there is going to be a money jump with every single elimination. Is that in response to Matthias asking, can I see the payouts anywhere? Uh, no, it wasn't. Because, Matthias, the answer is yes. Thank you for your question. Schumacher raising with ace-queen. Tashirak with 9-8 calls. Opening the door for someone to be squeezing. Maybe that player is Datto with ace-jack on the button. You gotta be so tempted here. 
Seems like a great spot. You know the call from the cutoff is going to be a bunch of combos that don't want any more chips put in the middle here. Hey, call. Oh, he's decided just to call. And potentially play a flop in position unless we get a squeeze from Alessandro Manassi with A6 in the big. Nope, he's calling as well. So we're going four way to the flop on what will be the last hand of this level. Can you can you fold A6 right there for the 40? I honestly might consider it. Um, it's just difficult to see how you're going to... Like, what What do you want other than two sixes on the flop? Ha having said that, you probably have a very reasonable price to call and just literally hope to flop, you know, the flush draw and or just flop trip sixes. Sometimes you'll out-flop a hand like ace-queen, you know, ace-six, deuce flop or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think he probably has the price to call, but it's also a, a combo that just plays awful in multi-way pots and awful out of position. Yeah. So Schumacher with the best hand, top, top, checks it to Tashirak, who does not bet his nine. Dato in position with ace, jack, high. And while he decides what to do, let me quickly handle this question on YouTube from Ola. Where can I find the remaining players? They're in the poker room at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino and Spa in Northern Cyprus. Thank you for your question. Great work, James. Dato's bet 100,000 has got the fold from Manassi. Schumacher surely not going anywhere. <clears throat> I know every now and then the conversation, Nick, turns to watches. Loving the vintage Casio from Schumacher. As he calls, Tashirak calls, and we go three way to the turn. I'm telling you, we need a James Hardigan X Casio Poker Stars Special Edition. Oh, that would be really cool. I, 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 I me and James discussed it on a, on a recent stream. What, what, what's, what, what's, what's your next milestone, James? 20 years? With Poker Stars? Uh, yeah. So at 20th an anniversary, James Hardigan, Casio X, James Hardigan. That would be really cool. I'm fully... I'm, I'm for I, it. I am not even vaguely joking about that. I think that would be so tight. So Dato has picked up the nut flush draw. It's been checked to him for a second time. You know how some uh, Casios, they used to have the calculator watch? Yep. <laughs> what if James has had the widget? <laughs> you just plug in the blinds levels, how many players so, are left, and it just shows you how many players are going to be left. You just punch in a time. Oh, there'll be 18.4 players left. A variation of the Marty McFly watch with built-in <laughs> widget. Love it. It's, it's either that or if it's, if it's a conventional watch with, you know, the hands. I just thought maybe James's face as, as, the, as the second ticker going all the way around. Hmm. Interesting. And then, and then on the hour, at the top of every hour, it just says everyone loves a chop pot or something <laughs> like that. All, 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 the famous, all the famous sayings. So Schumacher's still with the best hand. Doesn't know it, but he's near enough a two-to-one favorite here. Do you think if someone had access to the widget that that could be real-time assistance? Like, if the action's on you, you're facing it all in, right? And then you look, and you're like, well, there's 19 players left. And you're like, oh, my God, this is the time of the tournament where there's supposed to be 18 players left. You fold. Yeah, I'm going to say no. It's okay. not real-time assistance. It's not real-time assistance. Yeah. Okay. Then this watch works. Wow. The bet from Dato on the turn gets two better hands to fold. And expert play here for Mr. Dato, using that ace of clubs very effectively. 6.5 million, 163 big blinds. Oh, hold on a second, the blinds are up. 375,000. What's Olivier doing here? Is someone in trouble? Dealer change. Well, he has to make sure that the guy gets up and the other one sits down. It's a tough job, but someone <laughs> has to do it. <laughs> Union rules. 130 big blinds for Dato because the blinds are now 25,000, 50,000 with a 50K big blind ante. 
Okay, now bear with me. What about a limited edition cuckoo clock where on the hour every hour, James Hardigan's face pops out like as the cuckoo, and then it, on the top, it's me and you chasing Griffin like around, like around, like around. In fantasy world, sure, Nick. This is getting further and further from anything. I, I do think that there would be like a slight chance that Poker Stars issues some kind of Joe. swag watch, but we're getting. Joe, I, th I thought you of all people, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta dream big to accomplish great things. You know what I'm saying? I like to you, dream small you really to did accomplish your lip. anything at all. You really did bite your lip this morning, <laughs> didn't you? Unbelievable. I've never seen such a grumpy, uh, Trump, grumpy Joe Stapleton. If you've seen what I've achieved in my life, you'd realize that dreaming small <laughs> is what's gotten me anywhere. <laughs> Schumacher folding, Jack 10. Tasharek is out. Action on the chip leader. No, probably not. King three of hearts. Claps in the chat if you would buy that from the store, guys. 90,000. <laughs> That's an illegal racer. Yeah, it should be a hundred. <laughs> it's all Gucci. Thank you. So one hundred thousand. Pocket sevens. And Gilly calls. I'm all in. Oh Manassi. All in from the small blind with Ace Jack. And is he going to get called here by Gilles Simon? Can I have a count, please? Yeah, sure. Dato asking for the count. Huh. This would be awesome. I'm assuming this is Dato just trying to make it look good. I haven't seen a my friend, we have an all -in. call like this in a while. Yeah, I think this is just a little bit of Hollywood. I mean, with Simon to act behind seems a little outrageous to have a call here with King Trey of Hearts. Especially with no booties on the line. Hmm. Well, he's made it look good. Three seventy five, yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna go to the races here, guys. Yeah, we have a coin flip alert. And this is a flip that Manassi will need to win to survive. Like copium versus coping harder, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. You already lost that. No, 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 I'm kidding. This is so mad. I think if he marked right now, his face was really flat. No, I think if the dealer will mark the cars right now, we will. We will. No, I think we will roll it uh, in, in every situation. Now, you might remember what Olivier told the table at the start of the day. We are playing soft hand for hand, so this all-in will not be dealt until action at the other table has completed. And there is a hand in progress right now. A three-way pot. Victor Uge, Gerard Carbo, and Jose Gonzalez. And looks like we're joining this hand on the flop. How did it happen at the exact same time? This is not an all-in. This is the hand that needs to play out because it's soft hand for hand. All right. I've never seen the person Looks like a bet from Gonzalez. A call from you, Gay. Action on Gerard Carbo, and he folds. So we are going heads up to the turn. We'll see the board in a moment. Okay, well, it's the six of spades on the turn. The flop was the eight of clubs, five of diamonds, two of diamonds. Are you sure this is not an all-in? <laughs> so having bet flop, Jose Gonzalez is going to barrel the turn by the looks of things. <coughs> that is 320,000. Ah, 
and back to you, Gay appears to be calling. Victor was busting people left and right last night. And I know that we were just watching this hand because it was happening at the same time as the other one, but this pot's big. So this is a big pot, three of hearts on the river, so straighty board, no flush possible. And Gonzalez moves all in. So now do we have to finish the other hand before we come back to this one? Well, we see what UK does here, and if he calls and is ahead, Gonzalez would be eliminated. Gonzalez would be the at-risk player here if UK were to call. It was a lot of fun to watch yesterday. I hope we get him back yeah. on stage at some point. Well, if he makes the final table, you'll see him for sure. We are on a pay jump, guys, which is why we're observing a soft hand-for-hand -hand process at the moment. UK folding there. Gonzalez wins that pot. Now we can come back to the main feature table. We can deal out the all-in between Alessandro Minassi and Gilles Simon. Minassi, the at-risk player, with ace jack racing against Gilles Simon's pocket sevens. Copium versus Cope Harder. <laughs> that was a good one. Manassi gets some additional equity because he's standing up. The flop is 8 6 deuce. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Good board for sevens. Manassi with four outs. Turn card. Is a queen. No additional outs. Manassi looking for an ace or a jack on the river. Not oh, feeling we it. are down to 15 players. Just not feeling it. Are you good? Sorry, I'm riding the oh, okay. River card is a nine. Alessandro Manassi is eliminated in 16th place, cashing for $43,275. Everyone else has earned a pay jump. And Gilles Simon has earned a ton more chips and is up to nearly five million now. Sometimes you just know, right? You just know when that flip happens, you're like, mm, it's not coming. Yeah, nice smile there. A couple of handshakes, good sportsmanship. Love to see that. And love to see Gilly chipping up, baby. So Gilly now 99 big blinds. And I'm here for it. We're now being asked to spam this chili to support Gilly who has a 99 big blind stack. Seems like our bases are covered, right? If you're willy averse, you can spam the chili. If you don't like spicy food, you can spam the willy. <laughs> if you don't like either, you're out of luck. Is there a billy, like a goat? Spam this billy? There must be a goat emoji. If you don't like goats, get out. It's just, it's just a shame we don't have an emote that's like Willie Elliot. <laughs> and then we can spam that Willie to support Gilly. 110,000. <laughs> Loving the announcements. <laughs> At least this amount is a legal race. <laughs> Here we go, we can spam the Tilly to support Gilly. Jennifer Tilly? Correct. Action has been folded to the small blind. We're waiting for Mark Foggin to act. What's taking so long for this Foggin guy? He's called with King Jack. <clears throat> yeah, I like the fold here from Vardanian. Just such an awful hand to play multi-way. Queen three suited, diff whole different story. 
three off, way worse, and very poor equity realization. King, queen, deuce. Top pair for Foggin. Dato probably tempted to fire here. King, queen, deuce seems like a very c-bettable flop as the initial raiser. Foggin, 42 big blinds behind. So probably going to default to like the one-third size. Check. Decides to check instead. Seems fine. Picks up a straight draw on the turn. Oh, boy. But it's two pair for Mark Foggin, who is a 92% favorite. At this point, I think if I'm Foggin, I want to have a lead. Plenty of Queen X, plenty of Jack X, plenty of pair plus straight draws that are going to be checking flop that will now have some equity here. Decides to check instead. Uh, you got to charge them for their draws, Nick. I read that in a book. Yeah, I mean, if you're checking, you're giving them the keys to the Lambo. Is that not a thing anymore? You're not supposed to charge people to draw? I know, I, I, I feel like maybe Foggin is just thinking the checks on this flop aren't going to be strong enough to call, but I feel like a check on this flop can be quite strong under certain circumstances if uh, Dato has queen 10. Yep, so there's the one third after all, just a delayed C bet, but King Jack going absolutely nowhere. By the way, I'm loving Andrea Dato's verbal declarations. It's a top tip I always give people who are playing poker for the first time. Say what you mean to do and then you can't go wrong. If you fumble around with chips and screw up, it's bad. But if you say what you want to do, if you say it out loud, whatever happens next can't go wrong because the verbal declaration is binding. So Fog and playing it slow, just the call on the turn as well. Um, and, I mean, is he going to continue with the softly, softly check the river monkey? Check. Well, now that Dato's got a little bit of showdown value, how's he going to play it? Check, check. Two pair, good. Yeah, I wonder if Mr. Foggin could have made a little bit more there. Not having a lead, not having a check raise in the turn, not having... I mean, he was telling a pretty believable story of weakness, right? And if he doesn't hit the seven, maybe he does catch another bluff, but I think maybe you win more chips by having a bigger lead on that turn. Yeah. Maybe something in the region of 60% pot, maybe a bit more. At these stack depths, it might be closer to full pot and of course plenty of combos that still give you some value there fucking around average right now 2.5 million the average being 2.6 million with 15 remaining ah uh, fogging around look i'm a big i'm a fan of uh, copy pasta as much as the next guy but um can you please not spam the chat my mom bought me a new laptop and when you spam the chat it burns my legs Opium believes we need some players who aren't afraid to ramp up the aggression, Nick. Can we parachute those players in at this late stage? Yeah, absolutely. Could we uh, get a couple ringers in there? Sounds like Opium needs some copium. We need players who are willing to five bet bluff with Ace-10. <laughs> hey, Yans just showed up in YouTube chat asking if Yarosh is playing. I don't know if Patrick Yaros made it to this EPT, but he certainly is not in the last 16 of the main event. Last 15, even. Yeah, if you don't want me to get burned, don't spam the chat. So a cheeky raise with jack three. Mark Foggin with ace queen on the button. <laughs> I was thinking about Maria just not understanding the joke yesterday. <laughs> so good. It was almost like 
Griffin's brain I've... had transplanted itself into Maria's head for a five-minute period. I feel bad, too, because I feel like she was, like, probably 50-50 in her head whether she should even participate in the joke. Like, it's kind of off-brand for her to even do, like, a fake okay. F-word. And she just got it so wrong. Well, Danny and not playing Jack-10 suitor from the small. Cousin Kai ace nine of diamonds in the big might make this a three-way party. I'm fine, says Maria kept explaining the joke and you guys didn't understand it. Okay, that's how I see it. No, you're also wrong. Thank you for your comment, you banned. Aren't you great that it isn't chat pro Saturday and you have the right to ban that person? <laughs> Uh, Baines, I'm glad you enjoyed the Mystery Cash Challenge on YouTube. When you say, hopefully PokerStars does more of that in the future, were you watching yesterday, and did you hear what we announced yesterday? Well, we're waiting. <sighs> okay, the nine's winning. Yeah. Someone's a little bit sleepy. A few yawns there. Heavy breathing intensifies. Get someone a cocoa. I thought maybe they were just uh, doing the paper bag thing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Everyone's got therapy now. Remember it was just breathe into a paper bag when we were kids? That was therapy. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a brown paper bag. To Blast, is mystery bounty coverage at Prague? Yes. That's true, right? Yeah. We are going to stream the second day of the 10K mystery bounty tournament. So that's where you're going to get your mystery bounty action from. And you're going to get your cash game action from the big game on tour at NAPT Las Vegas. Those are our immediate plans. How's it going to work? Are you going to be out on the floor opening envelopes for people or what? Why would I be opening envelopes for people? They open them themselves. I don't know, it feels like it needs a little, a little pizzazz, a little showbiz down on the floor. This gets checked to showdown. Pot's going to go to Kozenkai. Anyone who uh, continues defending Maria's joke is going to continue to get banned, by the way. Please don't defend the indefensible. We all love Maria. Don't get me wrong. But... She was not in the right in that situation. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know what you guys should do with big game? Add shark cage into it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. That no. sounds like a harebrained Nick Walsh idea. We are not <laughs> averse to bringing back shark cage in the future, but let's focus on the immediate future and let's big focus shark cage game. on the return of the big game, which as much as I know everyone enjoyed the Mystery Cash Challenge, I think more people are going to be excited to see new episodes of the big game. Can, can we find a way to get like a faux Squid Games in there as well somehow? <laughs> and a cuckoo clock. <laughs> now you know why we didn't invite Nick to the ideation <laughs> sessions. James and I have kind of played around with coming up with a live spin and go idea that never really got off the ground. Maybe Nick would have some ideas for that. Uh, I, well, I, I, I would be <laughs> not being included at the ideation situation is, to, to is be, fine. To, to, to be fair, Nick, this was many years before you were on our radar. <laughs> you were in high school. Still. I mean, let me see if I can dig it out. I'll have it somewhere on this computer. Well, I'll, I'll, the idea I'll, was I'll, we I'll, strap <laughs> a player to a big wheel after they win, <laughs> and we spin it. And whatever number their head points at, they get that prize. Okay, so this V2 of this draft format is dated the 30th of July, 2015. This has not been touched for more than eight years. And you still got it. That's impressive. Absolutely. Okay, So but forgive I'll, us for not inviting you. No, no, no. no, no. I'm, I'll, all I'm going to say is... If you were to to revisit and I wasn't involved, I would I would be pretty insulted, and it's, it's hard to it's hard to insult me. Tasharek manages to find the right way to play jacks twice. Twice in a row. 
<laughs> Somebody sign this guy up to your training site as a coach. He jacks only. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing very well so far, and that puts him on about 54 bigs. So feeling pretty confident up there. But currently third in ships on our feature table. P-Prof asks, have the details on the casting free roll been released, the date and the time? It's going to be during the day on Sunday, November 5th. Exact times and exact registration open still TBD, but ultimately, if you're interested in being involved, if you're interested in going through the casting process to be a loose cannon, you're going to need to be in Vegas, you're going to need to be at Resorts World the weekend of the 4th, 5th of November. Which is the opening weekend of NAPT Las Vegas. Yes. I, I think we should still give the Joe Stapleton, your band concept, another go, where we just randomly eliminate people regardless of chip stack. Just if I don't like their face. <laughs> I, I was thinking just randomly, but yeah, I mean, if you want to be directly involved, Joe. Oh, you coughed without covering your mouth. You banned. <laughs> Not really a fan of the small tip you just left for that drink. You banned. So Schumacher with the nut flush draw here. Chadrick, apparently a reg here at the Merit. Yeah, he's rocking that Merit merch. It kind of looks like a loose-fitting superhero outfit. Uh, a loose-fitting diver's bodysuit. Yeah, like you press a button and it just... Yep, sucks in. Ace, seven, five, five. Heart, heart, spade, spade. Okay, the hearts are still a thing. Both players count it with showdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see a check here from Tessirak. Yep, there we go. And it's a chop. Catching up on the chop pots. <clears throat> Ed on YouTube asks, is there anyone going to Vegas for the big game in NAPT main event chat? I'm going for the poker, but some people, I guess, will be going for the chat. Thank you for your question, Ed. And this is going to be a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, chop pot. pot. I almost considered screwing that one up because they've just been too good lately. Me like cake. 22. Asks, when you say nut flush draw, what do you mean by nut? The best possible flush draw. Ace of hearts on the board, so if you've got the king of hearts in your hand, you can make the best possible flush if mm. your opponent had hearts as well. Because as we all know, blockers aren't real. And not that it applies there. But a straight flush is a different hand than a flush. So if someone wants to go, well, seven, eight of hearts would... No. Would be the best flush. No, it wouldn't. It would be a straight flush. Yeah. Different hand. Wholeheartedly agree. You can still say he has the nut flush and not be wrong if somebody else has a straight the flush. nuts that is a straight flush. Correct. There's a difference between the nut flush and the nuts. Yes. Correct. Moving on. Ace Jack for Mark Foggin in early position. A raise to 125k. 125k, of course. You gotta get it right for this fucking guy. King seven for Timur Vardanian. Hovering around the 40 big blind mark. Folds. Kozenkai is out. Tashirak. We've got Schumacher first on the button. Now it's Tashirak in the small. 
I kind of like Tazirak's style here. He seems pretty composed, pretty yep. chilled out. He's, he, I think he's, he's got good vibes for, for long, long form tournaments. Very chilled. Just taking them as they come. I would be surprised to see a fold here, though. I think King Tanoff is doing pretty bad against the plus one range here. Yeah, nice work. He doesn't look like the kind of fellow that's going to fold King Tenoff in any position. And I like when people are surprising. You like when people are surprising? Yeah. But not like cuckoo clock surprising? No. Honestly, the abuse. This question gets asked with regular frequency. D. Gromit on YouTube says, how about adding heart rate monitors for the players at some point? In the early era of televised poker, going back to like 2005, 2006, it was all the rage to put heart rate monitors on players. And guess what it showed? That poker players are generally pretty unfit. We did save at least three people from heart disease, though. <laughs> We were like, this is not normal at any stage of <laughs> excitement. <laughs> Go see a doctor. <laughs> wow, John must be in a big hand. No, he's <laughs> he hasn't played a pot for uh, for two hours. Okay. Uh oh. Now I did have an idea. I'm just gonna put it out there to the world. I did have an idea that if we ever did a televised show with Phil Helmuth again. We take a heart rate op monitor and we put it only on Phil. And then if you manage to get Phil's heart rate above a certain <laughs> level, you win a bonus prize. <laughs> you win like an extra thousand dollars. So if you put Phil on monkey tilt and he blasts off and he's like, bop, 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 that's more money for you. And we should call it full tilt Phil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't mind that. <laughs> Full tilt, Phil. Let's do it. And then once it hits a certain level, now you got to beat that level of heart rate, right? Like you can't. So now there's like a new record to set. If you kill him, you win <laughs> the ultimate jackpot. <laughs> there has to be a kill Phil element to this, surely. Well, kill Phil was a popular book for a minute. Ace, queen, high is still the best hand here. Check to showdown. Ship the pot to Vardanian. Mm -hmm. I hear eight high. I... Still one hour to play. Mm. At the 2550 blind level, still 60 minutes to run until we take our first break of day five. Timur was at breakfast pretty early this morning. I don't know if he had a late night, just had some nerves, if he's an early riser, but... I can tell you, because I was here, he was in the poker room at 10.30 this morning. Yeah. That, to me, sounds like nervous energy. Yeah. Well, we've already established, guys, this bloke has a lot of energy. And with 103,000, I think, in total live earnings, he's already earned almost half of that Yeah. in this event. So understandable. Tessirak with the Grafton. I got Danny in the background here. Ooh, double Graftons. Consummate professional. Double the Graftons, double the fun. Oh, 
You gotta be wicked tempted here. Someone's gotta put the squeeze on. It's not gonna be a small blind. It's not gonna be the big blind either. Foggin's got the squeeze box. And Mama doesn't sleep at all. Something like that. Ha! 7-5 Trey. Mark Foggin with the best hand right now. Tricky to navigate the uh, this four-way pot now from in the big blinds, but I imagine Ace-8 and 9-10 probably not going to get too hot and heavy here given the uh, multi-way nature of this pot. Dato has been sneaking in there with a couple cheeky moves now and then, though. Might be tempted to take a shot here, but it is so hard. I think usually you find mostly checks. Oh, man, come on. Blockers aren't real. So Dato and Tashirak with top pair chopping right now, which is why they have 0% to win outright. Cousin Kai with the nut flush draw. Plus has a gut shot straight draw. Pull the cleaner understands the assignment and says this guy fogs. don't think Foggen was expecting to get three calls and doesn't. Huh. Just two. Yeah, turns out the turn hit everyone, my well, dude. Well, Benny Glaser is watching the stream. He says, let's get hot and heavy. <laughs> Not that kind of 18-plus stream, Benny. But Barry Greenstein has made an appearance giving Cousin Kai the win. Flaming Barry is hot. And if you're fogging up the windows, that's pretty hot and heavy, too. Pair of sevens, no good. Pair of nines, no good. Cousin Kai with the winner. Checks. Seven. Tashirek checks behind. Cousin Kai's going to win this pot. Thompson says, this is better than the German stream. Good job, you two. Sorry, James. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Boss? Just me and Nick are better than the German stream. How dare you, by the way. The German, the German commentators are also our coworkers. You can compliment us without tearing down someone else. Yeah, ja, und das ist nicht gut, man. You banned. Can you say that in German, you banned? Du bist ban. There you go. Du bist ban. Du bist raus. Is part of the accent shouting? Yes. Okay. Understand, yeah. There is no better language in the world to shout in other than German. Okay. Oh, I kind of feel like I'd like to shout in Japanese one day. Don't that day. Hi. Don't that day, oh. Josh, I'm not going to ban you. I'm going to give you a question the respect it deserves. Josh says, when is the EPT going to display the blind levels? Look, they are displayed frequently. Put the blinds up in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Also, they're available at all times as a command prompt on both Twitch and YouTube. There is a balance. We say this all the time about the work that graphics do to provide essential information without bombarding and crowding the screen with an overload of information. The moment graphics start looking like a HUD is the moment this kind of becomes a little bit ugh. Yeah, we're uh, watching a poker stream. We're not mech warriors. I really wish I was a mech warrior. That would be pretty fun. Wait, so Nick, do you, have you been playing Starfield? Do you play it? Uh, not yet, no, but I'm really looking forward to it. Well, Spider-Man 2 came out today, so I think I'm just going to have to put Starfield on the back burner for a minute. 
Have you been enjoying it, though? I have been enjoying it. It's not as good as Skyrim. Okay. But it's pretty good. I mean, everyone's saying it's just space Skyrim, basically, yes. at this stage. But I'm, I'm 100% okay with that. It's pretty good. I mean... Es especially with all the mods I sent you across. <laughs> The uh, the first person shooter aspect of it is really fun. There are some, a lot of it is like very choresy. Yeah. But it seems like you can just skip over a lot of the choresy stuff. That's correct, Wallace. The screen gets too fucking crowded. Well, Danian, playing a hand. Mark Foggin has raised the button of King-10. We have seen Vardanian using the ace-deuce off as a three-bet candidate, three-bet bluff candidate. Of course, I think the last time we saw that was in the big blind. Seems like an opportunity to do it from the small, though, as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I called it. Yeah, nice size here as well, 430K. You want to... Take your 3x and add a little bit more because you're out of position. And it's going to take it down. Yeah, I got an issue with this Irish Smurf comment. For sayings like Barry Greenstein or the Grafton, etc. Do we ever get many new sayings from recent poker or are they all old? <laughs> Grafton is like two years old. Yeah. I don't consider that to be old. Sourdough is Sourdough about is. three years old. Yeah. And it's, I, I hate to tell you, but it's not a thing if it's new. It's only a thing if it's old. Yeah, that's right, Tablar. The Spraggy is pretty new. The James and Joe, that's a relatively recent discovery. Somehow. <clears throat> Okay, so Simon is raised with queen seven of clubs. Round to the blinds. Nope, sorry, Ocon, you're banned. Thank you for your comment. Aces for Schumacher in the big blind. Perfect squeeze spots. Not sure how much action they're going to get, though, here. Simon. Simon, excuse me. Probably not going to continue because Enkai might find a call in the small blind, but not the most ideal situation of all time. Schumacher's through that size here. Quite small considering the nature of the squeeze. This is screaming strength for me. Not going to lie, guys. I feel like Schumacher with such a short stack, probably just shoves as a bluff here as a squeeze with hands like ace-king. So the 3-bet three to 330 just seems incredibly small. That's not to say it's a bad size. You do want more action from those combos, but I think uh, learned players would probably pick up on that really small 3-bet size off of a very small stack and probably be pretty terrified of that. Well, we're heading over to the other table where we've got a 5-bet pop. Looks like the original raise came from Preet Palmasto. Victor Uge has three bet. Nikita Kuznetskov four bet. Preet Palmasto five bets. And that five bet is going to take it down. So still eight-handed at the outer table, seven-handed on the main stage, just the one elimination today with Alessandro Manassi going out in 16th. Yeah, and not good. And the heads up. 
five hole. Just for the future. Yeah. Six hole. It's good that you want to be entertaining, but don't make it. Yeah, yeah. don't make it like obscure the clarity of the yeah, game. Yeah. Okay. Then four heads up. Well, that is a good flop for Tasharak. Okay. Not the worst flop I've ever seen for Ace Five. I think this is a board where it's going to have a stab a bunch, so probably wants to keep it nice and balanced. Danian drawing dead. <coughs> His fearlessness might finally bite him right in the Tusharek. Yeah, after being stationed twice by Tasharek, I would probably elect not to try again on the river. Yeah, it gives up. And wow! Uh, Tashirak checked, of course, out of position, hoping for a bet from Vardani. And I thought for a moment there, Tashirak checked behind. Yeah, I did as well. Well, we're going over to the other table where Alexander Fasherin has moved all in. Decision is on Jose Gonzalez, who's already played one time bank card. Hi. That's his second time bank card delivered. Somewhat vociferously. <clears throat> Quick apology, though. I won't say allow it, but... Doesn't look like a lot of chips for, for Terran. Open from Gonzalez in the cutoff, and then the all-in from the big blind. And there is the call, and it's a domination situation. Ace six for Fateran, King six for Gonzalez, and an ace high flop. <coughs> and this is going to be a double up for Alexander Fateran. <laughs> he is the one who knocks. <laughs> So it's about half a million chips, about 10 big blinds was the shove. King six? Uh. <laughs> yes, no? I mean, I guess you think you're priced in? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure, guys. I don't think you're priced in with King Six. Sorry. Just, just hunting for the flush, I guess. How about King Five? Oh, it's gone. Again, entertainment, not clan fiesta. Thank you. Entertainment's okay, but not a clan fiesta. It's not about entertainment or fun. Sure. Fun times. <laughs> Good old times. So we're approximately halfway through level 26. Gamble, Another 45 minutes to play at the 2550 blind level. And still 15 players remaining, which means the average stack is still 2.6 million. King 10 suited for Mark Foggin. That's a raise. Pocket sixes for Bjorn Kozenkai. 
Hmm. Bjorn again. J2, I love you, asks, how long are the levels? Each blind level is 90 minutes. This one just feels longer because we had the last third of yesterday's level Correct. play out today. And we went back to back with no break. Pocket nines for Halil Tashirak, and he calls as well. Is Dato thinking? Yeah. <laughs> he was thinking about it. He saw an opportunity to squeeze, and he has taken it. 550,000 is the three bet. Absolutely incredible stuff. I was going to say we've seen a lot of these multi-way pots, but an opportunity here to uh, to put the squeeze on feels great. Love and Dato style. The only hand that can really fight back here, Tesserac. So uh, Tesserac is in a really weird situation. 52 big blinds looking really comfortable. There is an opportunity for him to fight back here. And that's going to be either a, a defend and or it's going to be a back raise. But so hard to know what to do in these circumstances and questionable given the ICM implications, final 15. And I think most people just default to a fold. And I know that we're keen to bring back poker nicknames. We have Andrea, the announcer, Dato, <laughs> at the feature table, chip leader with close to 6.5 million with 15 players remaining in the EPT Cyprus main event. So a reminder, once we wrap here in Cyprus, we are taking the traveling circus across the Atlantic, across North America to Las Vegas. We are gonna be at Resorts World on the Las Vegas Strip for the North American Poker Tour, the return of the NAPT. We've talked a lot about bringing back the big game. Joe, we're also streaming three days of the NAPT, two days of the main event, the final table of the high roller, three days from November 10th through 12th on Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, the main event, pretty affordable. Right in that sort of mid-tier buy-in that's doing so well in the States right now. There'll be lots of side events that are affordable. And I got to tell you guys, Resorts World, uh, basically a brand new casino resort in Las Vegas. I have stayed there multiple times. There's three hotels there. I've stayed at the Hilton. And I've stayed at the Conrad. I don't think I've been at the Crockfords yet. So maybe I'm hoping I somehow roll the dice and end up there. Massive casino. And if you like casinos in general, I know we're there for the poker. I spent a lot of time at the slot machines there. They got a, <laughs> they got a huge bank of Buffalo machines that if you want to meet me that week and I'm not in commentary, you can probably find me sitting at the Buffalo slot machine. They got, oh, they have Mulberry Street Pizza there. One of the best pizza places in the world from New York City. They only have a few places that aren't in New York. Fantastic. It's open until 4 o'clock in the morning. Resorts World has tons of stuff going on. Fun sports bar there. Karaoke, James. What? They got karaoke at the... Uh, I think they might have multiple karaoke locations there. Well, I've made up my mind. I'm going. They got a club there. They got a day club. I don't know if the day club will be in action in, uh, in November. And, of course, if you can't be there, you can experience that stream November 10th through 12th on the Pokestars Twitch and YouTube channels. This hand, Foggin versus Tashirak, and Foggin with the best of it, top pair, four to one favorite. And Circus Circus is right across the street. You just killed it. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? <laughs> the Adventure Dome? Look, I was very keen to see Circus Circus. This was back in 2010. And it was featured in Diamonds Are Forever, so I really wanted to go in there. I literally walked through the front door and was greeted by the smell of vomit and promptly did a 180 and exited. So you smell vomit. I smell a previous very good time. <laughs> Someone was having a lot of fun here moments ago. Are you there to someone? Are you there Treasure to someone? instincts seem pretty good to me. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, just very composed, very zen. Sometimes you just got to chill and let the cards come to you. Don't get too overexcited. It's like Foggin gonna value bet. Three bet, 65,000. Story checks out for having an ace bad kicker on a four straight board and gets paid. Gets paid by the king. Yeah, that'll do it. Potentially losing the minimum here, though. Bit of a tricky run out there to, to be beaten, but ace is good enough. I wish I hadn't remembered the Mulberry Street pizza, though. I'm so hungry. It, you, you actually kind of killed me with that. Now I'm really hungry. It's open till 4 in the morning. I, that's a top tip. I'm really excited about that. That's useful for us. I mean, especially with me being on a time zone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Seven hours ahead or whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a reverse Joe <laughs> right. from this trip. <laughs> wow, the buffet is really quiet at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, there's a really cool food court there, too, that has, like, it's not like McDonald's, Sparrows. It's like... I have been to the food court before, yeah, in um, in Resorts World. Really good, like, sort of pan-Asian situations. Yeah. A couple of rice bowls, stuff like that. Some poke. Some authentic taco, authentic taco spot there. All right, so we got Kozenkai opening under the gun, ace-10. Simone calling from the button with two fours, and Vardanian with queen-jack in the big blind. And I think if you're a boring player like me, this is a pretty easy peel, but uh, Vardanian, not boring. Okay, is just calling. Don't mean to say that calling is boring. Three to the flop, king, five, four. Set of fours for Simone. Sadly, no one else connects in any meaningful way. I'm hearing that something's just kicked off at the other table. Oh, okay. There's some kind of controversy and the floor's been called, so might have to just move away from this hand for a moment. I know you're keen to see if Gilly wins this with I a love set sets. of fours. But a um, bit of a weird one. So what's happened here is that Nikita Kuznetskov shoved from early position. Now, because Gonzalez had his headphones on, he didn't hear or see the all-in. He threw out a single chip from the small blind thinking he was completing. The big blind then folded thinking that Gonzalez had called the shove, and Kuznetskov has shown his cards because he thought Gonzalez has called the all-in. What a mess. No, this is horrible. Guys, this is a massive advert about the danger of wearing headphones at the table and not paying attention to yeah. the action. And from the sounds of the chat, he wants to call. Well, we can see his cards. He's got ace king by the looks of things, or ace queen. No, he didn't say call. He was small blind. Oof. Glad it's not my decision to make. So he didn't say call. He just threw out a single chip. Okay, okay, that's fine. So yeah, okay, obviously, okay, you wanted to put the thing to call the blind blind. Okay. And then when he flips over his cards, then no, no, no. He only start telling something after he saw his hand. Yeah, that's before he didn't say anything. When he oh, we can ask three people. I mean, okay, guys, I understand. I understand, the, I understand yeah. the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. His action has changed no, the big, I, the big blinds okay. decision, though. Yeah. Yeah. Only chip. He put five I know, I know. He, he, he put one chip. He didn't say call. He did not say call. So we are okay, guys, guys. Let Olivia make the ruling. Okay. He see these chips. I say all in and leave. 
Who say I saw the chief? I didn't no. saw this chief. No. You don't you don't say this because okay. it's not true. Please, gen gentlemen, gentlemen, you lying. Gentlemen, gentlemen, okay. I got the situation. I know you want me please, to call, please. but don't need to lie, okay? Sir, okay, okay. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. I understood the situation. So basically what happened is going on and you don't see just put one chip. And didn't we are facing you didn't say anything, you didn't sit on the call. Okay, that's another call. This goes in the pot anyway. I'm not gonna force you to call. Problem is when you put the chips, she announced call, basically you have been induced by the dealer to stay call. I understand that. But you should have made sure that you was calling your bet. Okay. Uh, okay. No, guys, 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 please, no, don't try to... I know, understand. No, no, it's no, no, in. Okay, he... No, 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 he didn't no, no. say call. He just put one chip thinking he was paying the big blind. Uh, you agree that it's call in? No, let me explain. No, no, no. no because guys, guys, it's guys, in guys, English guys. best. I am explaining. Let me explain. I, 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 yeah, okay. Let me explain. Uh, in Russian. He said that because you put the fish, he didn't see it. He didn't see it. Не видел то, что поставил all in, поставил фишки Общаюсь, не надо, что он не видел фишки. Какая okay. разница, я сказал all in, Nothing выставил фишки. Он кидает, он кидает фишку, что это не кол. So now he can mark if he want. Yeah, because he's under call, he can, he's gonna forfeit the, the 50k and he can mark. <sighs> Got off easy there. And the headphones go back. Don't put the headphones back on, dude. Learn your lesson. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You agree with me, Kim? Look, I know that this wow. ruling is going to be questioned. <clears throat> All I will say in defense is the last thing you ever want to do as a tournament director is force a player to put chips in the pot. I think you have to rule in the interest of what was the player's intent. And I think based on the story that was relayed to Olivier, based on what the players were saying there, it was pretty clear that Gonzalez never had any intention of doing anything other than just calling the big blind, completing from the small. Therefore, should you then force him to call the all-in? Yes, he was wrong to not be paying attention. Yes, he should learn his lesson and not put his headphones back on. But I do think it is maybe a step too far to say you have to call the all-in. I agree with all of that. But what if this happened? What if when Kuznetsov tables his hand and he's got eight deuce and he moved all in as a bluff, Yeah. does Gonzalez then, okay, yeah, no, I do call now. Yeah. No, I do it, call it, the all in. It's, it's definitely murky, but going back to kind of what I was seeing, James, I, I know I said it, lo it looks like he wants the call and he, he was showing ace-king, but there are certain players that would still not want the call with ace-king under those circumstances, right? Because, yes. you know, imagine that you are forced to, he's forced to call and he has, you know, eight, seven of hearts has significant equity. It is and, weird and for Kuznetsov to be arguing for it to be a call. Look, I would just be quiet and let the, <laughs> let the, uh, I do not feel Staff best placed to explain the ruling or justify the ruling. Sure. I have asked for tournament director Toby Stone to weigh in on this one and provide some justification for why Olivier made that ruling. But the one thing I do know, because I've talked to Toby about this before, is that on the EPT, the general kind of umbrella that all the tournament staff work under is you don't want to be in a situation where you are forcing a player to put chips in the pot. Yeah. I, I, look, I'm a big intent guy also, um, on a personal level. Yeah. And I also think that the penalty should be that you don't get to put your headphones back on for the rest of the tournament. I am not <laughs> saying, by the way, I don't necessarily think that Gonzalez should escape there without some kind of penalty. penalty. I think he should be sensible and not put the headphones back on uh, so that he starts paying attention to the action. I don't necessarily think it's enough that he just has to lose that extra 25k chip that is not yeah restitution <laughs> but yes i think it was very clear from the conversation that we saw there he never had any intention of calling the all in he was not paying attention he thought he was completing in the small blind and i do think his intent has to dictate what ruling yeah, you make there. that would be a really goofy angle uh, <laughs> to potentially risk the ruling going against you just to get additional information from your yeah. opponent. That's not, that's not really yeah. a thing, in my opinion. And, and I don't disagree, guys, that you can argue that you can angle that situation, which is why I'm not against him being told to stop wearing headphones, and I'm not against him receiving some kind of penalty there, but not a penalty that involves him being forced to make that call. I would have liked to see them run it. <laughs> <laughs> just to see what would have happened. To just find the rabbit anyway. Just so like the Jack Eight versus Ace King. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Because Netsov might have ended up really regretting if he had somehow won that argument. 
So we've spoken to Olivier, as I said, I've asked Toby Stone to weigh in as well, but Olivier is the senior Seven floor manager thousand. who's running the main event in Cyprus. He said, Gonzalez never said the word call, he just threw the chip in. So the intent of the player, Gonzalez, is to just complete in the small. It was the dealer who said the word call, which induced Kuznetsov to show his cards. Mm. Now, had Gonzalez actually said call, the outcome may have been different. Would have stayed. Or I assume if he had thrown in a bigger chip, right? Might have been different too. Or if, rather than just the completing chip. Or if the dealer had announced call and Gonzalez hadn't actually tabled his hand yet. Because the actual additional information also changes the outcome as well. So if he, if, if, if the... Because that's off tabling, yeah. Yeah, because that's off, excuse me. I would also argue, guys, you cannot have a simple one-size-fits-all rule in poker. You may know that there is the number one rule in any legitimate, serious, elite-level poker tournament is each ruling is individual and the tournament director's ruling is, is final. Because you have to assess each situation separately. You know what James would have done if he was Jimmy the B? It would have been a call, and he would have banned headphones for everybody. Correct. Everyone would lose headphone privileges because of the actions of one person. My, I, I, I generally understand why that ruling was made, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. I do feel that Gonzalez needs to be at least cautioned mm -hmm. and maybe should have received some penalty. And when play people say this decision sets a very questionable precedent, no, it doesn't, because every single situation is unique. Every single situation is different. Seven, yeah, definitely a tricky spot. Schumacher's going to take this one down, though, with the sixes. Maybe flip a coin next time. <laughs> I jest. <clears throat> Randomized. We'll see what the cuckoo clock says. <laughs> Man, for not being Chat Pro Saturday, there are sure a lot of Chat Pro tournament directors out there. <laughs> Rambone says the director, tournament director, should mix in a few calls there to be balanced. <laughs> Four fold. Raise. Five raise, one hundred thousand. Tom Lennox is adamant that throwing a chip in is a call. There is no other ruling possible. Players need to pay attention. I still maintain you have to take into account a player's intent and you have to make what is the right decision in the fairness of the game to all the players in the game. And I do think that you should err on the side of not forcing players to commit chips in situations where they are not intending to call. This is the weirdest thing. I'm just getting word right now that Jose Gonzalez had aces. <sighs> Now, apparently, Gonzalez has been told to pay better attention, but no official warning or caution. I can't say I agree with that. I personally feel that he deserves to be punished in some way. Oh, God. But I'm not the tournament director. I'm just telling you what the decision was and why that decision was made. James, why are you stroking that ruler? We have got action here. We have got... Kozenkai opening with kings and being three bet by sevens. Raise 950,000. 
five re raise nine hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I feel like Tesseract at this effective stack death probably could have just found a call here. Decided to mix in a three bet versus that cutoff open. But uh, gonna regret it now. Not a lot that you can do from this point. The Zenkai similarly stacked to Tesseract. where you think to yourself, why didn't I just call with the sevens? Yeah, I never know. Tesseract thinking maybe the board runs out six high and then you go broke anyway. Maybe I should have uh, maybe I should have found that flop at a set. I'm excited for this one later. I think the tournament director should have made them kiss. Now you say that, I think... What, kiss and make up? <laughs> yeah. I guess you have, like... I am also going to highlight, guys, that... Because Netsov also shouldn't have turned his hand over that quickly. And that was something that Olivier highlighted as well. That you wait until you know the action is closed before you table your cards. You will, you will know, like, in 35 minutes. 30 minutes. You either did or you didn't. You either did or you didn't. Vardanian, early oh, position. Right. We've only seen one of his cards, the Queen of Spades. <laughs> the, well, whatever that other card is, it ain't better than Pocket Kings. Pocket Kings, once more. Two hands in a row. Eight fold. Vardanian haven't seen second card yet. <coughs> Vardanian's only got about 22 big big blinds behind those, so if this is Queens or Ace Queen, might see some spicy four bat action here. Uh oh. That's a huge chunk of... Well, whatever Vardanian has here, he is behind. He is four betting to 5-2-5. Five, five. There is the shove from Kozenkai. And Vardanian is priced in. Makes the call. Clearly doesn't like it. Need some popcorn for this. Yeah, yeah. Popcorn time. Pop it. <laughs> it's got to be ace, queen, or queens, right? Sure, I'm... Hopefully, for his sake, it's ace queen. Vardanian is the at risk player here. Wish good luck to everyone. And whatever his other card is, we know he's behind. The question is how far behind? Oh, he's got queens. Yeah, would have preferred an over card. It's a gift, I think. Good luck, guys. Greater good says, James, you were 100% dead wrong. Own it. What? I'm explaining someone else's ruling, dude. He's bad. Jack 4-3 on the flop. King's holding. A little bit of a more action. Please uh, on the turn. Does yeah. have diamonds working in his favor, I like though. Slapping, like, it's more fun, everybody. <coughs> There's always the enjoyment in the pain. The wind, Only a queen on the river Losing. saves Timur Vardanian. Losing is more addictive. <laughs> That's true. He's not wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that six on the river, Timur Vardanian is eliminated. 15th place finisher in the first ever EPT Cyprus main event.
<laughs> cashing for $51,525, taking us down to the final 14. That means we need two tables of seven. That means we need to balance the two tables and bring someone from the outer table to the main stage. Yeah, claps in the chat for Team Miller. I really enjoyed him ha having him at the table. F seemed like a fun guy. He was having fun with it. And also uh, his biggest live score, correct? I thought he was a blast. I can agree with that part at least. A lot of personality in those eyes. Goodbye, Vardania. Maybe don't be so loud Who next time. Uh, you first, you banned. <laughs> Is there any player you Where? want from the table? Just curious. I, I really don't want. Uh, I think I think it's called you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys. I think that's yeah, the name. Um, Six number. Yeah. One. No, one, two, three, here. four, oh. five. I think. Why not? Six. Why don't you want him? Because I was sitting him with day the three. The tall and one. And I told him he's like he was. No, no, no. Next to. Ah, next the to next him. one. Yeah, yeah. Seat one. Uh, I think. I love this. Who are we gonna get? Who are we gonna get? Seat six. <laughs> yeah, seat six. I think I he's saying he doesn't want you guy. To join. Day three, because he had like 100 cage hits, 150 all day, and he was like smoothly doubling up every time, just a little, no pressure, nothing. He was just putting. You mean the the surname guy? It's the no. French guy. The, 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 the Uzbekistan guy. Oh, yeah. 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 Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good one. Pretty sure he's Russian, guys. Well, there's still a hand in progress at the other table. <laughs> Bye. Victor Uge has raised. Action is on Kuznetsov on the button. Hey, look, no headphones. Yeah, maybe he decided better for it. Because yeah. uh, no, that's of re-raising. Carbo. Folds the small blind. Gonzalez. Checking what's going on this time. Folds the big blind. a call from Victor Uge, so we're going heads up to the flop. Uge out of position without the betting lead. And the flop is 9-9-7. Rainbow flop. Includes on the flop, and that means we are going to be getting whoever was due to post the big blind next, who I believe is Preet Parmasto. And yet, somehow, on day five of this tournament, I am hearing a name for the first time. Preet Parmasto? There he is. That guy just got here today. I saw him in a hand earlier on at the outer table. And we will be seven-handed on the main stage, seven-handed on the outer table, with 14 remaining in the main event. This is the longest first level of the day ever. And I believe... He's rocking that Longine dive master we were talking about. With the mesh bracelet. With the mesh bracelet.
Get him to the table. Let's play on. Yep, get him mic'd up and let's crack on. Tournament clock has been paused. Nice tight ship we're running here. So he's going to be in the one seat. Looks like Andrea Dato is still chip leader right now. Certainly the biggest stack at the feature table with 6.4 million. And Gilles Simon still second in chips with 5.2 million. And Bjorn Kozenkai now up to 4.6. I think it could be a case of the three biggest stacks being at the feature table right now. And Palmasto is going to be bringing 3.35 million to the main stage. So he's got close to 70 bigs. Oh, it was certainly interesting. <laughs> I love that defense. I, we, it was really interesting. It just nothing happened. A hundred and twenty-five. Hey, raise one hundred and twenty. Andrea, the announcer, Dato. Raises the button with Queen Five suited. I feel like Dato announces his bets like Dato would announce his bets from Star Trek. Second bet. Will Dato continue? Decides to double check. 80,000. <laughs> That's one way to make sure. <laughs> Let's uh, have Jose Gonzalez take some lessons from Andrea Dato. Now, if he had said. 25,000, what would that have been? Not a call, right? <laughs> if you said 25, it would have been ruled as a min bet 50. Plenty of big stacks at the feature table right now. And a few below average of stacks, but no one's short. Yannick Schumacher with 1.6 million, so there's more than 30 bigs. Although, Blinds will be going up in just over 15 minutes' time because we are coming towards the end of this level now. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of tension now in terms of how the stacks are distributed. I anticipate a flurry of bust-outs on the horizon. Next level. Just a feel. No, just a feeling. Huh. I feel like we're going to lose one player this level and then one at the start of the next. <laughs> the announcer back in action. I think we should call him the verbal declarer or VD for short. No. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> you don't love Andrea Dato's VD? Sigh. So I know you highlighted this the other day, Joe, when Tonka had to explain to Dato how time banks work on day three. The last time Andrea Dato made a final table on the European Poker Tour was in 2014. Whoa. He came fourth in the main event that was won by Andre Latau. Whoa. So from 2017 to 2022, which was the era that the shot clock and time bank cards were introduced, Andrea hasn't really played much poker, but he's now back on the circuit and is now learning about all these new things like big blind antes and time bank cards. Probably doesn't know about Ace-5 suited yet. 
Yeah, somebody got to send him a memo. Seven raise, 100,000. So Dato finished fourth in that Barcelona main event. And Saint N Sam third. Sam Phillips second. Andre Latel the winner. Because it was always coming seventh. Sam! I agree, gazing giraffe. He sounds so serious, which means those bets are more intimidating. Suddenly, a bet of 110,000 sounds like a bet of like 500,000. Oh, we lost the uh, the jumper. Seven, all in. Because the heat is on. I think maybe that's why my verbal declarations don't work. They don't sound intimidating. Yeah, you're one of those people who should definitely keep their mouth shut. Uh, 11,000, please, sir. Sorry, what's the minimum? 12,000? <laughs> <laughs> Willie asks, what was first place prize money back then? Assuming you're talking about that Barcelona main event in 2014, it was big. It was big. Um, I think they did a chop. And Sam Phillips actually ended up with more money than Andre Latau. Phillips actually won more than a million, and Latau ended up with just shy of 800K. Ho, ho, Kazinkai, aces. Could this be the bust-out situation I was just preempting? I think it goes raceful. <laughs> <laughs> it very well could do, Joe. You're absolutely right. Oh, my goodness. All depends on the blind be blind scenario here. Oh, oh, oh. Mouths are getting covered. So Schumacher only 30 bigs here. If he has sevens, this might go in. What if he has a seven of hearts? I think you defend here pretty wide from absolute position regardless, but that looks like a three of bet, a baby. So the three bet is 380,000. Is there an argument for just flatting here? Yes. There is an argument for it. I, I would actually love to see a flat here. Absolutely adore it, in fact. Schumacher looking back at his hand. False. Yeah, potentially a missed opportunity there. SPR getting real low after you make that flat. And you are in fantastic shape. Free flop every single time. It's just too exciting. It's just the dream to get it in pre flop with aces, especially once you get re raised. I mean. <clears throat> You can think of all the reasons when you're not at the table, but when you are at the table, you're just like, no, Lynn! I mean, uh, fair enough, Joe. I, my dream is to win every single chip behind that guy. Every single chippy. One hundred thousand. The only thing that would be better is if he punctuated it with chips. 100,000 chips. I agree. Oh, I raised the minimum. <laughs> he starts sounding too much like, uh, like, like Morty. Oh, I don't know, Rick. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, jeez, I don't know, Rick. Oh, jeez, oh, man, I really don't know about this. Just tuned in. Why do they announce their chop worth now? What? Hmm? Mm hmm? Chip. Can't be too careful, Joe. Probably worthy of a ban. Yeah, okay, fair enough. 
Sorry, Jensen, you're banned. Ah, oh, jeez, Jensen. <laughs> One raise, one hundred thousand. Threefold. Now the dealer's announcing the chops. Dealer's got mad chops. So Palmasto opening with Five, the ace of spades and something else. Cousin Six. Kai, three betting with jack eight of spades. Eight this is uncharacteristic. I'm enjoying it. Mixing it in there once in a while feels good. Barmasto only seeing one chip. I'm advised by Willow from our Spanish team that Preet Palmasto is a true cash games legend. Predex being his online handle. Mm. Four betting in your face. I've been meaning to try the Parmasto, but the line at the buffet has been too long. Five, four. This is perfectly timed. Fantastic stuff from Parmasto. Does pick it up pre-flop. More like a Parmaster. Three point six seven million equates to seventy three big blinds at the current blind level. It's been a two hour and fifteen minute level. Two hour and fifteen minute session. <laughs> the levels themselves do not fluctuate in duration. Yeah, I mean being a known cash player definitely benefits from these deeper stacks, gonna have a lot more experience playing some of these deeper stacks than uh, your average tournament player who will focus a lot more on the more awkward sort of 40 and below kind of stack depths, especially in tournament formats where we don't have such a luxury blind level allowing for these deeper stacks at later stages of the tournament. Very excited to see how this plays out for our cash grinder. I love the lily white luxury levels. Schumacher in the cutoff with 8 7. Six Is out. Tashirak with Jack 10 on the button. Seven raise, 100,000. Raises to 100k. Queen 9 Vedato in the small. I'd love it if he announced all of his actions, though. Like, for example, I fold. <laughs> Both blinds fold. Fold the small blind. <laughs> Raise and take it for Halil Tashirak. Three bet initial raise to 400,000 chips. <laughs> Very serious game over there was jungle, so a lot of fun and stuff. But here, ah, it was before. Oh, okay, okay. Which one do you prefer? The new hero in the moon. <laughs> yeah. I, don't I don't know what you are no, talking he, about. He was making the fun. Ah, yeah. and he bastard. We were, we were so it. now nobody's. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> talking. Yeah, we're <clears throat> one for uh, three fold for five fold. Moderator Tom says, post big blind along with big blind and T. Six raise, 100,000. Seven fold. Cop. Eight fold. Schumacher's raise, flattered by Dato on the button. Ten Silent call, though. Pretty unnerving. No, Might I heard, heard him say it. He said call. Did he? Yep. 
Good stuff. Might become a tell if he doesn't announce. Schumacher, by the way, has 20 picks behind. He's become the shortest stack at the feature table. Queen turn off. Ugh. And on a 6-6 six, six deuce flop, Schumacher still has the best hand with ace high. But Dato has the advantage of position. So checks behind. Three of hearts on the turn. If Schumacher bets a second time, I think Dato can steal this. Mm -hmm. mm. Definitely an opportunity on the flop facing that check, probably feeling like his opponent has a lot of check calls. So after two checks, I feel like Schumacher is really screaming that he has a hand exactly like Ace Jack. Hand with showdown that just doesn't want to uh, inflate the pot. Be really weird for Schumacher to have an overpair, for example. Sometimes they'll miss the flop bet, but they might uh, have to start speeding up now. It's just whether or not Dato thinks it's worth trying to get Schumacher off of this hand when similarly checked in position. Yeah. Nine so. on the river. Ace high still good. Oh, Tom's asking about the widget and whether the widget is on pace. Mm, good question. I've not checked in with the widget today. Great question. So we're coming to the end of level 26, right? Mm. Uh, we should have 13.2 players at the end of this level. Dato just like, can I really rep anything at this stage? He'll have some 9x here in this position. Might have a hand like 9-10 suited. I think if he had a pair of 5s or something like that, or a pair of 7s, he he'd probably would have bet flop or turn, though. So that seems like a pretty difficult thing to rep. Yeah, just decides the better for it. I think Ace-Jack probably looks you up there a decent chunk if you fire that river, given the, uh, the more <laughs> passive two streets. What do you think, one more hand? I think one more hand, Joe. You think we need one more? One more. You think we need one more? I think we need one more. Yeah, one more hand, and then we've got our first break of the day. First break of the day for the players as well. Could be a long day as we try to get down to the final six. My premonition about losing a player at, by the end of this level doesn't seem like it's going to come true unless we see some spiciness in his hand. However, mm -hmm. I will say that Ace's hand probably could have been played alter alternatively and potentially could have seen the bust out right then and there. I got the feeling during the time you thought that, yeah. Well, Tashirak with sevens has raised to 100,000. Jack nine of hearts for Gilles Simon. Holden Long says, is Darto a known player? Yeah, we were just talking about him. Made the final table of EPT Barcelona in 2014. Finished fourth for over 300K. Took some time away from poker and is now back on the circuit. Cashed in Barcelona early this year. I guess we found out exactly how long 400 grand lasts in Italy. Four way to this flop, which is ace, king, five with two spades. S somehow sevens uh -huh. still the best yeah. hand. Pretty hard to imagine anybody doing a ton of chips in this spot. Four players to the flop. Nobody's really connected. Seven 
Okay, so Palmasto now has a pair of threes to go with that wheel draw. Seven's still the best hand. And looks like play has concluded at the other table, so this will be the last hand we see before we go on break. Well, we're waiting. It's on you. Queen on the river doesn't change anything. <laughs> Seven's still good. This is so weird. If I could side bet my two sevens here not being good against three opponents on this run out, I would bet every dollar I have. Look, not only has Sevens managed to hold against three opponents, but also nobody even has a spade to even, like, imagine that they can rep spades, even if they would have played spades like this going to the river. It doesn't seem like Gilly to bet into three opponents. Oh, oh, you were saying? Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. 135,000 is the bluff with Jack High. Guess Gilly wants to try and rep a little Jack 10 situation. Obviously, holding a Jack, having the blocker is nice. You got to imagine at some frequency he might have considered bluffing the turn um, in position, though, right? After seeing a check on the turn as well, being in position, he could fire the jack 10 as a semi bluff. Oh, -ho -ho! yes. Love mate. it. Yes. Love it. Palmasto raises to 650,000, gets folds from everyone else, and steals this pot. I this went from this. straightforward, boring, passive to surprise, surprise. Oh, I'm loving that. That's some great poker right there. And so this overlong first session of the day comes to a close. And Andrea Dato still has the chip lead right now. 4.6 million. We've got three other big stacks on the feature table. Bjorn Kozenkai, Gilles Simon, and Preet Parmasto. We will stick with this table for when we come back from break, when the blinds will be up to 30,000, 60,000 with a 60K big blind ante. More action on the other side of the break. A 20 minute hiatus and then we return as we continue to play down to six on the penultimate day of the PokerStars European Poker Tour Cyprus main event. Back soon. TV, I'll see you later. <laughs> Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Marchese. William Reynolds is the Playing champion. Good. Vanessa Seltz is the first ever two-time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. I think I'm gonna have fun playing with you today, sir. <laughs> It has been a minute. See you on the strip. Victoria. All in with ace 10 of hearts. And Michael, and Michael Muldoon calls the shove. Calls for less, there's two hearts gone. 
So Muldoon, the at-risk player with sevens, racing against Vicky's ace ten. Ace on the flop. <laughs> a seven high flush draw. Vicky looks sicky. The river yeah. is not a diamond or a seven. It's another ace. And that will see Michael Muldoon eliminated in fourth place. He receives £110,000. And three players now remain. Vicky Corrin, Ima Tatu and Jan Sharvik. The Balrog. 15.30 blinds. Oh man, the pound was real strong when this was shot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I remember coming to Vegas in November of 2006. Those are the glory days. Threes for Sharvik. And this is a pretty famous hand, guys. Okie dokie, here comes a. Take this back and put this. Yep. So knowing Jan Sharvik as you do, Lex, are you surprised to see him call here? Yeah. But <laughs> it's also really cool to see because it's kind of an early adapter thing all medical thing like deal with bears and stuff, so kind of on brand too. And immediately after that flop is dealt, Vicky announces all in. I tell you I'd be pretty tempted to call it off with threes here myself. Yeah. I think so too. Like that was very much like a, you know, like a power. Yeah. Wanting to make it look like a power play. It, it sounded like she wanted a fold. And I'm sure she does. I mean, I guess she could be shoving with other pairs, right? That aren't, you know, like one minute for decision, yeah. please. I I think their biggest issue is that if your opponent has queen jack, they have about the deck, and that's like that feels like best case scenario. I mean, obviously, ace king is best case scenario, right? But if they have king jack, you know, they can have king queen jack nine, and whatever is runner runner can make a pair to you too. If they have one spade, that counts as like one out, so. Well, Imad Tartu called for the clock, and Jan Sharvik's now on a 60-second countdown. A 10 second countdown in the end of the countdown the hand will be dead 10 9 8 7 
six, five, I call four. The Balrog calls. Oh. Oh. He taps the table. Nice call. Yeah, that's gangster. He's the favorite, but not by a lot. Jack on the turn. <laughs> and Jan Sharvek is eliminated in third place. 168,600 pounds. And Imad Tatu apologizes for calling the clock. Do you remember back when calling the clock was the worst thing you could do to someone? I wish they would do it like every hand and now with this poker. <laughs> right? Oh. So Shavik made the good call, got punished, and now we're heads up for the title. See if they keep drinking water now. So at this point, Ima Tatu has the slight chip lead. All right, 200k pot to kick things off. Top pair versus second pair. Bet of 100k, quickly called by Tartu. A bet of 300,000. Must, nice. must be nice to be able to just keep betting top pair. Oh, that's so nice. And gets called again. River card is a nine. Ooh. Nine of diamonds. Kind of an ugly river. Yeah, just check. You have an eight. Six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. I genuinely think she made him do that by saying, "I'll let you both the floor." So he's like, "You know what? That'd be cool." You know what I mean? A lot more of that went on back then than it does now. Uh, it's got a total blank on the end here. What? Was that considered a blank in 2006? <laughs> it's a brick. <laughs> well, she made the right call against Barney Boatman earlier. A not dissimilar spot, and she calls this one. Well, so now check eight. Tens are good, and momentum swings in Vicky Corrin's direction. Induces the bluff, snaps it off, takes the chip lead. Seven six, the hand for Vicky. She calls, and Emad's going to check his option with eight six. Oh, lops the joint. Bets a hundred k. Tartu with the straight draw. And he oh, raises. What a dream. 
Impression of heads up was this easy all the time, Lex. Yeah, it was crazy. That call with the queen ten was really good, though. I mean, it was really good, except for the fact that she thought the nine was a brick. No, I think she said something <laughs> like, uh, "Why couldn't have been a brick?" Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Total brick, I call. No, actually, it was a flush and straight card, but you're good. <laughs> Vicky calls the raise. We've now got the better part of 1.2 million in the middle. Diamonds. All in, All in and a call. Vicky got the nuts straight. Three to seven and six eight is the hand for Emma. Looks like she's gonna pass out. It really does. Vicky got the straight. Emma got in with six eight. Let's see the river card. River card is a jack. And that is the moment that Victoria Corrin became the first female EPT champion. Wins the London leg of season three of the European Poker Tour on home soil, 500,000 pounds. Imad Tatu, the runner up for 286K. So we kick off day two of the super high roller with blinds at 3,000, 6,000 with a 1,000 ante. Alashemian first to speak. He's got queens under the gun. Oh, hi. And that's a raise to 14,000. Paul Newey has ace king suited. First hand, and we are already headed for a collision. Newey counting out a re raise. He three bets to 40,000. Round to Mike McDonald in the big blind. Who's got kings? <laughs> oh, MG, this is just a sick, sick cooler. Owen. Mike shoves. And I don't think Ola can fold having both these guys way covered. Shemi and five bets. Enough to put Newey all in. Paul's got about 20% of his stack in the middle, and I don't think he's supposed to fold this. Off suit, there's an argument. Suited, I think he's got to try to triple up here. He calls all in. Ball's not the most experienced player at the table, but he's got the bankroll to play just as fearlessly as the rest of them. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. He's got the ace. Ace is going to come, I guess. I definitely deserve to lose one of these eventually this year. Mike's having a pretty good year. You owe me an ace from the last from the PCI. <laughs> Ball bubbled that tournament. Awkward. A three-way coup to start the day, and kings are holding on that flop. Give us fight, though. Knew he's the only one who even flopped a backdoor. The turn card is a nine. Knew he's looking for an ace on the river. Shemian needs a queen. It's a ten. A triple up for Timex, and Paul Newey is out. Oh, guys. An ace didn't come. We saw. Indian Paul. Aw, Paul Newey. He always loses with grace. He's a class act, this guy. Ah, uh, can't fault. Action has been folded to Shemian in the small blind. He has aces. See, now this will probably be standard. Ola just keeps picking up big hand after big hand. He's had more big hands than the Foo Fighters ever long video. He's setting a trap with this one. He just calls, and Jason Mercy has ace king in the big blind. That's not going to be good for business. That's not going to be good for anybody, except probably all Shemian. Mercia responds to the limp by raising a total of 26,000. How many clicks does it take to get to the center of a cold deck pot? A one, a two, and this is a three bet to 78,000. A three. Jason Mercia. Four bets to 168,000. A four. Oh, 
All in. Show me in five pet shops. Five, five clicks. And Mercia calls. Just a very unfortunate spot for Jason. Merce dog is a huge dog. <sighs> and he knows it. That wasn't a sigh, that was a sad bark. They're counting it out for me. Hmm? They're counting it out for me. Some folks think that's lucky. Not much hope for Mercia on that flop. You have more in? A little more. Not much. Jason likes to be drawing dead on the turn. Sure enough. Okay, good luck. Good luck, guys. Mercia is eliminated, and Ola Shemin will move up over the 1.1 million mark. How much was it there? 551. Oh, yeah. Could be really close. Always sad to see the Merce dog go, although not as sad as Marley and me. <laughs> Fix it up. This is the NAPT, my babies. Comeback time. Yeah, we can play it for real now. One time, come on. Yeah. Hey, Mom, I'm playing heads off on TV. I'll see you later. <laughs> Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Marquesi. William Reynolds is the champion. Vanessa Seltz is the first ever two time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. I think I'm gonna have fun playing with you today, sir. It has been a minute. See you on the strip. Right now, we are in Cyprus on the PokerStars European Poker Tour, but in less than a month, we will be in Vegas, the real one, not the virtual one, for the North American Poker Tour. NAPT Las Vegas coming at you next month. Three days of live coverage, plus the return of the big game, with the big game on tour being filmed at Resorts World. Meanwhile, on day five of the main event here in Cyprus, these are the chip leaders coming back from the first break of the day. We have got the four biggest stacks on the feature table right now. Andrea, the announcer, Dato, Bjorn Kozenkai, Gilles Simon, and Preet Parmasto. We've lost two players so far today, just two eliminations. Alessandro Manassi out in 16th, Timur Vardanian out in 15th. 14 remain as we play down to the final six on the penultimate day of this 5K MTT. It's James Hartigan alongside Griffin Benger. What's up, boys and girls? And we're looking at the prize money right now, Griff. $51,525 for the next player out. Uh, we've got a money jump with each, every other elimination right now. Uh, once we get down to a single table, we will have a pay jump with every single KO. And once we reach the official final table, once we are down to the final eight, we are looking at six figure scores. Of course, most of the prize money, most of the big payouts are going to be paid tomorrow when we play down from six to a winner with the champion getting more than a million dollars. It's a lot of cheddar. $6.4 million prize pool in this tournament generated by 1,320 total entries. Over the course of the last four days, we've played down to the final 14. And here we are with two tables of seven, hoping to become one table hoping to make it to the final six and come back to play on the final day, which is tomorrow. A reminder, main event Sunday isn't just about the final table of this tournament, it's also the day when we bring you two mini main events in the online mini EPT Cypress series. One costs $5.50 to play, the other costs $55 to play, and there is a gold power pass to the winner of each tournament. Action folded. 
to the blinds. Mark Foggin in the small. Jack six of hearts. Yeah, playing about 30 big blinds here. I like this limp. Hope to just see a cheap flop with the suited jack. Going to be tough to defend against that, you know, three and a half to four X. But you know what? Foggin says, let's, uh, let's play this aggressively. Raise and take it. Poker Bradster watching on YouTube says, I am railing November Niner Kenny Hallett. I think it's fair to say, Kenny, the most accomplished, charming, interesting player to make the final table of the World Series of Poker main event that year. Wow. What how, year did you how, make the how final quick, table? How quick, how quick we all forget about... Johnny Bax. When, <laughs> when. <laughs> Is that his name? Yes, Kenny Leeson's. Kenny Hallett is still in. Andrea Dato has the spraggy A7 offsuit. Folds it. I love questions like this. Rocca says, what if someone really needs to go to the toilet in a game? then they should get out of their seat and go to the toilet. Now, granted, if they're due to post the blinds, those blinds will be posted for them, and they'll lose those chips by virtue of not being in their seat. But better that than they have an accident. Morgan raising from the button. 9-6 of diamonds. And king-queen for Kozenkai. Yeah, this three-bed play is pretty clean. You're probably not prepared. I mean, you're definitely not prepared. Oh, my God! Whoa, whoa, whoa. An ill-timed three-bet from Kozenkai with Schumacher waking up with aces in the big blind. And at 60K big blind, this is being 20 effective. It's going to be about another 13 big blinds on top of the eight or so that Kozenkai has put in. Nine, even. Plays a time bank card. And yes, Griffin has highlighted that we are now playing level 27, 30,000, 60,000 blinds. This would be a very awkward amount for Kazen Kai being faced here when the shove comes in. Yeah, you put in 555. And it's 715,000 more to call. You're just burning money if your opponent has two jacks or two tens here, which are hands that are going to be going in. And that's why the big sigh from Kazen Kai. You just hate to be, see, you know, two aces, two kings, ace king, ace queen. All that value range is just destroying your king queen. It's one of those spots where it's like, ah, oh, why couldn't you just have one point five? Yeah. There's the call. Now we are soft hand for hand, <clears throat> so we do need the hand at the other table to play to its conclusion before they show their whole cards and before we run out this all in. <clears throat> we can see that Schumacher is an 85% favorite to double up here. We haven't played much, but so far so good. How about me? Yeah, yeah, I love you.
So I guess we can go across to the other table to see what is happening there. I believe it's Jose Gonzalez and Alexander Fatterin in a hand. Over to the other table, picking up the action on the turn with a bet from Gonzalez <coughs> and a fold from Paterin. So, with that hand played to its conclusion, we can now run out the all in on the main stage. <coughs> Good for a Schumacher double up. 94% favorite now. I just, I just don't believe that 6%, right? Backdoor diamonds, backdoor straight. Nine diamonds also. Check of diamonds. That would be too many outs though. But with folded cards considered and being drawing dead on the turn so often. Yeah. The numbers don't lie. Two things I know the numbers and the widget don't lie. Okay. So Schumacher has doubled up to 2.7 million, now has 45 big blinds. The shortest stack at the table, Griff, is Mark Foggin, but he's still got 30 bigs. Yeah, very deep stack here with 14 players remaining. That's really the dream, isn't it? He probably went on break, maybe called his partner, calming him down. It's all exciting. Yeah. Giving him a good luck. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to do great, hon. Keep it up. First hand back, ace double up. Based on the chip distribution here and based on how many of the big stacks are at this table, there's got to be some shorties on the other table. Pretty sure that Kuznetsov is playing fewer than 15 big blinds. I don't think Jared Carbo has that much either. Simon says fold. Ten eight suited for Foggin. It's a pretty hand, but one you gotta be gotta be careful of playing these ten eight suited, nine six suited on this twenty big thir twenty thirty big blind stack depth. I guess it's closer to thirty. It's a little reasonable. Showing he's prepared to battle. Well, that's pretty good for Tashirak. Flopping trips. With less than 1% equity, Foggin bets 75k. Raise from Tashirak. And if you're fogging, you hate to get exploited here by the bluff check raises, but he's also probably going to have a pretty good idea of maybe the type of player Tashirak is. If, this, if he's someone that's going to do this with a lot of air, or if it's going to be more weighted to, you know, K 
kings, sixes. And yeah, it looks the way he's looking at his chips, it's like he kind of looks like he kind of wants to get a bit frisky. He doesn't believe it. He's going to have to raise it at least to 325 if he wants to continue as a raise. A float, I think, with 10 8 of clubs, like it's just uh, it might be a little too bad and not enough room with the chip stack. Could also just be saving little face. Probably recognizing that this isn't the pot I need to fight for here with 14 players left in an EPT event. But he does do it. And makes it maybe in a bit bigger than he would necessarily need to, but <coughs> wants to force Tasharak here to just let it go if he doesn't have it. Five seconds. And I think this hand <coughs> is a good example of, you know, if you don't get your hand caught in the cookie jar every now and then, you're just never going to get any cookies, James. And we all like cookies. Cookies. I just had two on break. And there's the shove. And Tashirak will take down this pot on the flop. Do we have a redraw? 12. Redraw is 12. at 9. Folded to the small blind, classic blind on blind battle, fresh off that nice pot. And with respect to Doyle Brunson, no thanks. That's a good result. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we'll take it. Dominated. Great Palmasto opening under the gun with King Jack suited. Crunchy. Round to the button. Alil Tashirak folds. And Threadato in the small blind has 10 8 of clubs. Crunchy. Tell us how you really feel. So apparently, Preet Palmasto is a little bit short of time bank cards, Griffin. When he was at the outer table earlier on, he had a moment where he zoned out for two minutes and didn't realize the action was on him. Woof. And it cost him four time bank cards. Woof. What next? Someone's going to throw in a chip and accidentally call it all in? 753. More on that shortly. That's right, John Delano. It has been a long week for these players. And guess what? They make mistakes. I guess the question is how they should be punished for those mistakes. 
120,000. The announcer declares 120,000. Yeah, I love this lead from, from Dato. Um, this board, you know, it's, it just, it's, it's just nice on the turn here, unless your opponent raises you, which he really shouldn't with much of his range here. Even if you have an overpair, you don't necessarily want to get, um, get crazy here. But Parmasto, pretty aware that Dato could just be mucking about and that this king high could still be good. You're still backdoor on those clubs. And in this case, if those clubs did backdoor, would win a monster pot. Ace of Diamonds is tricky for both of them. Dato's going to expect that a lot of Parmasto's range are going to be ace high floats more so than the king high floats. So it's going to be hard to, to, to bet this card. Parmasto could also just have diamonds. And I think we'll probably hear from Parmasto here. Even though he technically has the best hand, he doesn't know that. 280. Yeah, he would hate to lose this hand at showdown to something like a five or even give a free card to something like eight nine of hearts that can't really defend well against a bet here five seconds Pass. And Palmasto wins the pot. Thrilled to welcome a special guest to the live stream right now. It's been a long time since we've heard from him. Tournament director Toby Stone joins us here at EPT Cyprus. It's been a while since we've had you for our world-famous bubble coverage, Toby. That's when occasionally you make an appearance. Yep, so here I am. Now, the reason you're here is there was a hand during the last session, which happened at the outer table. Uh, the reaction from the audience was somewhat... How can I put this? Vociferous. Um, I think I understand why the ruling was made the way it was made, but I think <coughs> you can explain it better than I can. And just to recap what happened here, we had Kuznetsov move all in from mid position. Unfortunately, Jose Gonzalez in the small blind, who had headphones on, didn't notice there'd been an all in. Throw out a 25K chip on top of the 25K chip he already had in the small blind to complete. The big blind thought, oh, he's called the all in. I fold. Because Netsov thought, oh, he's called the all-in, I'll turn my cards over. And that's when it all kicked off. So I guess the key question is, why is that not ruled as a call if he's thrown out a single chip there? So a couple of things really is, first of all, we don't know 100% what he wants to do. It's not clear. He doesn't say call. The big blind is 50. He has 25 out, and he puts 25. So... We just don't know. We don't know what his intent is. So we, we can't allude to him what, what his intent is. So we can't um, force him to call that bet. Um, if it's heads up and you're facing, and he also wasn't facing an open bet in terms of he was looking at the big blind. Yes. Sure, he wasn't paying attention. And he should be paying attention. Yes, he should be paying I think we all will agree that, right? Yeah, but try, try to get all the players to pay attention all the time. And, you know, if you have a solution for that, then let me know because <laughs> I'd love to hear it, right? So we have to just accept that all players are not paying attention all the time. So he, he's looking at the 50. As far as he's concerned, at the beginning of the hand, he's looking at the 50. Yes. Okay. If this was an open bet, for example, in a, I'm just going to give you the other example. If this was an open bet and, and somebody bets like on the flop and then he throws in a chip, well, it's an open bet. He sh I mean, he has to know where the bet is. But as far as he's concerned, it's a big blind 20, big, small blind 25, big blind 50. And that's what he's looking at. So we just don't know what he wants to do in this situation. So we can't say we think he wanted to do this. We think he wanted that. We just don't know what he wants to do. So the standard ruling, I think, pretty much worldwide is if if you, uh, if you're not heads up heads yeah. up is slightly different if you're in a multi-way pot and you throw in some chips into the pot and it doesn't cover what the bet is then the standard rule is that those chips have to stay and you have the option to to, to call or fold but you leave those chips in the pot 
it was unfortunate that the dealer also made a mistake here, unfortunately. You know, dealers are not infallible. They do make mistakes occasionally. And she did say call. And then that's the reason why uh, Cutoff opened his cards. Yes. So a couple of things went wrong here, unfortunately. But I think to force him to call when we didn't know his intention, when the dealer also made a mistake, uh, of course he should have been paying attention, but should we force him to call a bet like that? when we're really unsure what he wants to do. Okay, so the most common <coughs> reaction here, and there's a couple of examples yeah. here on YouTube, this we don't know is irrelevant if throwing in a chip means calling. No. Mm, but and it doesn't. Other, that's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't in, in that, this yeah. context. Yeah. Right. <coughs> um, what about this? You're a poker player. Focus on the game. No excuses. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd love to do that, but just try it. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> we'd be fighting with the players all the time. I, th I think that would be bad for the game in the long term. Even though this is not a perfect situation, I think that would be bad for the game. I think we'd be fighting with the players all the time. Uh, I don't think it would be a good situation for us to be in as organisers. Yeah. Um, one other follow-up question, though, is I, I, I understand, and I know we've had this conversation before, and you always say the last thing you want to do as a TD, as a floor <coughs> manager, is force a player to put chips in the pot if they don't want to or it's not their intent to do that. But... There didn't seem to be any repercussions for Gonzalez there. Some people saying, why no penalty in this situation? He just puts his headphones back on and effectively gets away with it, having made a mistake. That's a good point. That's definitely a good point, yeah. We, uh, yeah. I guess we don't penalise mistakes. It's not something that we have standard kind of uh, rules on. Like if you're you know, folding out of turn on purpose, passing out of turn, all these kinds of things, or if you're being aggressive to other players, we have standard uh, procedures for that, you know, one round, two round, three round, four, four rounds. We don't have uh, penalties for what we would, I guess, consider genuine mistakes. But yeah. I guess I could bring it to my team and discuss it. Yeah. I could see a reason for giving him a penalty here because it will make him pay attention next yeah, time. Yeah, it turns out Yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. the thing I was most surprised at is that he put his headphones back on because I'm like, dude, yeah. you think you'd have uh -huh. learned your lesson because next time you might not get so lucky. Yeah. Next time you might make a mistake that does have to stand. Yeah, I think it's a good point, actually. I will definitely discuss it with, uh, with some people, yeah. I will say also that players do have their, their rituals, their process, and that's, you know, this is him. This, that's clearly his game face, right? That's like a part right. of his, like, costume almost that you put on. Like, that you just, so that could be part of it as well. It doesn't necessarily indicate that he just doesn't care and that he's going back to his, his deep house. <laughs> yeah, I, I also I also think, and this is this is a comment that Mr. Disobedient has made. Player Gonzalez didn't show any remorse when putting his headphones back on. I think there's two ways of reading it. One is that he's arrogantly returning to how things were. I think it's also fair to say he was probably a little bit embarrassed. No one likes making a mistake like that, right? He seemed pretty happy with the ruling, though, didn't he? When he was <laughs> when he was go there, you go. I yeah. win. Push your cards in. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have been a little bit more apologetic, to be honest. Yes. I think I would have been. But you don't make mistakes, so. <laughs> How will we ever know? 1976. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last one, yeah. But <laughs> the reality is that, look, look, you know, my read on the situation, and I think it's interesting you say it, we don't know the player's intent. I thought from what was being said and from the eyewitness testimony and from the way it went down, it seemed to me his intent was pretty clearly to just call the big blind. I mean, it seemed yeah. pretty clear he was unaware there'd been an all-in. Yeah, it did, look, it did look like that. Um, I, if I would have made the ruling, not, nothing against the, that floor person. I think he dealt with it. it was, it's a high-pressure situation for him. It's been televised. Um, I, I would not have been saying it. he wanted to do this. He wanted to do that. It doesn't really matter what he wanted to do in that situation. Yeah. We don't know what his intent is. Yeah. I found it very interesting that some people were talking about rules being enforced and the standard rule here and... Again, not trying to speak for you, Toby, but there is no such thing as a standard rule. Every situation is unique, and every situation needs a, a different judgment. Yeah, we have some black and white areas, which is very clear, and then there's some, a lot of grey. And that's why we have rule number one, which is TD discretion. Exactly, which, which is in the fairness of the game, and it yeah. does feel, and this is where I, I am aligned, it does feel that it wouldn't be fair to enforce a punishment so severe as to say you have to call off all your yeah. chips in that on, a genu on what does look like a genuine mistake. Yes. Yeah. Is that you've got to give the benefit of doubt in that situation. But generally speaking, this would 
do you think be a standard ruling in most poker tournaments around the world or do you think this is something that will <coughs> probably be more rigidly enforced elsewhere i mean a little bit more went went on there than the standard throwing in a chip uh putting in less than what the call is yeah but generally if you put in less than what the call is you will generally get those um you'll be have the option to call the raise yeah or leave those chips in and you can pass your cards again it depends if it's heads up it depends if it's an open bet if that was an open bet heads up is a completely different situation so i th i think a lot of other poker rooms would would probably rule the same but i don't know yeah it's it's but it, I, what i found interesting griffin is obviously you weren't on during that last session when i recounted the hand your immediate thought was well he shouldn't be forced to call the all in there no so you've seen situations like this yourself before yeah yeah i have and i think um it's just it's obviously it's a it's a, it's a pretty messy situation but i mean you you're creating one for that particular player that is just it's just so so it's pretty awful situation for them, you know. Like obviously they've made uh, an, an an error, but it's I think it's very clear, you know, what happened. And to force someone to put their chips yeah. in the middle, you know, you've been playing for four days, and a small little mental mistake. I mean, it's I think it's something we can all <coughs> relate to, you know. It's something that could happen to us. Um, you, you know, maybe more some people are gonna be more careful careful than others. But I've had situations in that nine seat or one seat where I've missed some action, and you know, it's 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 just it's tough. It would be a harsh penalty to, to force him to call yeah. in this situation. And at, like, at the end of the day, it's the player's responsibility to pay attention and to know what's going on on the table. And sure, the guy with the headphones, he wasn't paying attention. But also the other guy could have also said, is that a call? Can I see those chips going over the pot? Like I always tell the dealers, if the, if the chip should always go in or a big significant amount of the chip should mm -hmm. go in. If I'm that player in that situation and there's just two 25s out, I'm like, I know it's a big blind as well. You know, everybody knows the big blinds are 25-50. I might be saying, has he called? Has he called before turning my cards over? So he also could have protected himself in that situation, and he didn't. Sure. Uh, one final question on this, um, Toby, which a couple of people have asked, including Mason Pye. There is a third player in this hand. There was the big blind. Now, the big blind folded because they yeah. thought the all-in had been called. Does that change the decision at all how they've not, been affected yeah not not one it's normally an action two or three people uh, two people would have had to act afterwards before you can like technically go back so in a slightly different situation um he yeah maybe he could call the 50 and it's like you know fold 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 then you might come to a different situation because there's been yeah four different actions yeah um Thank you for coming by and just uh, explaining. I mean, I think Olivier did a pretty good job of explaining it to the players there, but obviously there were a lot of questions that came in after the event, and I think people may have played in some card rooms where maybe harsher rulings were made, but I understand why the ruling is made in the best interest of the fairness of the yeah. game in an EPT main event. Just before you go, overall, happy with how things have gone here in Cyprus? Yeah, amazing. And I mean, it's the first time we've been here uh, in Cyprus. The weather's been great. The the venue's excellent, so big, so spacious. There's an army of waiters taking care of all the players. Yep. There's food everywhere. You know, it's amazing. Really, really good. The numbers are excellent. Cool. Uh, yeah, we've got some really high numbers when in comparison to, like, historically on all the different EPTs for us over the first half. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm really, really happy. Yeah. Well, um, enjoy your well-earned rest after this wraps tomorrow. I'm sure we will see you tomorrow on stage presenting the trophy when this plays down to a winner but for now toby thank you very much all right cheers guys toby stone tournament director responding to that uh, controversial hand from the last level and hopefully i think toby did a pretty good job there of uh, explaining the ruling why that ruling was made and how decisions are always taken in the best interest of the game with fairness to all players I, I mean, I can, I can, you know, I can also understand the reaction um, uh, from some of you watching at home. I think it's also pretty easy to just sort of get together in a bit of a mob. No, what? This can't be right. You can't, you can't get away with this. But it's, I think it's important to have some empathy. I mean, this is, you know, this is a, it, this can be a life-changing decision for that person. This tiny, small, mis small mistake that uh, I think that the right ruling was made. So many different people from different nations. I. Kind of stuff. Also did find it interesting that 
I was very much on the side of a penalty being awarded there. I did appreciate Toby's point of view that you don't want to punish genuine mistakes. But also, I find it interesting that maybe it should be discussed whether if you have failed to pay attention, there should be some punitive consequences to that. I think that would, I, I, I think I kind of agree with that maybe, uh, maybe a one round penalty for, for something of that nature, just to set a bit of a precedent with people that they know that there's, you know, there are going to be consequences for, for something, a mistake of that nature, and, and, and maybe it'll help people to to realize you need to, to pay attention more. So this doesn't happen again. We don't have, a, you know, something yeah. like this go on. Anyway, back to the here and now. Apologies, I know we've missed a few hands, but I don't think we've missed anything too consequential. We have seen Andrea Dato increase his chip lead to over 7 million. Mark Foggin has dropped down to 16 big blinds. Yeah, and I just want to send a little shout out to the players on the feature table for having mostly boring hands go on. Well, Toby was here, I was kind of paying attention. And, uh, and yeah, nothing really of, of, of too interesting. A lot of 500,000 chip pots, you know? <laughs> It, it just started becoming a little bit rainy. Mm. A couple of days where it's super rainy, super dark. Um, and some nice little bluff like there from Kozen yeah. Kai. Pot. Yeah. Size yeah. bet I mean, it's, it, it, on the river it's there. when it's sunny because mm -hmm. all the leaves are down and they're colorful. And yeah. yeah, that's nice. But otherwise, sky is gray, rainy. I mean, I think um, in that hand, by the way, Kuznetsov's all-in was around 500k. I mean, an alternative ruling could have been if you're calling 50, you're calling 500. There is our secondary feature table. Yeah, so it is Kuznetsov who's all-in here. Red triangle of death in front of him. And folded back around to the original razor, Victor Yuge. Oh, there has been a call. Jose Gonzalez called and now puts the chips out. Yeah, and that's going to be quite a strong range on the button when it goes raise, shove, call. So I expect probably a pretty strong hand there for our bearded Viking on the right. Now, of course, this all in will not be dealt <laughs> out until the hand is concluded at the feature table. It's soft hand for hand right now. I do find it ironic that Kuznetsov has moved all in and been called by Gonzalez for real. <laughs> they got a lot of lore, these two. Backstory. So this is the hand that's still in progress on the main stage. Foggin has opened in the cutoff with the Spraggy. Tashirek is shoved from the big blind, gets a fold, and that means we are going back out into the field, back out to the outer table. So it's ace-queen for Kuznetsov, king-queen for Gonzalez, a domination situation. A clean run out so far for ace high. And Kuznetsov gets the double up through Gonzalez. <laughs> Seems like a bit of a loose call with the King Queen, but I would have to be sort of <laughs> see how much the all in was for, as there was a, a raise before the shove. I'm just going to say, Griffin, that it feels like. The universe is back in balance, right? That, that that makes up for the last one. You got the call, you got the double up, you got what you wanted. Back to the feature table where Simon has raised with ace three. Been a rough level for Foggin to go from 1.7 million all the way down to 865. Getting close to that zone that is dangerous. Iris and Anders watching on YouTube have a one word description of that double up. Justice. <laughs> Pass. 
And we're back. Too friendly. Small talk. Let's see if the friendly talk worked. <laughs> or you just had eight of diamonds, five of clubs. It would be funny if I called out. Can we have a deck change, please? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in my tea leaves. Hey, no witchcraft at the table. Can I have a tea, please? That's a good comment from Martin. Okay. It's fair to say that genuine mistakes should never be confused with genuine exploits. I don't believe for one second, I think there is a 0.0001% chance that that was an exploit from Gonzalez's no situation. It's so high risk. You'd have to know that they're going to make that ruling for sure. If Like, it's just, no. And Andrea, the announcer, Dato, declaring his bet. Not that family anymore. Definitely been seeing a trend in the last year or so of sort of a shift in blind on blind play. Yeah. So often you would see players limp in with most of their range now taking more aggressive action even when you know in this situation i understand they both have a lot of chips but just raising the king deuce and getting a quick fold <coughs> One hundred twenty thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand. Close. Damn. Dada, why you embarrass me like that, dude? Come on, man. Hello, three bat. I really liked what I've seen from, from Parmaster. Likewise. <coughs> you know, 54 big blinds, 14 players left. You don't have to come after and try to exploit the chip leader's light button opens. Uh, we saw that nice bluff right Five. before the end of the last level. Check raising on the river against Simone. Five. And folding out the much better hand in the ace eight. So I think this is uh, someone to really keep an eye on as we get closer and closer to that both unofficial and official final table. Yeah, and talking about that, so the widget is out right now. Had us finishing the last level with 13 players. In fact, we finished with 14. So, okay. Only one away, not a disaster. It has us finishing this level with just 10 players. And I don't know, four eliminations in the next 54 minutes. I'm not convinced that's going to happen. After all the widgets done for you, James, never let you down once. Suddenly you start doubting it? I don't even know who you are anymore. Pocket sevens for Yannick Schumacher. They say it is always coming. Coming. 
Crunchy. Tashirak calling in the hijack. Dato in the cutoff. Has the snowman's. Nom nom. He calls as well. Round to Simon on the button. Ooh. King eight of spades. Folds. Palmasto in the small. 10 9 suited. Has the grafter. And I was going to say if there is any player in any position with any cards who's likely to squeeze here, it would be Palmasto. But he's just going to call. Yeah, we did see. I mean, listen, every time I see Palmasto camera hit on him it looks like he's aiming to misbehave but uh, <laughs> did see him call with the 4-3 suited in that last hand uh, from the small blind so someone clearly who's very comfortable playing post flop has a lot of uh, moves in his arsenal and certainly wants to Four see eight. a flop with 10-9 suited and let's do it four-way action boo queen 4-4 four, four. bit of a nothing board well, actually it's a little more interesting than I thought we got two clubs yeah two overs to the four yeah, sure. two clubs for Tasharak. We can probably expect to see a little protection here from Dato. Going to be aware that some of the time there are better hands that are checking here, you know, like your nines and tens. Some, you know, if the original opener in uh, Schumacher had something like queen ten suited, would probably play this spot as a check call. But you, you want to protect against all these kind of hands that have a lot of equity that you're now ahead of. And sometimes you're going to get one or two customers, or at least one that you're ahead of and in this case it's both Schumacher and Tasharak who has the draw. Schumacher might be able to find a fold. It is a very small bet. You would hate to fold here and then this whole time Dato had something like sixes. But you're also ahead of club draws. You're in a, in a, you're drawing to the nuts effectively. Yep. If that seven does come Do go three ways to the turn. <laughs> Don't expect to see any betting on this street from any of the three players. Dato is going to recognize that he's losing a fair bit of the time here. Probably most likely to Schumacher, who will be playing some queens as check calls, and then the nines, tens, and jacks. So he's actually, in his best case scenario, he just needs to survive the river, but does not. And Schumacher's going to be aware now he doesn't have the best hand. A lot of the time, Tasharak should have a queen here, so might want to turn this into a bluff sometimes, but because the ace is also going to fill up those ace-x of clubs hands, smartens up and just is going to turn over what he knows is not going to be the winning hand. Barry Greenstein coming to Tasharek's aid. Scary Barry. Good level for Tasharek here now. All the way up to nearly 60 big blinds. Yeah, he is an above average stack. The average stack being less than 50 bigs now, 2.8 million. And we have got five players at this feature table. Five of the seven players we're watching right now have above average stacks. And we've got Yannick Schumacher with 2 million, about 35 bigs, and Mark Foggin on 715k. And Foggin dropping down to the 10 big blind mark.
Schumacher has opened under the gun. Gilles Simon has ace three of hearts in the cutoff. Yeah, I, I would think that Simone is going to try to put some ICM pressure and punish this open, playing about 33 effective against Schumacher. We are just seven-handed. So that under-the-gun range, obviously, going to be stronger than a hand like ace three, but you're going to be folding out. Oh, my goodness gracious. Don't scare me like that, Parmasto. Parmasto. Trying to commentate over here. With aces. Hey, Griffin, Tubless RO asks, isn't 90 minutes per level way too much? Would you consider it to be too much if you'd paid $5,000 to play a poker tournament? I think it's just right, baby. And I'll, I'll tell you what. I would expect this to force a fold from Simone most of the time. Yeah. But I will say, James. Yeah, that looks like a look back and fold. I will say it does help Parmasto's case that he's really shown that he's willing to, you know, bob and weave some yeah. of these river check raises and three bets with six high. And that's kind of what you have to do to to make people think that you don't always have it. But he had it. He had it. We saw it. He had the aces. Round two. Simone in the hijack. Folds. Palmasto. 10 6. Don't get cocky. <laughs> the short stack. Mark Foggin. Ace 4 off. Uh. This is a Foggin shove. 11 blinds. Hate getting called when you got the Ace 4, but. You know, this is how you pick up chips. This is how you gotta gotta get back into it. This is a, a dream scenario. Five seconds. Just give me a couple folds. In all in and sevens in the small blind for cousin kite that's yeah, treble the old <laughs> hockey sticks yeah reshoves schumacher in the big blind deuces folds and we're in a situation where we have to wait for plays concluded at the other table before this all in is dealt Decided to show, yeah. but <laughs> nobody forced no, you. The card, the card decided. The card decided. You can miss it. Oh, always. Or they can see that on, on that table. No. Ah, yeah. Okay. Looks like we're ready to go. And Mark Foggin is at risk here. And two to one underdog. Yeah, Mark Foggin just needs uh, a break. A you know, this level has not gone his way, but that's the beautiful thing about the game we love is even if you, you know, you step in a couple potholes, one ace in this hand can just turn things around. You'll be back where you started. Well, we see an ace on the desk. King, king, six, flop. Seven's huge favorite now. Anything above an eight will give more outs. That's one of them. Oh, <laughs> like that? Another lady on the river. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and Foggin will win with a side two pair. 
We do not accept three pairs here at the EPT. I've asked about it. They say side two pairs still better. River card. Here's a queen, and sevens are counterfeited. Kings and queens with the ace kicker. See Mark Foggin double up through Bjorn Kozenkai. Too many pair syndrome. Telling you. You don't want three pair. So Foggin survives and now has 25 bigs as Kozenkai drops down to 40 bigs. And we are still at 14 players in the EPT Cypress main event. What an icon. So if you're watching our live stream yesterday when we were covering day four of the main event, you'll know we made a big announcement about the big game. In case you missed it, in case you haven't heard, in case you didn't see the article on the PokerStars blog, PokerStars is bringing back the big game. We are taking the big game on tour and filming it at NAPT Las Vegas at Resorts World on November 8th and 9th. Now, there is the chance for you to be a loose cannon. There are going to be free to play loose cannon qualifying tournaments at resorts on November 5th. So if you're going to the NAPT, are you going to be in Vegas that weekend, the weekend of the 4th, 5th? Why not try out? Why not compete, try and get through to the casting process and potentially be selected as a loose cannon to play in the big game? You could be staked to play against some of the biggest names in poker and potentially keep any profit you make. You know the format. You remember the shows from 2010, 2011? And you can still be a tight player. You don't need to be loose, but you will be a loose cannon if you qualify. It's for all those tight guys at home thinking, oh, I'm not cut out for this. Just qualify. Eight raise, 120,000. Sugar Falcon says, I still watch the big game every day on the PokerStars 24-7 stream. Well, you're going to have 10 new episodes sometime in 2024, because we're going to be filming this for TV. Reminder that we did also announce yesterday that in addition to filming Big Game on Tour on the 8th and 9th, we're going to be streaming NAPT Las Vegas on the 10th, 11th, and 12th, the last two days of the main event, and the final table of the 5K High Roller. So three days of live coverage from NAPT Las Vegas on Twitch and YouTube coming early next month. And no, I'm not going to leak any of the big names confirmed or in talks to appear in those big game sessions. And I am going to do my best not to say any of them because I'm basically the, the, the Tom Holland of the MCU with this stuff, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep, it, keep it locked, all right? Keep it tight. What we do is we feed Griffin <laughs> a lot of fake names, just in yeah, case. Yeah, notice that. <laughs> Puggy Pearson, Gary Turnbuckle, they're all in. Wait, Puggy's not going to be there? Oh, come on. All right, Foggin. You really want to get back in the pool after that? After you almost drowned? Winter says, James, can you leak the big name casters at least? Well, first of all, I should highlight it is not a live stream. But it will have presenters slash commentators whose names are James Hartigan and Joe Stapleton. Logan has raised with ace-10. Schumacher has deuces on the button. Six Ooh. Seven this is a bit of a loosey-goosey flat. With the ducks, though. 
Tubeless, I don't know what you're alluding to, by the way, but we don't charge for our content. If you want to watch the NAPT live stream, it's free to watch on Twitch and YouTube. It's not, a, it's not losing. Sucky Ducky on the flat. Let's see how it works out for him. Ducks fly together. Ducks fly together. Not on this occasion. I wonder if there is a bit of sort of mental warfare a little bit here. When you're flatting with the deuces here in Schumacher's shoes, maybe you're thinking, you know what, Falcon just got there on the river. I don't think he's going to just come out blasting if he doesn't hit the board. That's what I'd be thinking. I understand the sims and stuff don't tell you those kind of things, but just from my live experience, sometimes I'll... I'll come after a player a little bit or be prepared to play pots with them after something that dramatic happens where they're just kind of still getting out of it. And um, with Ace-10 and the 10 of spades, I think it might be hard to shake Foggin, but at least he didn't come out betting, which would have been a bit tougher to defend against with the deuces. I do think that there is a small chance he even just makes a tight fold on the flop. And there it is, yeah. You know what? I'm so grateful to be here. I'm not, I'm not getting in the check call with Ace-10 high business. Not when I was almost out of business. I'm just trying to get this place afloat again. To the outer table, where Jose Gonzalez has moved all in and looks like he's been called by Nathan Tatar. And they're waiting to check that the hand at the feature table has finished. Obviously, we just saw it finish, so hopefully word will reach them in a moment and they'll deal this out. So, Kings the hand for Gonzalez, Queens the hand for Tetar. There should be a double up for Gonzalez. Just has to fade a queen on the river. Gonzalez gets the double up. Still has that magnificent beard, but is now sans headphones. I like his shirt. He kind of has the energy of that bug. Get ready for the water, okay? Get ready for the water? I think he might have said war. <laughs> yeah, let's um, the, uh, let's, uh, let's let's tone down that language, yeah, shall we? Yeah. What the f Meanwhile, it looks like Tatar took a bit of a hit there. I mean, he was chip leader for a yeah, long one time. Yeah, one-time chip leader. Is now definitely on the shorter side. Back to the feature table. Cool. There's your deuces, Griff. Oh, different hand. Stone cold min bet from Schumacher here will not shake 
Simone. Haha, <laughs> told you so. That was childish. I shouldn't have said that. Ooh, open ended. Indeed. And Schumacher has blockers to that straight draw. Both of them. Ooh. Don't you like it when I just go runner, runner like that? Barry Greenstein is back, ladies and gentlemen, giving Schumacher top pair, giving Gilles Simon the straight. Oh, and of course, of course, Simone checks. And Schumacher must think, I gotta get value from a queen here, right? I gotta bet something. But what if Simone check raises? What if he check raises because somehow he has a better hand, like a flush? or a king-10, or somehow as a deuce. And that's why we see the check. And that is a very disciplined, almost ICM check. You know what? I'm not going to go for that value against the queen because I don't want to get check-raised. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Real good discipline. Sneaky, sneaky. First time chat. How king-10 win? Straight, my friend. Broadway. Here, I'll help you. Ten, jack, queen, king, ace. Straight. Small blind. Simon in the small blind, Palmasto in the big blind. Mark Foggin first to act, folds. Three folds. Five folds. Ali says, I'm sorry, I'm new to poker. You don't have to apologize. We like new viewers. That's okay, Ali. You know what? Many years from now, I might be handing you your first EPT main event trophy, and we can laugh about this and just tell all the fans at home. Just because it'll be Joe who'll be handing you the trophy. Uh, but yeah. For the sake of the story, can I hand it to Al? No, we're not letting you anywhere near No, but I, but I was here. He wasn't even here when he made the first comment, not understanding about the straight. I'll talk to Joe about it. He'll never give it up. Right? No. Anyway, Ali, very happy to have you here. Glad you're discovering the game. You ask any questions, and hopefully the other viewers or our mods will be able to help you out. And Joe will be giving you the trophy if you ever want to be Remember, the number of players remaining is displayed on screen the whole time. We have 14 left from a starting field of 1,320 entries. You always need a neck. That's Yannick. true. The rule is there must always be a neck at the table, and Yannick Schumacher is currently fulfilling that obligation. Five fold, six fold. Our little Tasharek looks like he should be called Nick. Snowman's. Nom nom. We wait for Dato's announcement. I'm going to guess it. 130,000. Over under quickly, James. Under. Come on. 150,000. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a good sweat, wasn't it? He yeah. gave us a couple. <laughs> Mark Foggins, big blind. What does he have? <coughs> 
Four, three off. Ugh, hold that for that. Five seconds. Fucking the shortest stack at the table, hovering around the 20 big blind mark. Of course, we are on a pay jump. 14th pays $51,525. 13th pays $61,850. And we are going back out into the field. We have got action over at the other table. With 14 remaining, two tables of seven. So half the field's on the main stage. The other half is out on the floor. And we see a red triangle of death in front of Nathan Tatar. He is all in. Decision on Kenny Hallett. <coughs> and Kenny folds. But Tatar still looks pretty short, Griffin. And back to the feature table. Action. Folded to Preet Palmasto. K. Falcon with seven deuce. Not naughty. Five four off. Naughty. Three four. Five four. Cousin Kai defending. King High is ahead right now. Palmesto pretty happy to have flopped a wheel draw. Yeah, as far as boards go where you haven't connected, <coughs> this is going to be a nice continue for Palmesto with that stronger range. One range and if and when you do get called, which you won't this time from Kozenkai. Yeah. Gonna have a lot of reasons to keep betting with that backup wheel draw. Yeah. Well, 30 minutes until the break. One thing to highlight I don't think I'm going out on a limb here to say that we're probably still gonna be at two tables by the time we get to the end of this level. And that means these guys will have played two and a bit full levels on the main stage. So I think it's only fair that we flip the tables during the breaks. There's a very good chance that we will actually have the outer table on the main stage, and this table goes back, back out onto the floor. Of course, we get past all that nonsense when we're down to nine players, because then everyone's at one table. So then wouldn't the unofficial final table be with nine? Because you're all, okay, it's not eight. The official final table is eight, but we play down to six. Uh, Just to ensure that the days are balanced, Griff. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. We've obviously been burnt in the past with eight-handed final tables taking a while. So just by getting through a couple of extra players and inviting six to come back for the final day, just keeps those last two days a bit more balanced and a bit more even. I mean, these are things I should know. Got to read the briefing. Foggin. Getting out of the way with the queen do suited. The man with perhaps the best name on the table, but there's a lot of competition. Bjorn Kozenkai limps in from the small blind with the seven do suited. I mean, Yannick Schumacher's a great name. Halil Tassarak. Pit Parmasto, we, we got great names on this table. I'm just Six really grade. drinking it in now. So I got the, all the first names listed here. Well, we're going to the other table where there's been an all-in and a call. And this is Alexander Fateran at risk and crushed. He's got ace-10. Victor Uge with aces. 
Confirmation that play is concluded on the main stage. We can run out this board. Not looking good for Viterin. And he does not improve. Is eliminated in 14th place for $51,525. And we are down to the final 13. Very impressive run here for Viterin. Someone we saw on, earlier on day two was featured on the feature table. But all good things come to an end. But not for this guy. Yeah, we have seen pot. Victor KO a fair few players in the last couple of days. Continuing to build a stack here on day five as Viterin exits the arena. No, today is not the final day. Tomorrow, main event Sunday, playing down to a winner. Six returning. They'll all be guaranteed a six-figure score, but they'll be competing for that seven-figure score up top. Passeract with that suited 10. Going to try to keep Parmasto in line. Parmasto has been getting a little cocky. Playing well, running well. King 10 8 on the flop. So second pair for Tasharak. I'm going to take Parmasto in this hand, James. How about that? You can have Tasserak. Watch this. Check out the bobbing and weaving. It's like a raptor, this guy. His eyes just got wider. Oh, that's going to be a little tough. Couldn't you have just given me like a four? He would have, he would, it didn't even need to be a club. But the eight is going to be tough. Seven track. Just about 650. Prove me right. He wants to do it so bad. 450. That's pretty good. One bet, 450,000. Oh, yeah, I did it again. I took the nine percenter. <laughs> James is fuming over here. He lost a 91% favorite. <laughs> fuming isn't really the word hard to describe, <laughs> he really Mike. Wasn't. I think he was... <laughs> please don't checking an email or something. <laughs> please don't mistake my contemptuous <laughs> stare into your eyes. <laughs> uh, spare a thought for Lucky is real, who says, "I'm here to see Anton Wig play." Um, well, you're 24 hours too late because Anton Wig was eliminated yesterday. Only 13 players remaining now. <coughs> Caesar asking, what time does the final table start tomorrow? Uh, 1 p.m. local time is when we go live. So that's noon Central European summer time. Foggen going to raise the Queen 10 suited on 20 big blinds. Kozenkai at the cutoff here. 
Going to recognize that he's slightly ahead of Foggin's opening range here, but it never feels super comfortable to three bet call off 20 big blinds hijack cutoff yeah so instead just flatting the ace jack sort of keeping those weaker hands in and not getting cooler against the bigger hands or losing a flip but pretty fair fight going to the flop let's get those percentages up 10 8 7 fog in flops best and the percentages surely flip flopped a bit here but cousin kai two overs straight draw Back door, nut flush draw, a lot of ways to win. Floor? Yeah. Floor, please. Mm -hmm. Pretty big bet on average over half pot. Obviously, we're used to seeing sort of bets on the smaller side, the C bets. But in this situation, with such a wet board, you know, Foggin wants to dissuade floats from that have a lot of equity, like the 38% ace jack. So brilliant sizing there from Foggin to fold out a hand that had quite a bit of equity against that queen 10. Nice takedown for the lone Brit on the feature table, 13 left. Have a go, Mark. <laughs> 20 minutes left on the level. And Foggin still the shortest stack at this table with 25 bigs. Andrea Dato, not just the biggest stack at this table, still tournament chip leader with 6.7 million at the start of this hand. Wines 30,000, 60,000. Yeah, for someone that who's had the chip lead, it's been pretty quiet. This level has Andrea Dato, except when he's announcing his raise size. Or any action, actually. I was going to say, quiet is not the no, word. No, yeah, I should use a different word than that here. To describe him. <laughs> Tashirak with ace queen on the button. Six, a seven range. 120,000. Queen 10 for Dato. <clears throat> 500,000. <laughs> oh, he's calling. Yeah, he is. Nice. And it's Simon in the big blind. Who folds Trey okay. Deuce of Diamonds. So heads up to the flop. A domination situation in Tasharak's favor. Surprised Simon didn't want to flick in that one chip with the suited three deuce playing 80 big blinds, but teach his own. Look at this. Would have had a wheel draw. And a pack door flush draw, I know. It's shoulda, woulda, coulda. As things stand, Tashirak, huge favorite. This ain't your hand, Andrea. Let's it go.
John says, Dato, not quiet, but not as aggressive as some of the chip leaders we've seen recently. Close to five? Close to five, yeah? Yeah. You? Close to five. All right. That's good. <laughs> Counting their stacks, that means 13 way chop incoming. It could happen. Action's going to start with Mark Foggin under the gun with the Grafton, 10 9 suited. Your country mate is watching, Mark. Don't you dare fold 10 9 suited. Oh, what a bad race. Should have folded the 10 9 suited. I think we should get rid of Chad Pro Saturday and just have results oriented Saturday. Oh, Chad Pro Saturday is not a thing, just to be clear. I vetoed that yesterday. Wow, I, th I, th I thought they had a pretty good chance for a while there. Well, some fellas are lucky and some ain't. Oh, imagine if they had Chad Pro Saturday for the for the single chip debacle. Would have thrown it. They would have had to make the. They would have had to choose. The, it would be their ruling. <laughs> it would be the Chad's ruling. Uh, Move over, Toby. <laughs> Interesting. Foggin wants to know how much Kozenkai has behind. Mm. Similar size stacks, but Kozenkai does have Foggin covered. Foggin playing a time bank card. If Foggin shoves his hand, I'm not coming back for two levels. Well, Foggin does not Let's shove. see a flop. Foggin calls the re-raise. Wants to see a flop. <coughs> There's less than 20 big blinds behind. And has hit a flush draw. Cousin Kai still ahead, though, with Jax. Yeah, but look at that SPR. I mean, he kind of needs to check shove Sheesh. and hope to fold out, you know, the ace queens and ace jack type hands. Three check. But well, are, are those even going to bet fold the flop? They're probably going to check or even bet call with this kind of SPR. So Foggin might bet. just decide to check call here. Okay, well, we have got a C bet from Kozenkai of 225,000. Okay, so yeah, I, I should be a bit more clear. It's not just the ace queens and the ace jacks, right? Kozenkai can have some bluff raises here. Let's say he has the ace five of clubs. Three betting, hoping to get Fog into fold pre. That's the kind of hand that would. C bet and fold to a shove here. So there are a lot of bluff hands that Kazen Kai can have here that he's going to bet, and then you just take it down with a shove. But Kazen Kai ain't folding this. So I think you want to lean shove in Foggin's seat. You know, if your opponent three bet you with oh. Queen Jack of uh, clubs. Well, he's check raised all in, Griffin. Playing the flush draw, and I think Kazen Kai's hand is too strong to fold her yeah he's not thrilled because they're you know the king queen suited the king jack suited both all, all both of them are active here with the the two jacks being blocked and the kings but the times that your opponent has the ace 10 suited or the queen 10 suited even apparently the nine 10 suited you just can't burn the money and bet fold here for another you know, 15 big blinds. 
But you can imagine the pain, right? What if you're getting trapped here? What if he just has aces? But you do block a bunch of those suited king combos with the, with the jacks, right? So it's super less likely that he has king jack suited. So you're just hoping to even consider folding, you think he has aces or king queen suited exactly. King queen off would fold pre probably, right? King 10 suited. Would that really call? I feel his pain, but he's got to put those chips in. There it is. Well, he gets it in as a 71% favorite, and Mark this. Foggin is at risk and behind. Yeah, no over. He's just going to love to see this hand. This is the exact hand you want to see, because even ace, you know, all the ace X suited has that over card. But just the, the pairs being dead, that's the dream right here. Well, let's see what the situation is at the other table. There is a hand in progress, although to be honest, it probably doesn't matter as we're not on a pay jump right now. 13th and 12th get paid exactly the same. <laughs> Maybe they decide to let this hand play out. Yeah, they've decided to run it out. Don't need to wait for the hand to conclude at the outer table. And that jack on the turn has Mark Foggin drawing dead. He is eliminated in 13th place. Why me, bro? Cash is for $61,850 and takes us down to 12 players in the EPC Cyprus main event. Loving the roller coaster. Yeah, 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 no, no. yeah that's nice. I mean, I wasn't it, Mark's level, really got so. new life with that ace four double up, but decided, didn't want to let go of that 10-9 suited pre and got the kind of flop he needed to get all in with. Ran out of lives. Okay, so those of you who aren't aware, like David, who's just made a fool of himself on YouTube, describing it as probably the worst switch in poker broadcasting history, we are playing soft hand for hand. They can't deal an all-in at the feature table until players concluded at the outer table. That's why we tracked away. Nothing was happening on the main stage. When the floor concluded that because there wasn't a pay jump, they could then deal out the all-in and gave the instruction for the players to reveal their cards, we came back to the feature table. Thank you for your comment. You just got hard again. Seven raise. Sorry, I wanted to check out the fire. Eight, eight fold. That is why we don't have chat. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the perfect example. Tasher, I'm getting a little, uh, a little frisky here. Plus one on 50 big blinds, raising the queen 10. Kazankai, fresh off that sick hold. Love how, despite having those sunglasses, you just see that emotion. And flopping nice here. Five, check. Yeah, this is going to be an automatic, very comfortable C bet here. Very strong range under the gun. Seven, One here. <coughs> and. I haven't seen a ton from Tasharak. He seems really solid, but I haven't necessarily seen any bluffing barrels. So this is exactly the kind of card that I'd be very, very curious to see what Tasharak's game plan is. Because this is the card you almost feels like an automatic two barrel, right? You want to bet out those 
you can't lose to showdown here against Jack Nine, right? If that's what the big blind has here. So is going to find that bet. Question just is how much? Looks like about 375. Seven bet. And even with a king, you know, the weak big blind peel kings, this is a tough continue. Do you want to call, what, 15% of your stack here against this under the gun one range? And the answer from Kozenkai is hell yes. Let's see a river. Well, now what are you going to do? Barry Greenstein. Five check. Yeah, I think. Very difficult rep here, right, James? I mean, now that there's two aces out there, you're basically saying that you have one of the other two if you bet here, or you have nines full, eights full. Maybe you have king, queen. But are you really that thrilled about making a big bet on the turn with, with king, queen? Oh, let's go. Come on, Tashira. Let's go. Also, got to remember, not a lot of ace high floats on the king nine eight, right? Yeah, ace eight or ace nine will call. But that is blocked by the fact that there are an eight and nine already out there. So, <clears throat> ace jack would call the flop, right, from the big yep. line here. Ace ten. But also less likely that you have the ace in the big line here because there's two out here. So this is a really advanced bluff. Tasharak knows Kazen Kai has a king here. He's saying, I dare you. I'm saying, I have an ace or better here. And Kazen Kai is looking over there and thinking, you messing with me, dude? You messing with me, dude? We're playing for a million dollars. Folds it. Let's go. Halil Tasharak. And we boss. are heading to the outer table, Griffin, because Victor Uge has just bet enough to put Nikita Kuznetsov all in. Because Netsov has used eight time bank cards already. He's running out. and the Jack of Diamonds is exposed. Show one. That's the Ace of Diamonds. Cool shirt. So reminder that when we hit the break in four minutes time, we're going to flip it. So what is currently the outer table becomes the feature table. What is currently the feature table becomes the outer table. Are you allowed to do that? We specifically need to do it to make sure that these players aren't at a perceived disadvantage by playing on camera for too long. Makes sense. I just feel bad for Kuznetsov, who's going to lose his masseuse. Rather than that, he loses chips. There you are, Simon. Haven't seen a lot of action from Simon, except that three high fold we didn't like. <laughs> Good face for a mustache. I like it. Interesting. Queen seven six. Is anyone else a big fan of? I understand that these two are in the pot, but that Tasher I can't was cool, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Like, if you look at him right now, he looks kind of, like, bored and just sort of like, whatever, another day at the office. Okay. 
Atho was trying to lay a bit of a pot controly trap here with this flop check. But doesn't get Simon to to bite throughout the line. Simon was like, hey, no fish. I'm not gonna bite at this. Checked back with that gut shot. And now with the six on the turn. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand. You heard the man. The announcer has declared his bet and takes down this pot. Nice work from Simon there. We're heading back to the other table, Griffin. It's Gerard Carbo, the Switching. Spanish qualifier who's moved all in. And Nathan Tetart with the decision, and he's already used time bank cards. There are players to act behind. Oh, speaking of great shirts. Got Hallett, Uge, and Kuznetsov still to act. Bye. Multiple time banks <coughs> being played by Tatar. I just want to say if there's a double elimination in the stand. The widget was right. Nah. Okay, so Tatar has folded. Kenny Hallett is out. Victor Uge in the small blind. Just checking Kuznetsov's stack. That usually means he's got a pretty decent hand. This is an open shove for what appears to be 360-ish, if I'm reading it right. Wow. So, gets it through despite the very small stack. And certainly our, our tournament low stack over there with just two red chips worth 100,000. Players concluded at the outer table. We come back to the feature table. Last hand of the level in progress. Eight still good on a Queen Jack 9 flop. And no good now. The bottom end of the straight versus the King High straight. Tato, you dirty dog. King 5 off under the gun. I think someone was just saying in the Twitch chat, he's been playing pretty tight. We come over here and he tried to, as soon as the cameras weren't watching, king five off. And now straight over straight. Oh. Simone, so good. Just chilling. Two hundred fifty thousand. Four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Overbet on the river from Andrea Dato, putting Gilles Simon to the test. Just hating life. Yeah. So high up in his range. Checking the turn with the straight. Okay. Cycle, lose to the better straight. See Dato chip up to seven and a half million, seven point six million actually. Yeah, that's so much. 
and come back from break with nearly 100 big blinds because the blinds are going up to 40,000, 80,000 with an 80K big blind ante. Darto in a great position. Pressure on Schumacher, who's dropped below 25 bigs. But a reminder, what was our feature table is now going to become the outer table because the other six players will be coming to the main stage when we come back for the next 90-minute session of the penultimate day of the EPT Cyprus main event. We're going to take a 20-minute break, and then the action continues as we try to get down to the final table and beyond. Down to the final six today here at the Cyprus leg of the PokerStars European Poker Tour. So 20-minute break, and then more live action from here in Cyprus. Like Suzor's coming in for the steal. 250,000 on the button. Mm. And check nine in the big blind. Good for a defend. Off to a flop. And a little bit of something for both of our players. We got the flush draw from Suksor. Liu with the gut shot straight draw. Up against a very wide range calling in the big blind. We spoke earlier about good bluffs. Situations where your opponent can do lots of folding. This is certainly one of those because the big blind's calling a lot of hands. He's gonna miss very often. And also, it's good to have hands that can improve on later streets. This one, of course, the flush draw. So, a nice continuation bet spot for Suksor to take. He does. 175,000. Having defended Jack-9, when Liu sees a board where he does connect fairly well, has a chance to improve, I think he'll be doing something other than just folding his hand. 680. Uh, that's something other than folding. He's coming in for a check raise. 680,000 announced. Applying pressure to what is perceived to be a wide continuation bet from Suksor on the button. Let's imagine Suksor C bets here with something like King Nine of Clubs. He's going to get a very quick fold, which means that Liu's bluff is going to be immediately profitable. We can see that Suksor has. A hand that's likely to continue, Queen Deuce of Hearts. This could get very interesting indeed. Suzor calls the check raise, this hand going to the turn. And two million chips already in this pot. There are some very fun turn cards indeed. Queen is one of them because Liu actually now turns open-ended and if he wants to put pressure on a hand like ace three of clubs then betting on this turn he can certainly represent that occasionally he's made a straight himself. But from Suzor's perspective Spraggy still has the flush draw now has a pair to go with it. Yep even more outs. If he was up against an ace, he can now hit a deuce or a queen to get there, to go along with his hearts. Liu not slowing down, 800,000. And that's the weird thing from Suzor's perspective, he may be thinking about what cards he needs. The irony being, he's actually got the best hand. Yep. And we may even see a situation where he realizes he has the best hand, right? If, he, if he's confident enough to say Liu is bluffing with 8-9 or Jack-9 or even a smaller flush draw, we may even see him hero all the way down. I think for the 800,000 chip price, given he also just picked up a pair, he won't be going anywhere. That is indeed a call, and this is a monstrous pot. 
3.6 million chips, and we're off to an all-important river card. Neither player has pot behind. Sujo, the effective stack, with 1.81 million, and he rivers the flush. And it could be a situation where Liu attempts to represent that he has a flush. Some of his bluffs on the flop are going to be flush draws. And if Sugsaw gets here with ace-3 of clubs, it would make a hand like that a very difficult call. So Liu may fancy his chances of getting a fold by shoving this river. 1.8 million effective behind, about half pot. He's all in. Shoves on Suzor. Who calls all in with the best hand and will get a huge double up through Liu. Ooh. What the hell? You just walked into it, buddy. You just represented the hand your opponent has. And now Martin Suzor is up over 60 bigs, 7.25 million. Queen Jack suited under the gun plus one. And that's a raise to 450,000. Falcone folds. So, sir, with 10 7. So passes. 7 7 for Torre. Out. 9 6 for Brandstrom in the small. Lou has the same hand, Queen Jack, but unsuited. Calls. And the flop is Jack, Jack, five. Thank you. I'm going to warm up my vocal cords. We're going to nail this one, Finton. Now remember, it's three, two, one, then you go. I will pause longer. When you hear it, we won't be in sync. But what the audience hears might be in sync. So don't stop. Stick with it. I'm sweating. I'm sweating so much. Also, just to put additional pressure on you, Spraggy nailed it earlier no. on. No. No. I failed it. all week long. Oh, look at Ooh. this. It might not be a chop. Oh, great for Martin to be free rolling here. thousand the bet from Lou just a call and the river card is a spade we jinx some James don't lie Vincent you're so happy that this is not a chop we jinx them And Lou's going to bet big. 2.8 million in the middle. And he goes for a million. Nearly half his stack. Now the question is, does Martin raise and try and get the rest? Or is he worried about fives, tens, or nines? I would feel... If Lou had a better hand than a queen high flush here, he most likely would have used an all-in sizing. The issue for Martin is going to be with the jack in his hand, what is opponent going to call with if he shoves? But I think versus size, you just got to go all in. Give Lou the opportunity to make the hero call. Yeah, raises enough to put Lou all in. And what a horrible spot for Lou. 
sat there with trip jacks on a straighty flushy paired board and knowing that if he calls and is wrong he is out Will he make the big fold and be correct? It's so hard to imagine what your opponent is bluffing with here. So little left to play for. It's just so unlikely that someone pulls the trigger, but you've got this far. The pot is this big and you've got trips. It's not a fun spot at all. And yes, he's committed a lot of chips already. The chips you still have, the chips you have left, have more value. He'd still have six big blinds. A horrible spot to be in, and I don't know how many time bank cards he still has. I don't know how much thinking time he can use here. Just a horrendous river card. King, queen gets there. Seven, eight gets there. All the flushes get there. What can your opponent call with on the turn and then bluff raise you all in with on the river? He folds it. He gets away from the trips and he still has 1.2 million. Yunye Lu still playing six big blinds. So this is hand number eight. We've already had two eliminations you see alexander everson in the background there did you know that everson and brandstrom are sharing a hotel room here in barcelona and both almost made the final table it's very cute Sutso opens under the gun with eights falcone with ace queen on the button 20 big blinds the more important thing he's holding yeah, I think we always see the all-in here with the ace-queen. And I think we probably always see the call with the eights. Well, there is the shove from Falcone. Let's see if Brandstrom wakes up with a hand in the big blind. Nope. Back on Sutsor. And he calls, and we are off to the races. Now, this is where Falcone has been a specialist in the last two days. Eight is king, have it. He seems incapable of losing a race. He always spikes an ace. He is invincible. Mm. Ice, bad rice. Huge, huge, huge spot. I don't be a start. <laughs> Worth hundreds of thousands <laughs> in real money equity. The flop Ooh. has a queen on it. Falcone now set for the double up. 89% favorite, just has to fade an eight. I guess you are right, James. He is invincible. Oh, he's on the turn. Oh, man. We found the kryptonite. Turns out he is quite vincible. Diego Falcone eliminated in fourth place. So we get a raise here from Tutsor to 900,000 with 6 3 suited. King 3 for Brandstrom. Worth a defend, Vincent, with King height? Yeah, there's absolutely no chance that we're going to see him fold here. It'll be interesting to see if occasionally he wants to mix in a re-raise. He does not mix in the re-raise. Just a call. Uh -oh. Hello, nurse. OMG. Full house for Brandstrom. Trip threes for Tsutsu. Brandstrom with such a lock on the board, he might be tempted not to check raise here, but we can see if he plays a quick, all of the chips are going to be going into the middle. Here comes the C bet. 700,000 into 2.2 million. 
we're almost certainly going to see a complete stack reversal here. You, you can only play this slow, right? You've just got so much of this, and it's so unlikely that your opponent does. What can you do? Oh, come oh, on, Dave. Jeez. It's now house over house. The poker gods are bored today. And look at this from Sutsor's perspective. He's just turned a boat and he's thinking, this is it. I'm going to close it out here. This is the moment that I'm going to win an EPT. Does Bran Shrum want to now start getting all the chips in on the turn? He might be tempted to continue to just call. It's going to look incredibly strong if he does check race his turn. And we can see he has such a lock on the board. It's so hard for him to imagine that his opponent has a strong hand right now, except for maybe some flushes. 1.7 million into 3.6 million. <laughs> You gotta just call again and go for value on the river, and you are gonna get it. Let's put the yeah, six on the river, the... too. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna see the check raise all in, and we are gonna see the snap call. Martin's gonna think he's about to take the title, and he is gonna get the news that he's being coolered. So you think he checks here, Fenton? Doesn't lead for value, but yes, he does check. Wow. Yeah, the Ten of Hearts on the river just doesn't change enough about the board. Brandstrom just has to go for the check raise, and this way he can hope, if he has cooler his opponent, with another full house, or more likely with a flush. The check raise on the river means he'll get to play for all of the chips. A nonchalant six million bet into a pot of seven million. Such a sick hand to go down heads up. Ranstrom's got 18 mil, give or take, behind. He could simply check raise all in here. We know he's going to get snap cold, and we know he's going to get the full double up. Yeah, he's about to have 40 million chips. Sutsor's point of view, maybe occasionally he feels his opponent could check your ball in with a flush. I just, I just, it's heads up. There's just no way he's ever going to be able to fold this 6 3. All in. There's the shove. Checks his hand. Snap calls. Thinks it's all over. Oh, but it is not. Too excited. No. House no. over house. Oh, oh, Ridiculously oh, sick cooler. Oh, so sick. And that is the big switcheroo. Simon Brandstrom is now the guy in control. He's got more than 100 That's big him. blinds. Unlucky. 43 million chips. Huh? Martin Sutsor, 16 million, about 16 40 million. bigs. The Brandstrom Sandstorm, do 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 double up. Raises to 900,000. Pocket sixes for Brandstrom. It's been a while since we've seen a flip. Is this likely this to go in pre-flop, Fenton? Yeah, you think so? I mean, the sixes are most certainly going to want to shove here, and I don't think you're going to get the full king-queen at this stack depth. Heads up. There's the all-in. And... The call from Sutsor, and we are flipping a race for the EPT title. Guys, I'm a hot, hot. I like it's like it. money versus the title. One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Six is no, no, ahead no, no, for no, now, no, no. and if six is hold, we have a winner. They talk. I feel like Martin deserves a little bit of run good in this flip, given how the last 45 minutes has gone. Of Kirai Dama,
Well, if he does hit a king or a queen or some kind of straight combo, Finton, he'll still be at a significant disadvantage. It'll still be a better than two to one chip lead for Brandstrom. The flop is nine, seven, deuce. No king, no queen. Sutsor has six outs. The turn card is an ace, and Simon Brandstrom is on the verge of victory. Unless there is a king or a queen on the river, he will have won the biggest EPT main event of all time. The river card is a five, and Brandstrom has done it. The Swede takes down the title here in Barcelona. And once again, for the second time in his poker career, Martin Sutsor is a runner-up on the European Poker Tour. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the EPT Cyprus 2023. Brought to you by Poker Stars Live from the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa. First time ever, the European Poker Tour has made it to the land of Cyprus. Deep into day five, deep into the main event. Those are our top five chip leaders of the 12 remaining players. That's right. Not so far from those being the only five players left in this field. Joe Stapleton, Nicholas Michael Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. The goal today to get to the final six. We are three players away from the final redraw of the tournament, which will happen at nine, and every player will be seated at the same table. Here is our feature table. Six on this table, six on the quote-unquote other table, and as you can see, we got some shorties. Online qualifier, Gerard Carbo, six big blinds. Nikita Kuznetsov, eight big blinds. Nathan Tatar, 12 big blinds. Might as well name check everyone else. Kenny Hallert, former World Series of Poker final tableist. Jose Gonzalez, second in chips. And Victor Ugai is top of the heap at this particular table. I would imagine we'll be seeing some all-ins pretty soon. There is a pay jump between 12th and 11th place. So there is a bit of a race between the two players with six and eight big blinds. It does matter. You can't just ship it in. 11th place makes $74,200. 12th place makes $61,850. So that is a $10,000 difference. $13,000 more or less. Victor Ugai on the button, Jack Nine Sutai. This guy has been stacking them up. 65 big blinds at this stage in the tournament, Joe. Very dominant stack. Oh! Uh, speaking of domination. Yeah, well, we've got two small stacks in the small and big blind, so that would be the reason why Ugai is putting them both all in. Jack Seven for Kuznetsov. And we are playing a hand-for-hand-ish situation still, given the nature of these pay jumps, given the nature of the fact that we can keep an eye on both tables at once. Gerard Carbo with a six. This feels like it's time to pay the piper. Yep. Looks like Spin City to me. He's aware of the fact that you guy is going to be doing this uber wide and therefore will probably be winning enough to make the call as the shortest stack, probably in the tournament at this point. Only six big blinds to start the hand. How can you miss it? Yeah, he's in. And he will be a very slight favorite, Joe. 
Slight favorite, all in and call. We're not going to expose these hands right away. We're going to see what's happening at the other table first. Gerard Carbo is going to have to wait just a mo before we run this board. Other table. Ooh, we got some chips in the middle. We got a whole board out there. Andrea Dato with that infamous posture. This was our feature table earlier in the day. And Dato, who demonstrably announces his actions, every hand, has announced a bet here. The board is nine, king, seven, three diamonds, eight, four. And Dato has bet 175,000 and is playing against Kozenkai, who is raised to 500,000. We could have another all in at this table. Once again, we're on the river. King nine, seven, eight, four, three diamonds. It looks a lot like a queen from here. But I'm told it's a king. Yep, it is a king. Nine, king, seven, eight, four in that order. Dato announces pass. So Kozenkai is going to pick up that pot, which looks significant. Back up on the stage. Carbo, as Nick mentioned, the slight favorite. I think I'd rather have Jack Nine suited, though, somehow, gang. Such a pretty hand. A6 really feels like it's just hanging on in there. You know why? Because A6 is hanging by a thread, and then when you lose with it, you feel bad. <laughs> you feel Whereas like Jack Nine, you're it. like, yeah, I was supposed to lose. A6 holding for now. King Five, Four, Two Spades. Spades not a factor. No hearts either. So you guy. Can't run down Carbo that particular way. Turn card is an eight. Carbo doing about as well as you can. Headed into the river. Just has to fade the jacks and the nines. And that river is another eight. Double up for Carbo. Wow, huge hold here. Such an important pot for Carbo. A celebration from the Spanish rail. Love to see that. We haven't seen too much railing so far, have we, Joe? They have all those sites blocked. Yeah, I know, but I mean, even from like the sort of oh, oh, front, you mean front in a, facing. In a poker sense, sure, no. <laughs> we actually don't have a rail left and right of, on this stage, unfortunately. Hey, you guy. Yeah, takes a slight hit there, but obviously all part of the game plan. Making those power plays very effective. Going to pick up a lot of money at non-showdown. And of course, uh, um, sometimes you're going to get it in there. You're going you're gonna to do a few chips to one of the shorter stacks, but not the end of the world. Had very considerable equity to eliminate another player. And of course, plenty of opportunities to find folds and pick up the pot at non-showdown as well. Now all the pressure on Nikita Kuznetsov with seven big blinds. Kuznetsov is on the button now, so does have an orbit before he'll be forced to put another chip in. Ace four for Tatar under the gun. Six-handed ace four offsuit. 12 big blinds for Tatar. He is reaching for chips. It's a speed jump situation. Two people win or win, lower chips. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's why they did it. We can ask him, but, uh, Maybe just take an account here. No, interesting. Yeah. Tatar not moving all in. 
Going for the min raise. Off a 12 big blind stack with a shorter stack out there. Maybe thinks a steal is possible, and so far so good. Gonzalez probably not going to let a steal happen. Might let a peel happen. All right, so about 10% of Tatar's chips in the middle already. 10 Trey Deuce, two diamonds. Tatar flops a gut shot, ace high good. All his checks. And Tatar is going to continue. Yeah, just play like you have a 40 big blind stack. <laughs> nice work there. Nice pick up there for Tatar. A couple people in the chat asking about the nationality of Victor Ugai, Uzbekistan. And I actually must apologize. Earlier on, I think I mentioned that I thought he might have been Russian, but that's because he was speaking Russian with the player to the, directly to his left, Nikita Kuznetsov who indeed is repping that flag. So my apologies for that confusion earlier, but it is indeed Uzbekistan here on our board. <laughs> Tatar now up to 13 bigs, still in the danger zone. Danger zone. Three players definitely in the danger zone here, gang. So danger zone. do not miss any opportunity to keep your eyes on the screen because it could happen in the blink of an eye. Alaire, it's quite comfortable on a 27 big blind stack. I know 27 is definitely getting on the shorter side, but when we get deeper in these tournaments and we haven't seen too many bust outs today, of course, that's where the chips start to get stretched a little bit. Chip. Hey, you guy. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? Victor, you guy. Making it 165. Carbo on the button with King 8 suited. And will not play. Neither will Jose Gonzalez. Tatar in the big blind now with 8 5. Later. Someone out there picking up my Goonies reference. Zoomer then saying Chunk was fun. You know what's weird is the, the kid that played Chunk went on to uh, lose all the weight become a very handsome man and become a lawyer and uh he's like an entertainment lawyer in la like some of my friends are his clients and he, and he still does the truffle shuffle to this day i i he does have a thing with the truffle shuffle but i don't remember what it is <laughs> he's got like abs now though so <laughs> You guy folds this hand onto Kuznetsov. Now the shortest stack. He's got a jack. Tell me the jack of spades is the one-eyed jack because we only looked at one of the cards. Nope. Not going to see the other one. Carbo not going to play the 10-4. Gonzalez out. Ta-ta. Oh, that's a hand you can play from any position with any chip stack. Two, true. 13 big blinds here as well from the small blind. I think I'm going to limp trap here like every day of the week. There's a chance that technically from a GTO perspective, there's only min raise or fold or limp. Sorry, min raise or fold. Might have to look this one up in a second. But... As an exploit, there is a chance you might still find a limp here once in a while, but might be unbalanced in a way that your opponent's going to kind of pick up on that weaker line at a shallower stack depth. Wouldn't be surprised to see a small raise, though. <coughs> yep, 160. I'm going to look it up right now, gang. I mean, Tatar did raise ace-4 offsuit the exact same amount, did it under the gun. True. 
That's definitely on the wider side, but worked out for him under those circumstances. Kenny with 7-5. On a situation where you want to use a time bank, I don't think Kenny does make the call before burning one of those cards. And the flop is king 8-4, so aces with 80% of the equity here, but Kenny can drill the six for a gut shot. Feels like aces should be more than 80% against the gut shot. Especially with the ace of clubs. What am I missing? Excuse me. Can I have papa tea at this? Thank you. With sugar. Thank you. To tar bets 80,000. That's one big blind, the minimum bet. So it's already 16. It's already 16 percent with uh, with the four shots, four shots at a gut shot twice. Or approximately that. Then the rest of the runner runners. Some some weird back doors as well. A couple more percent, yeah. But I agree with you. It does seem like it's a little bit on the steeper side. Kenny's gonna peel. Nine on the turn. That cuts Hallard's equity in half. I did look it up, guys. I think I think GTO prefers the limp here pre, but with aces, with the aces, the uh, he's super shallow, isn't he? So he never struggle to get the chips in later. But two barrels, it is. Now to tart sizes up. That's three seventy-five and two, five sixty. Kenny pretty handcuffed at this point. Has to let it go. Oh, sorry. Two crucial pots for Nathan Tatar, who moves from 12 big blinds to 17 big blinds. Pretty much out of the danger zone at this point. Gerard Carbo with 11 bigs, Kuznetsov with seven. Yeah, it's close actually. If you look at the 15 big blind and then the 13 big blind, that seems to be a, cut, a sort of stepping off point. Sometimes it's a split there. And the shallower you get, the more limps we find. But it depends which one you go from. I'm assuming you can go from the sort of either camp here. But as played, takes it down. Because that's off under the gun with four high. Topsy says, Hallard is a great poker pro. Who, who remembers him folding seven's full house versus Ruan having a straight flush? I don't. I don't remember that, but I'm not surprised because I agree with the first part of that statement. I haven't watched a lot of the main event coverage over the last decade or so, I'm not going to lie. I have my summers off, and I generally... Basically, if I'm watching poker, that's like half of doing commentary. <laughs> So I tend not to do it very much. Yeah, I ran into ran into Kenny in the hallway on the way back to the room. We shared an elevator down to the tournament floor. Just so chill. Really nice guy. Very, very composed. He's seen this kind of action a lot over the last lots of years. And, uh, yeah, just a guy that really seems to have a great handle on the game. And just living in the zen. and take it for Jose Gonzalez. Why does Jose Gonzalez look like the kind of guy that tells you that uh, you don't ever need to go to a doctor and all you have to do is buy his vitamins? He's, he's giving you, uh, like, supplement. It's goji berries, man. That's all you need. Supplement gang. All you need is cold showers and goji berries. 
I mean, he's not wrong. Speaking of Gonzalez, pocket fives, ETG plus one, 58 big blinds. Gonna put in the raise, seems reasonable. Notice how it is greater than just the min raise here. Gonzalez sizing up, trying to get a couple extra folds from that larger sizing. Definitely nothing to be ashamed of. Definitely something advantageous at the stage when the chips are worth so much more. Probably do a lot better getting folds pre-flop than trying to duke it out against multiple players or indeed inviting some wider calls from the big blind. Kuznetsov with 10-9 suited. Starts the hand in the big blind. So had seven big blinds to start the hand. Has five back. It's going to cost them a little more than one more Yeah. to see a flop here. Yeah, so it looks like Gonzalez is already kind of sizing up that stack and deciding whether or not he's going to play fit or fold. And that is really a great board for fives in general, Joe. Wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see him just put it all in here because Netsov might actually get that all in after all. Because Netsov with less than pot left behind would make perfect sense. Yeah. There is the amount to set Kuznetsov all in. Same situation as before when Kuznetsov makes the call, calls all in. Now we're going to pause the action here. <clears throat> Remember, we're talking about a 13K pay jump for the next player out. So we're going to let that hand on the other table play out first make sure there's no all in there then we'll come back over here and deal kuznetsov's fate on the outer table and once again it seems like we've had some significant action at the other table big pile of chips We've got Preet Parmasto versus Bjorn Kozenkai. It's like a small bet from Kozenkai. And Parmasto folds. And another pot going Kozenkai's way. As we head back up for Gonzalez versus Kuznetsov, top pair versus middle pair. Kuznetsov in a very good spot to double up. Kuznetsov not worried about overcards, just has to fade. Huh? The three or the five? The three or the five. That's right. We got a gut shot now. Sace out. <laughs> sace out. Fades the sace out. Double up Kuznetsov. Wipes his brow unironically. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do here if you're Gonzalez? Hand kind of plays itself. Opens reasonable. It's cool that he uses a larger size there because it puts the big blind in a much harder situation to continue. Manages to find a beautiful Sam Grafton. Not going to be folding the 910 suited there and just spikes it. There's no reason why that couldn't have been a suited ace where they managed to make a pair that was less than the five and same, basically the same outcome as well. So just unfortunate that Gonzalez runs, in, runs into the top pair on that particularly low board. Uh, still in good shape, Gonzalez, 51 bigs. Kuznetsov now up to 14. A couple of our danger zone candidates have been uh, slowly climbing back up. Gonzalez folding under the gun. 
Tatar with another playable hand, king queen this time. So 17 big blinds from plus one. Um, if we saw if we saw him sort of confidently raising with that offsuit ace earlier, Joe, I think you were probably going to see the same thing again from the king queen here. I mean, considerable ICM at this stage, right? So you don't want to just be smashing in this many big blinds when the min raise is uh, is a very viable strategy. That's exactly what he goes for 160k. King queen, very playable hand regardless, unless you run into you guy. Oh my goodness. This is not the most ridiculous flatting spot either, Joey. If you wanted to get tricky, tricky. You guy does appear to have some tricks up his sleeves as well. Yeah, so far I've been really impressed with uh, with you guys' strat. Going to use the time bank here. I would love to see a flat here. It'd be so spicy. I think that's what he's weighing up. He's looking at his stack. He's trying to just make sure. One sixty, the original bet, the raise, the re-raise, three hundred eighty thousand, and because Netsoff just sort of wistfully <laughs> staring into the distance, wondering what might have been had action not gone this way before it got to him. Yep, and decides to three bet, but it's a nice small sizing from you guy. Carbo waking up with a bad ace. Back to Tatar. I feel like Nick with Carbo on 14, excuse me, nine big blinds and oh my oh, goodness. Wow. Wow, wow, we wow was he not knows expecting that. Once he got snap called, I mean, we didn't even have time to cut to you guy before the call was made to Tar. Yeah, this is very likely to be quite painful. Now, typically, we would make sure the action on the other table is finished before we run this. However, I think the action is already finished. It is. I thought there was a strong chance Tatar was going to get away from this entirely, given that there are two shorter stacks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Felt like maybe he was being picked on. Yeah, in terms of equity, this is about as bad as it gets pre-flop. Two diamonds on the flop, not helpful for Tatar. Would have needed to see two spades. Now it's got to be running queens. If you want King Queen from Tatar to have a chance. <laughs> no Queen. But that'll do it as well. Potential straight draw now. Can hit the nine or the ace for a run. Otherwise, he'll be running from the table. King on the river. Top pair, no good. Yeah, definitely a sweaty turn, though. Wasn't just the running queens. Obviously, running straight possible as well, but GG's for Tatar. And another stack going towards you, Guy. And not only has Tatar eliminated in 12th place for $61,850, the rest of this field ladders up another 13K. 10th and 11th place now guaranteed $74,200. At this point, you guy got to be thinking, why didn't I play the bounty? All I do is knock people out in this tournament. <laughs> Victor, you guy up over 80 big blinds, nearly six and a half million. Yeah, beautiful stuff there. Really nice spot <coughs> for you guy.
Now five-handed at this table. J.N. Alvarez says, Tatar needs to study some ICM. You need to study some spelling. It's N-E-E-D-S, not N-E-A-D-S. Thank you for your comment. Blind be blind. I think we know what's going to happen here, Joey. He's all in. It's got to be. King nine suited blind v blind for sub 10 big blinds effective. Easy jam, monster jam, fantastic situation, highly profitable, does get it through. We'll pick up the blinds and antes. <laughs> because I didn't show this guy, right? For the ace king. He don't want broke table for keep play with me because I have more chips. More chips, more chips, win more chips from me. Yes. Yeah, very smart guy. Yes. Yeah. Deep, deep thinking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I keep, 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 keep him alive for ladies. <laughs> yes. Victor, you guy under the gun. Nah. King five suited. I feel like maybe you could have gone for a poke there, five handed with all the chips. Uh, absolutely, hundred um, percent. In fact, I would argue that was that probably be a, a a good adjustment. In fact, probably is already GTO to find to include uh, that as a normal opening off of that stack. Five seconds. Kuznetsov really using the time banks here. I mean, not actually using the time banks, but uh, certainly using his 30 seconds. Jose getting a peek at the stack of Kenny Hallert in the big blind. Kenny's got 20 big blinds. Those guys got 48. Five <sighs> All in. You better hope Kenny doesn't wake up with nothing, and he don't. Yep, and I think, uh, as we discussed, blind v. blind, you can definitely shove pretty much any offsuit ace, blind v. blind there, 20 big blinds or less when antis are in play, but even more so when we're playing a big blind anti Joe. <laughs> Because, of course, being shorthanded does not reduce the amount of dead money in the middle, as per the previous right. anti situation. So, under those circumstances, you're picking up a ton of chips at non-showdown, and you will have the best hand often enough to actually pull the trigger, and you're going to generate enough folds. In fact, you're going to get better hands to fold all day long with a shove like that. So, it is a very, very valuable situation. Obviously, going to be risky. But for 20 big blinds effective, I think you can go ahead and uh, pull the trigger there. That's going to be very cool. Uh, you can imagine Kenny, obviously, in a pretty high value situation. 20 big blinds, middle of the field here on the feature table in terms of chips, in terms of big blinds. Probably going to end up folding ace three, ace four, ace five, ace six, ace seven. You know, it depends how risk risk averse he is. What's but weird is that, uh, and when I say things like this, gang, I'm not a good player. I'm not saying, oh, kings for Carbo now. I probably wouldn't shove ace deuce there, and I would probably snap call with ace deuce. <laughs> it's supposed to be the other way around, Jeff. <laughs> it's supposed to be the the like the halo effect, right? You can shove wider than you can call with. Carbo's raise gets through to you guy in the big blind. King four suited. Feels pretty peelable. And peel we do. Eight 
Ace 10 4, bottom pair for you, guy. He is two thirds of the way to trips, though, Joe. I mean, is there any chance that you guy ever bluffs Carbo off the Kings on the ace high board? Probably unlikely when he has showdown, right? He's going to have the best hand with the four quite often, regardless, right? So I think we probably just see a bet and a call on the flop. Making this pot swell a little bit for Carbo to take down. Ace on the turn. Less of a chance of Carbo being fearful of it now. So just bearing in mind here, guys, Carbo actually started the hand very short, which means that there's probably a good chance Yuge probably would have been quite happy just to check raise or ra raise some of the ace combos there. Not check raise, excuse me. Three bet from the big blind with some of his ace combos right off the bat. So you can heavily discount him having some ace, ace combos, obviously the strong stuff, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, ten. All of those probably would have just gone in pre-flop against the cutoff steal. So very confident uh, continuation on the turn with the Kings there. You're going to have the best hand just so often and plenty of candidates to get paid by. Updated chip counts. Kuznetsov still the shortest stack, just barely edged out by Carbo. 12 and 15 big blinds, respectively. Kenny Hallert with 20. Jose Gonzalez, 51 big blinds. And Victor, you guy with 76. Yeah, we've already seen you guy with some power poker tactics. We saw the, the shove into two shorties with the Jack-9 suited. The same applies when you're out of position, right? You've got some short stacks raising into you. You can start three betting a lot of the ace combos where you're just trying to shut it down pre-flop and apply pressure to the people that are at risk of busting. That was a great example of that. And therefore, quite a lot of sort of uh, discounted ranges. You know, a little bit of range capping can be done by Mr. Carbo. Heavily putting those kings in favor on the ace-ace texture. Now, Kenny on the button has 20 big blinds. And we'll find the steal. Fold from the small blinds. Because <coughs> Netsov waking up with absolute napkins, as Arlie Shaban would say. <laughs> Just the Kuznetsov napkins. Not a lot you can do. Just get out of the way because Netsov maintains a 12 big blind stack after putting in the blinds and antis there. So costly. They come around so much quicker now, Joe. And those chunks coming out of you every big blind. Especially as one of the shorter stacks. Yeah, massive chunks. As long as we're going to keep doing uh, Goonies references. This is their time up there. Up there. But down here, down here it's, it's our, our time. time. Down, down here. here. And I think just because of that, I think whoever's the shortest stack should get to take one chip back. <laughs> this one's this is my wish. And I'm taking it back. <laughs> I'm taking them all back. I'm taking them all back. <laughs> I love that movie. You know that movie is a massive flop in theaters. What was? The Goonies. It was? Yeah. Wow. Such a cult classic, though. Massive flop. Was supposed to be like the big hit of the summer. Flopped. One of my best stories ever. One of my first best stories, I, I should say, is I, uh, when I first started working on the big game, let's make sure this hand doesn't turn into anything. When I first started working on the big game, we would do like four episodes in a day or something. Like insane. Wow. And it would take me about four to eight hours. I think we do two episodes in a day. It would take me four to eight hours to prep an episode, and we would do, t like, four days a week. Wow. So I would get home, like, six o'clock at night, and I would work till, like, midnight, one, two in the morning, prepping the next day's shows. My first day, and I was so much pressure. I didn't know what I was doing. I was getting yelled at all the time. I was bad at it. I was fumbling over all my words. I was just so terrible at the job. And my first week off... I'm on my first week off. My first day off was a Saturday. And my agent called me at 7 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, can you get to Van Nuys Airport by 10 a.m.? 
And I'm like, what for? He's like, I got you a seat on a private plane. There's a ch big charity tournament happening, celebrity charity tournament. You're playing, you're going, you're getting on the plane. And I was like, nah, dog. This is my first day off. I can't do it. I'm exhausted. I got to go back to bed. And I hung up on him. And I laid there for a couple minutes. And I was like, you idiot. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? How dare you say no to this opportunity? Yeah, you got to get on the plane, man. How dare you say no to this opportunity? And so I call him back, and I go, all right, I can do it. And he goes, okay, cool, let me make sure it's happening. I'm like, what? <laughs> this isn't even confirmed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you, but you chose wisely in the end, regardless of the outcome. So... I get, he calls me back. I, get on the, I go to get on the plane. And the first celebrity waiting, he's there early, I'm there early, is Sean Astin. Okay. Mikey from the Goonies. Okay. Now, when I was a kid, I used to have dreams that I was friends with Mikey from the Goonies. Sure. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and I'm like, hey, Sean, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Super nice, super, super, super nice. But I'm, like, too embarrassed to, like, ask him about anything. <laughs> right? Lord of the Rings, the Goonies. I'm too embarrassed. I'm like, just trying to play it cool. And then we get on the plane, and it's me and him and Sam Simon, one of the creators of The Simpsons, and Cheryl Hines from Curb Your Enthusiasm. And yes, Rudy. That's correct, Rohan. And Rudy. So, Aaron Paul Kramer, hold that thought for a second. So we're all sitting there not really talking, and finally Sean just blurts out, looking at Sam. He goes, I'm really sorry. I don't be a dork, but i got to ask you about The Simpsons. Yeah, okay. To Sam Simon. Yeah. And Sam's like, sure, no problem. What do you want to know? And then they talk about The Simpsons. And I was like, well, I'm glad you did that, Sean, because I really, I'm so sorry, but i got to ask you about The Goonies. And he goes, no, nah, not cool, man, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, sure, what do you want to know? And I was like, I don't know about anything specific. Like, what can you tell me? He goes, uh, I, he goes uh, well, I'll tell you this. This is the funniest thing about the Goonies. He goes, all of us kids, the props department had to keep an eye on us because we were all stealing everything <laughs> all the time. We were stealing swords, and we were stealing gold coins, and we were stealing pearls, and we were stealing marbles. Everything that we could get our hands on, we were just constantly stealing things off the set. And obviously, obviously, it really messes up continuity. Like if there aren't, if they need the props for the next day. So then I said, it's really weird that I don't know if you know this or not, but there's like a deleted scene from the Goonies where they fight like an octopus, like a giant octopus, okay, at yeah. the end of the movie. I didn't know that. And what's weird is there's still a reference to it in the movie. Like, at the end, when they're telling the story of what happened, one of them is like, yeah, we fought this giant octopus. Oh, okay. And when you watch it, you're like, oh, for some reason, they just lied about extra right. stuff that happened. But no, that was in a cut of the movie. And I was like, why did that line still make it into the movie? And he goes, oh, that was, that was Dick Donner, who was the, uh, the producer. He goes, that's typical Dick Donner. And then he made this motion, which I can't <laughs> show you guys. Oh, man. All in for Kuznetsov. Uh-oh. And pocket, excuse me, and pocket king-queen for Carbo. <laughs> uh, Carbo probably quite likely to call here, but can make the fold considering, sorry, excuse me. Sir, sorry, Carbo was in the cutoff, excuse me. That yeah. makes more sense. No, not going to call there under those circumstances. I thought it was blind v. blind because we were talking about the Goonies. So okay, I Dr. Colossi, you got it. It wasn't, it wasn't, you go, like, you can, look up, you can look up all day long that it wasn't a, it wasn't a flop. It's fine. It was a critical failure. <laughs> I mean, wh who, what kind of loser just sits there writing the same message over and over again, trying to prove me wrong about something I said? All in a call. God, I'm trying to watch poker here. Hey, you guy. Pocket you guy behind, sevens. but not at risk.
By the way, I think Massive Flop would be a great title for your memoirs, Joe. <laughs> Actually, really good. Works on so many levels. It works on at least two levels. <laughs> <laughs> If, it, if the cover is a picture of my gigantic, gigantic belly splashing into a pool, <laughs> that's three levels. All right, here we go. Oh, we got an eight right out the gate. Kuznetsov, 95% likely to survive. Kuznetsov, short stack ninja, it seems, finding a lot of really good opportunities here, all super high equity spots, too. Full boat now for Kuznetsov. You guy cannot eliminate Kuznetsov. Absolutely no sweat. Kuznetsov going to be looking real healthy now. 24 big blinds now slightly ahead of Kenny Hilaire. Nuts off. Skyrockets up the leaderboard to middle of the pack. You guys still out in front. Guard Carbo now the shortest. Mm. Would Carbo have won that hand with the king queen? I know there was two kings. I don't think so. What was the board? Would, wouldn't have filled up though, right? No. The yeah, board was eight nine king king four. No good for the king queen. Little glimpse of those payouts at the bottom there, guys. One million dollars plus for first place. Super juicy. Hey, Joe, can I... Uh can I make a really bad, really, really embarrassing confession? Sure. I, of course, know Sean Astin from Lo Lord, Lord of the Rings. Loader, sure. But I actually didn't realize he was also the kid from the Goonies until today. I could tell you didn't, you didn't quite recognize the the gravity. As soon, the as, soon as you said that, I, I understood... I understood who it was immediately, but I was embarrassed to admit that I actually... That I was today years old. I was now years old. Now, to get to Aaron Paul Kramer's question, he said, did you ask him about his dad, John Aston?" Mm. I did, which is kind of awkward because obviously the fellow is not alive anymore, was not alive at the time. But yes, John Aston played the original Gomez Adams. Oh, okay. And he had very, obviously, very nice things to say about his dad. Oh, my goodness. This is a pot being pushed to Preet Parmasto. Dato was the opponent in that hand. Folded turn. A lot of red 100K chips in that pot. And we think that that may have put Preet Parmasto into the overall chip lead. Our quote-unquote cash game legend stacking them up there, feeling great. <laughs> Sorry. Pay attention, Mr. Gonzalez. We've spoken about this before. <laughs> At least he doesn't have headphones on now. <laughs> At least he didn't accidentally call an all-in. All right, folding rounds. You guy back in the driver's seat on the button, ace jack. We are just five-handed guys, so it's going pretty fast. I expect to see an open here. Slightly sized up. Banana Bread asking, does wearing earphones, headphones not allow for outside assistance? Nobody at the featured table would be allowed 
to use any electronics, including smartwatches whatsoever. And of course, everything that you're seeing here on the screen happened 30 minutes ago, so there's no such thing as real-time assistance available. Um, but also, if there was any chance of that, we just take it out of their hands completely. No electronics on the feature whatsoever, and this is what we're going to actually be showing. When you're not on the feature table, it's fine. Mufi says, this tanking makes this terrible to watch. I'm going to do you a favor, Mufi. You banned. Go touch grass. Ace, king, eight, two diamonds. Top pair for you, guy. Four hundred seventy k in there. Carbo super short. I think you can just bet the one big blind if you want here. Yeah, just a little bit more. I, I, you definitely want to size down effective stack here. Only about nine bigs. So you're gonna do. You're gonna get away with this a ton, and you absolutely want as much action as possible when you are strong as well. Benefit from the smaller bet under both circumstances. Inappropriate innuendo asks, why spend 25,000 channel points to get timed out by Joe when it's easy to get timed out for free? Because you never know if it's going to be a real one. <laughs> you never know. You, it's the fine line to tread of something that's just going to get you... Timed out. <laughs> banned versus banned. He did air quotes, guys. All right, back in the mix, guys. Fast and Furious, shorthanded poker, just the way I like it, UTG. For Hilaire, ace 10 of the offsuit variety. Definitely going to want to play this one. 25 big blinds effective. And yep, I think it looks like 175. There it is. Gonzalez King at five suited. Has Hallert covered? Two options, three bet or flat, never folding. Just makes the call. I think that was very reasonable at this stage. And does flop a gut shot. Doesn't really want to make it, though. <laughs> does not want to hit that gut shot. Checks it to Hallert. Uh, I think Kenny probably just wants to check here a bunch with this combo, but does have the gut shot. I think betting is not the most ridiculous thing ever. I think as we get closer to final table situations, though, the ICM pressure is on, and therefore maybe you see a couple more passive actions on the textures like this where you have showdown with the ace high, and you can still improve to a 10 or an ace that might give you the best hand, and, of course, the gut shot that Joe mentioned as well. Technically speaking, Gonzalez should speed up now here with the gutter himself, trying to rep the 6, the 7, the 9. If Gonzalez were to make it like 300K here or something like that, probably is enough to get Kenny to fold. But Kenny, so studied, might still find a flow given the more passive check back on the flop. Gonzalez knows what's up. Okay, 200,000, a little bit cheaper. That might just be cheap enough to keep Kenny in, though, because he knows his opponent probably should be betting their gut shots here. And then, of course, just some complete airball bluffs as well. Yeah, nice work. Maybe just a little bit too cheap to get the folds from these particular kinds of ace highs. And that is a great run out for Kenny. Really, in the grand scheme of things, ace 10 doing very well here. Can Gonzalez find another bullet to try and bluff? And if he does, can Hilaire find the call?
Gonzalez is not relenting. This is, does not look like a huge bet relative to the size of the pot. Is it 400 something? 450. Yeah, Kenny's like, uh, this is about as good of a run out as I'm going to get if I'm not going to improve. But against the big blind. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it's this is a, a horrible spot. But uh, your opponent's going to have to lead bluff this turn a lot, and they're going to have to go again if they want to try and get you off exactly what you represent when you check this flop. Can he put all the pieces together here? Makes the fold, yeah, I, and you can understand why. Really, really tough in situ. Gonzalez. Bluffs Hallert out of a decent sized pot. That's going to leave Kenny with fewer than 20 big blinds. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to take a minute to once again plug the North American Poker Tour happening in Las Vegas. Not only will there be a three day live stream, which includes the main event and the 5K high roller, there will be two days of filming of the big game on tour. The big game is coming back. <laughs> We're going to have an open free roll tournament on November 5th at Resorts World. To qualify, folks, for the casting phase of the big game, we will be staking a loose cannon to play in the big game just like before. And if you're thinking of coming out, you can use your gold power passes, I believe. Oh, no, maybe we ran out of those for Vegas. I'm not sure, but the main event is quite affordable. Vegas is quite affordable. Resorts World has three. You don't think Vegas is an affordable town to visit, Nick? Flights to Vegas are cheap. Flights are, yeah. Hotels all over Vegas are cheap. He's shaking his head right across the street from Circus Circus. Of course, we want you to stay at Resorts <laughs> World. You got Crockford's. You got the Hilton. You got the Conrad. All you got to do is plunk a couple of bucks in the Buffalo machine. Could pay for your whole trip. That's what I'm planning on doing. Yeah, that's reasonable. Resorts World actually has one of the most respected poker rooms in Las Vegas right now. People love Resorts World. They got great yeah. mixed games happen there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Resorts World, actually, incredible venue and beautiful little card room. And the Carbo all in. I wasn't done with the NAPT yet, but the schedule, the rest of the schedule at the NAPT is cool. Lots of mixed games. Even Alan Kessler approved of the variety of games being offered. Imagine this. You walk into Resorts World, walk into the card, and you say, hey, has anybody seen Joe Stapleton? And from a faraway slot machine, all you can hear is, Buffalo! It's, oh, there he is. It's right, Buffalo. it's right near the, the poker room. Is it right next door? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about as close to the poker room as you can get. Are you going to land and you're going to realize that they've moved it or something? We have a, we yell Buffalo sometimes. What we, what we yell normally when we have really big hits is we yell, I love gambling. I love gambling! <laughs> That's what we yell. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so, I'm just so sick of all the contrarians today. Anyone who says that Vegas isn't affordable has only ever gone to the Bellagio and to the MGM. Okay, you got me. Not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the rest of Las Vegas is quite an affordable city. They charged me like 40 bucks for a Bloody Mary once, and I, and, and I almost cried, and I think maybe I'm just scarred from that moment. Yeah, sure. If you go to the win. I think it was at Paris, Paris. Paris, sure. Is it Paris? It's just Paris. Is it? Yeah. It's just the one Paris. I'm thinking of New York, New York. Or Circus Circus. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Luxor, Luxor. Or the Win Encore. <laughs> Crockford has rooms for $59 USD during the NAPT, no resort fee. Well, huh. Okay, that is, that is very, very affordable. No, it's going to be a great event, guys. I'm only 
I'm only joshing with you. Definitely come down and give it a spin. Hang out with hang out with the hang out with all the peeps here. Top pair for Gonzalez in a position. Yuge is still our chip leader at the feature here. 63 bigs behind. 56 from Jose. Yeah, nice close to one-third sizing here. The effective stack is much deeper between these two individuals. Therefore, slightly larger continuation required than if we were sort of sub-25. Didn't this just happen? No, 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 there wasn't a king. Okay. Gonzalez with trip kings now. Yep, another contrarian getting banned. Full house on the river for Gonzalez. It's not the craziest spot to actually make some hero calls with the with the seven. The same people saying Vegas is expensive as, as are the same people saying there's no good food in London. I I can I know exactly what you're getting at. Yeah, I agree. Four hundred fifty thousand on the river. That's what Gonzalez likes, wants to bet. Oh, that looks like a lot more. When you're trying to beat that shot clock, you just grab a handful of <laughs> chips. It's hard to be specific. Yeah, so 550,000 in the end. He looks tempted to make the hero call. Guy really giving this some consideration. I just kind of feel like in these spots at this stage of the tournament, yes, if folks know you're doing this, you can be exploited, but like there's just not that many bluffs. People aren't bluffing that much here, I don't think. I just saw a great bluff against Kenny. Even still, I just think if you just fold it in most of these spots, like you're probably going to come out on top. I think the chips you don't lose at this stage are more valuable than the chips you try and win. It makes the call. Yeah, just King Jack. Sorry. <laughs> oh, unfortunate call there for you guy. You know, I, I definitely get it. I definitely think this is not the most unreasonable hero call, but it's going to cost him a ton. And that puts Jose Gonzalez way out in front on our feature table. 71 big blinds. Now that's 5.6 million chips. Victor, you guy down to 4.3. Still a very respectable 53 big blind stack, though. <laughs> Jose Gonzalez, now chip boss at this table. Victor, you guy still with a respectable stack. Yeah, I, look, I give him credit for making the call. That's a tough call to make. I will certainly be overexploited in that spot. And you would have been right by folding, Joe. In this particular one, but also, <laughs> in my case, they would have bet me out on the flop or turn. I think I need to have third nuts or better to call on a river. I don't think I've ever called the river with worse. Don't limit yourself, Joe. Fly that's free. What, that's why they call it no limit. Fly free. <laughs> Fly free. Five, right. 
All right, back in the mix. Gonzalez, our new featured table chip leader. Going to open the king seven suiting. Probably a fold here for Kenny. A6 off. Not really the best hand. Might sometimes find a three bet here, but there might be a better candidate than A6 specifically. I mean, Ace-5 being the obvious. Um, obvious slight adjustment there where you can still make the wheel. Victor doesn't want to play the queen jack this time. And what do we got in the big blind? Because that's off. Ace queen suited. 21 bigs to start the hand. 21 bigs. So there's going to be a three bet here almost every single time, Joe, especially versus that cutoff steal, especially against the big stack. The question is, does he just want to 3-bet jam or 3-bet non-all-in? If he wants to be balanced, he probably should have some non-all-in 3-bets here. But at this stage in the tournament, he might just say, I don't want to mess around with this post-flop nonsense. I just want to get the folds right here, right now. Potentially get called by worse once in a while, too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, given the ICM. Quick fold. And Kuznetsov who, if you remember, had like six, seven big blinds at the start of this session, is now up to 25 big blinds. There are at least two shorter stacks in this tournament. There at this table, Kenny Hallert with 18, Gerard Carbo with nine. Not to mention whatever shorter stacks may be at the other table. Jose Gonzalez staring into the abyss, thinking about how he's going to spend that million dollars he's going to win tomorrow. Gonzalez has folded this hand. Action on Hallert, who folds. Victor Ugai on the button, King Deuce. No, thank you. Blind on blind. The shortest stacks. Queen 10 for Kuznetsov. Sorry, not the shortest stacks. Carbo in the big blind with the shortest stack. Kuznetsov is third in chips. This is just a shove, Joe. You don't do anything else but all in here. Your opponent is way too shallow not to find the jam here. The, sho the shove is just way too profitable. The shoving range here is... Ridiculously wide. Queen 10 is way inside that range. All in. Yep. Three, all in. Gerard Carbo hasn't looked yet. Hasn't folded yet. Oh, Ace wow. king for Carbo. Yep. Snap call. But Queen 10 still has significant equity here, Joe. That is correct. Carbo, the favor. Oh, because that's off. <laughs> Okay, they're showing down, which means action is completed at the other table. Gonzalez is happy no matter what happens. <laughs> Who's <laughs> next up chanting, Mamacita? <laughs> Carbo the favorite, but at risk. 38% of the time, it's going to end real bad for him. And that is a lot of the time. Flop is jack high. Ace king. Faring well. Because Nets off with 10 outs to knock cuatro, out cuatro, Carbo. Cuatro, 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 cuatro. Space not a factor either. The turn vale. is an ace. Oh, Joe. What's the matter? That's top pair for Carbo. Why are you making, what are you making noises for? The double belly buster. Right. Come on. Top pair. Top pair, top kicker. Carbo's got to fade the king or the nine for the double up. River is a king. Oh, wow. What a run out. Two pair. No good for Carbo. That's a straight for Kuznetsov. 
the online qualifier from Espana has been dispatched. You can understand the slow exit. Oh, man. Look, what a great run, though. Great uh, result as a qualifier, especially. Drink in the moment. I know it hurts right now. What it was a hell of a run. Yeah, great performance from Carbo, too. Played some very, very good poker. It's going to be quite emotional for a run like that to come to an end after having satellited in. 11th place finisher, $74,200. That leaves us with the final 10 players. Kuznetsov up to 38 big blinds now after having been at seven big blinds earlier. And we're going to wait for a player to be balanced to this table. Two tables of five now. We're on the bubble of the last redraw of the tournament. Another prize jump on the horizon, $22,000. And Yannick Schumacher will be joining us at this table. Going to take the seat in between Kuznetsov and Gonzalez. He's blind. And play continues. 30 minutes left on this level. Yes. Kenny wanting to get a look at Schumacher's stack before he gets going. Schumacher comes with only 14 big blinds. Kenny going to be happy about that, considering he's only got 18. Nets off on the button with 6-5 offsuit. I'm really touched by Carbo, Gerard Carbo, and his uh, emotional exit there. Yeah, obviously meant a lot to him. I mean, you know, should be really proud of the way he uh, conducted himself throughout uh, our broadcast and all the poker I saw from Carbo. Very, very solid stuff. And obviously as a qualifier, what a huge return on investment. 71K, not too shabby. I would accept 71,000, Joe. Would you like 71,000? Yes, I would say I'll yes. I'll take it right now, I'd sure. Say, I would say sure, why not? Okay, a little call on the button here. Kuznetsov sneaking in a couple limpy limps. And potentially the easiest seabed of all time for one big blind on the flop. <laughs> Schumacher checks. Kuznetsov bets 80,000. GG. Next hand. Thank you for coming. There's the check. Is Kuznetsov going to find the one big blind bet with 6-5? Looks like it. Yeah. 
Matthew Macker, just 14 bigs. If there was ever a moment to start finding some jack high floats, not sure this is it when you are <laughs> so close to that FT. How about jack high jams? <laughs> jack high folds. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, like I said, if it's if he's a little bit deeper, there's a chance you can do some weird stuff there, but it's probably not going to be particularly approved. They're all deep now, yeah. <coughs> no first nice to see a couple limps sneaking in there, though. A nice little maneuver from uh, Kuznetsov, uh, who, by the way, is up to 40 big blinds after that Queen-10 encounter versus the Ace-King. Both players playing their hand perfectly under those circumstances, but... Here we go, up to 40 bigs. Kuznetsov might be on for the run of a lifetime. <coughs> First ever EPT Cyprus trophy. Main event trophy, at least. Some other trophies have been handed out this week. Speaking of which, the mystery bounty is still running next door. That payouts there, absolutely gorgeous stuff. I like, bet it was a good turnout, yeah. It's like 110,000 just for first before mystery bounties. That's awesome. For a 1600, pretty juicy out there. The 10K is running right now as well, I believe. Yes, it is. Yeah, super high roller. You got opening 8 7 suited. Call or three bet. Oh, wow. Kind of surprised to see that fold. Neither one. Let, uh, let Yannick Schumacher play with his 14 big blinds. Queen 10. Yeah, maybe a slightly tighter fold there on the button, just being aware of that short stack and their ability to shove SB. But again, they're not going to do it super duper light. So you get to play the king jack in position quite frequently at this deeper stack depth now. But uh, Schumacher is likely to fold here. Last player to act is our big blind, Gonzalez, with the suited 9-4. Playing it cool, playing it cool. You got it. Not that hurt after the River Hero call. Still second in chips at this table. Still over 50 bigs. <coughs> Sorry, that bugs me. Sorry, Joe. What's mine is yours, buddy. Anything, anything with a dot on it, all this, it's got to go. That's, um, I admire your ability to let the let those sit there. <laughs> Sorry for those who don't know what's happening. I just reached over to Nick's laptop and turned off some of his notifications. I can't, I can't be seeing them. As long as you're not in my internet history, that's fine. <laughs> that, that's that's the only. I'm thing not that's reading anything. I'm just getting rid of dots. It's the only thing that's off the off limits, Joe. One raise, one hundred and sixty-five thousand. Okay, you heard, Jeppy. His nets off. Just taking his time, taking that first 30 seconds for a lot of his decisions, which uh, I don't personally have a problem with. <laughs> Wait, how do you? All right, well, if he hadn't looked at his cards, yeah, I don't know about that, but just double checking before he folds, I think. Maybe he's like challenging himself, like he's actually not looking until he has five seconds left. <laughs> the blink approach. Poker's become so easy for him, he has to take, make every, every decision within five seconds. This is 25 seconds too much, my dudes. Schumacher playing a similar game here. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit slow. You know, folks always said that when you introduce 
the time clock, one thing that will happen is there will be some players who use their full 30 seconds every single time, and that's what we're seeing here. We saw Kuznetsov do it. We just saw Schumacher do it. We're seeing Hallert do it. Hallert only used 15 seconds. See, they get to make you guys sweat a little bit. There's something to it. Levente asks, guys, I have a question. Which hand would have the biggest equity against aces? I would say uh, like a royal flush with the other ace. <coughs> Maybe four kings. Three of a kind of any <laughs> thing is doing pretty good against aces. <laughs> two pair plus? Two, pa two pair plus, yeah. Thank you for your question. Lurchy Lurch says, Jesus, what reason could there possibly be to think about 5-3 off in an early position for 20 seconds? Here's the reason. $22,000. $22,000 if there's an all-in and a call at the other table while you're thinking about it. Seems reasonable. It's like four buy-ins. I like that you think of it as buy-ins, and I think of it as... Mortgage. <laughs> Several months of mortgage. You're like, I could play more poker. If I won $20,000, I could play even more poker. If I won $20,000, I could get out of credit card debt, sort of. One of my credit cards. How do you think I got this job, Joe? <laughs> Folding around. Mr. Kenny. Uh, so Kenny here, the effective stack, 15 big blinds, and you guy in the big blind with 56. So, bit of a funny one. Queen seven, obviously a pretty garbage hand. I would argue that Victor, you guy in the big blind here, can apply a lot of pressure versus limps, and apply a lot of ICM pressure. I think queen seven is one you can just get away from here pre-flop. And he has sixes. Yep, sure enough, probably would have just been a shove versus limp. I have a general question, Nick. Not really a poker question, but it does apply. Why is the dumbest people have the strongest opinions? Is that the Dunning-Kruger effect? There's a little Dunning-Kruger in there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mazza right here has a good answer. Because the more you know, the less you know that you don't know. That's a great way to phrase it. I like that. Mm -hmm. Holding around. Small blind. You guy. Playing into Kuznetsov, now 38 big blinds. So 38 big blinds, the effective stack here. I think I uh, see quite a lot of limping in these spots, especially with the, uh, the big blind ante in play. I think also Kuznetsov not super incentivized to go to war against another big stack, but pocket sevens might be good enough for him to find a raise. I think also a check here is fine as well if you just want to lower the variance. 
a lot of the stuff that likes to limp here, you have pretty seriously crushed pre-flop too. So let's see what our friend Nikita wants to do. Five seconds. One is okay, right? And flop is good still for Kuznetsov. For some reason, yeah, I was going to say, I don't see you guy One bet. just playing this. Yeah, and in my opinion, Kuznetsov can never fold sevens here. I know there's two over cards, but this is a board that your opponent's just going to fire all day long. As of bluff, especially in a limped pots. Nitsov makes the call. Nine of spades on the turn. You guy does have the ten of spades. Decides to slow up. Interesting spot now for Kuznetsov. Obviously, you can still get value from some spades, like, for example, literally the 10 of spades, maybe some ace X of spades that limped. I mean, ace three with the ace of spades, for example, might be a hand that still bets the flop that checks turn. You can still get value from when they have the pair in the flush draw. I think also seeing a check here isn't completely ridiculous. Just keeping it chill. Don't get check raised. Great run out for the sevens to be oh, the best yeah. hand still. And it might be a one and done situation for you guy on the flop and then checking it to the river. Hard to imagine a three folding at this point to a river bet. Hard to imagine a nine or a king ever folding. That's exactly what I was thinking. And it's not completely outside the realms of possibility that Kuznetsov still has the spades and check turn to try and get value on a later street. Although most players would try and find a continue or sorry, a bet on the uh, on the turn there when they fill up. You guy chucking out a time bank card. I believe previous times we've seen this has been when he is going to bluff or value bet, but in this case, is a bluff. Not sure if I like this one, Joe. I just feel like, first of all, it's not, not a size that's really going to get much of what I just described to fold. Uh, but also, I mean, I think a lot of the stuff that has showdown on the turn is what's checking, right? If, uh, if Kuznetsov had a hand... That was easily bluffed. They probably would have used it as a bluff themselves on the turn, right? So it should be an easy call for Kuznetsov here. Kuznetsov has counted out the call. Kuznetsov has made the call. Yep. You guy caught by Kuznetsov. Yeah, I think if you want to try and convince some smaller pairs to fold there, you're going to need to go bigger than that. But after everything was said and done, it does make the call a lovely little spot. Closing in on the end of this level. 12 minutes to go. Hallert with queen six suited. Gonzalez has already folded under the gun. On to Victor. Still second in chips. At least at this table. Folds this time. Because net's off. Six deuce suited in the small. And 
and will be out of position to Schumacher, who is still the shortest stack. Schumacher with eight high, connecting cards. It's going to cost one of his big blinds to see a flop. Huh. Schumacher needs at least another 30 seconds to come up with the answer here. Five seconds. It's going to need another 30 seconds. <laughs> I guess maybe some of the time is thinking about shoving if you're taking this long. I don't know. I it seems like if your options are fold or, or, or peel, maybe you don't need a full 90 seconds. I, I think 8 7 is, is good enough to call here at the stack depth, but you know, the ICM implications make it really tricky. And you honestly, kind of lose your ability to shove in this situation when you think that long. Not that it was an option to begin with. I'm just trying to figure out what. I think, I think the other issue a little bit, Joe, is it could be a tell because when you're sit, sat there counting how many chips you have, it's like, you, it's like you're deliberating. You know, I have a very marginal situation. I'm really deliberating if I have enough chips to actually make it worthwhile. Does that make sense? But then again, you could also do the same thing if you just didn't want to make a stake, mistake when you had kings and you were deciding whether or not to flat. So I think it kind of balances... It's not that big of a tell either way is what you're saying. I, there's, I, there's an argument that it can still be anything. I think for certain individuals, they may, may read into it as a tell, but I think that probably in the long run, if, it isn't. It, depending on the, on the opponent, it could, it could actually be balanced for, for in both directions uh, as strength and weakness. But uh, a, uh, two time banks used. Maybe it was three, in fact. Counting with king 10 suited. Second shortest stack. Five seconds. It's going to take a peek at the other table, it looks like. Folds. At least that one's kind of a decision. I, I, I would, I, that's definitely a, a tougher spot, for sure. I mean, it, compared to some of the tanks that we've seen, with you have six deuce off and similar. The decision to fold King-10 suited there, I would argue, is actually very, very close and that did require a little bit more time. Because easily a hand that Kenny could choose to play there, obviously a very high value, high equity situation. But with the ICM pressure currently on, I think Kenny very happy just to avoid any variance at the stage this close to a final. Absolutely playable, but with ICM potentially just one you still want to get away from. Actions folded around to Schumacher. Queen three in the small blind. You know what this diamond means? Would be playing against the chip leader out of position. Invoke, invoke your color, invoke Diamond grenade. Schumacher using another time bank. Is this not just a, a fold, Nick? Uh, absolutely, Joe. Yeah, I really don't think there's any opportunity to play this hand any other way. And it seems like Schumacher is just burning some of his time banks here to stall, to be honest. The 8-7 off one, actually, eh, I, 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 would, I would argue that that was close, though, for the small steal. This one, I would argue, probably 100% folding. So that was a walk for Jose Gonzalez, who had ace-nine. I'm just, I'm just wondering if at some point 
the tournament staff are going to start <laughs> commenting on or potentially adjusting rules here. We've seen it before, haven't we? Um, if one table seems to be playing much slower than the other, they are tracking that. And under those circumstances, they may ask them to act. That would okay. cause some action to be taken, yes. Uh, we don't know what's going on at the other table. Yeah. Tournament staff's going to be across that. Yeah, and, you know, I default to their wisdom. I don't know if I'd call it wisdom, but... <laughs> authority. I kind of know what they're doing. I default to their authority. It's not like they're a fortune cookie. <laughs> Magic 8-Ball's got wisdom. Did you hear they're doing a Magic 8-Ball film? Is this a bit? No. Is it a horror movie? It will be a horror movie. Yeah, all right. They're also doing a, a Matchbox. So is the Magic 8-Ball going to be part of, like, the Mattel Cinematic Universe? Oh, yeah, and I think they've just licensed, like, 70 films after the success of Barbie, including Magic Well, that was the plan all along, but, yeah, I imagine things have ramped up since then. Like the best thing that I think My Little here. Pony, right? They're doing like a whole, I think they're doing a girl themed one. Barbie, My Little Pony. I think Polly Pocket. Isn't it Polly Pocket directed by, um, what's the girl's name who did girls? Yeah, I think you're right. Lena Dunham. I think it's Polly Pocket by Lena Dunham. I remember thinking it was a joke, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah, I think you're right. And then anyone who saw. The latest Transformers, who stayed for the post credit sequence there, knows that there is a lineup of boy-themed toy movies coming out in the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. Pocket tens for Gonzalez in the small. Kenny in the big. 13 bigs. Gonzalez has made it 2 million. He's going to put Kenny all in. Jack 3 suited for Kenny. And all right. He took 8 seconds. I think it's fine. Right? Yeah, I think so far Kenny's been pretty reasonable with the with the with the time banks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so multiple things going on here. The first being that uh, the tournament staff has sort of caught on to the fact that folks are taking a little longer than they have to with some of these decisions. Yeah, I understand. The second thing that's happening is Kuznetsov's trying to explain to you guy, but doing it in Russian while the hand's in progress, which Gonzalez isn't that big of a fan of. And all of this is understandable. The initial tanks are understandable. The tournament staff saying, hey, move it along. The players being a little salty about it because the short stacks are at this table, not at the other table, and not wanting Russian being spoken during the hand. All reasonable things, in my opinion. Axe is folded Kenny. This is getting pretty close now, guys. 13 big blinds for Kenny. Blind v. Blind. King 9 can just be played as a jam here profitably, according to Chippy V. Um, and we might be getting close to that time when he's got to start pulling the trigger or he's going to be blinded out. 
Yeah, and this is awkward timing right now that he's going to let this tick down. <laughs> yeah, he's go. going to take it. He's going <laughs> to he, take it, yeah. He but, can't say anything if he shoves. Okay, in fairness to Kenny, though, he's used basically no time banks this entire tournament. So, oh, and this could be a call as well. I think it is a call. Yes, to what you're saying, Nick, that he hasn't used time banks, but I think part of the tournament staff's issue is not even time banks being used. It's just what, yeah. when your decision it's gets made in the last seconds. five seconds every single time, it's a little sus. Yeah, I think, I think we've seen that pretty consistently from Kuznetsov as well, so that's fair. Uh, look, uh, guys, I, if you're looking at your preflop charts, King-10 is always a call here, obviously, with ICM, though. Uh, you guys might be tempted to just miss this one out completely and just maintain the stack. It is... A decent chunk out of his stack. So Yuge currently also 53 wow. bigs. Yeah, and I, I, I really think that that's probably okay, given the circumstances. He's in a really good position to find some more ladders. King-10, obviously, uh, going to do okay there. But you could also argue that Kenny's adjusted range means that it's not as high value as it would be if we were looking at a pure blind v blind chip EV push fold um, chart. All right, the shuffle has started. This is going to be the last hand of the level at this table. Under a minute to go. I understand you. I understand you. But Kuznetsov may be still a little salty from that ruling earlier as well. Obviously, Olivier was the staff who determined that the one chip would not be ruled an all-in call. They have a life. Oh, okay. Schumacher under the gun. Folds the king seven. Players heading to break. As they make their folds, just you guy and Kuznetsov left in this hand. Hey, take your time now, gang. <laughs> Queen five suited. A significant raise here. Uh, yeah, it's a 280,000. Uh-oh. Kuznetsov with ace, queen, domination, situation. Yeah. I, I think we just see a three bet here every time. I think Kuznetsov just wants to end it right here. Don't really see too much value in having a flat. If you're not three betting ace queen off blind v blind here, then you know how frequently are you finding three bets? Are you going anywhere near enough? Okay, I take it back. I guess we're gonna see a flop. Kuznetsov pretty under repped here. Very under repped, yeah. Eight four four. You gotta be pretty happy with Ace Queen. Yeah. Station Nation, in addition to Domination Nation. Yeah, it's a spot where I think you guy probably tempted to continue on a very dry texture where he's gonna get plenty of folds. Cause Netsov with a hand that is super under repped and therefore probably gonna be doing quite well on this texture. One bet, two hundred and thirty thousand. You guy continuing. For near enough three big blinds, this pot's getting pretty big already. One of the bigger pots we've seen played so far. Not a lot of these players have enough chips to play through the streets. But remember, this pre-flop raise was a little bit bigger. That might have been part of the reason why there wasn't a three-bet pre-flop. Yeah, but I think also given... Uh, the play we've seen from you guys so far, I feel like that larger size blind v blind is really called for, right? When you're playing out of position, you got to pump mm -hmm. up the volume. Otherwise, you're going to get floated way too light and uh, always be playing out of position with hands that you probably want to generate folds with. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Ace queen. A massive favor favorite still for Kuznetsov. You guy pumps the brakes.
five seconds. Three check. River check. is a king, yep. Kuznetsov decides to check back on the turn. And the river is the first somewhat scary card. Yeah, and I mean, I think you guy here can try and rep that king. I think that we've seen quite a lot of this line from him so far. I think it's a little bit tricky, though, because I think Kuznetsov could easily have some king high floats in this texture that check the turn because they're concerned about getting to showdown without too much action. I think we could see a hero call for here from Ace Queen. Five sixty, the bet. Yeah, but you'll notice the larger size than the previous river bluff. It's only slightly though. Still a good price. Wow. Gets him to fold. Kuznetsov nice lays it down. And Victor Ugai kinda had an up and down level there. Not massive peaks and valleys. Yeah. But a couple of hero calls gone wrong. One bluff snapped off. One bluff got through. These five players headed to break. We're still at 10, which means five players at this table, five players at the other table. Jose Gonzalez still out in front with 55 big blinds. Yannick Schumacher in the danger zone. Danger zone. Along with Kenny Hallert. From what we understand, these are the shortest stacks overall. Players taking a 20 minute break as we continue the bubble for the final redraw of the tournament. More from EPT Cyprus in 20 minutes time. On the button from Rob Holling to 50,000 with Jack 8 suited. King 7 the hand from Brown and Schaefer. Brandon's got a lot more chips than I was expecting him to have after that double up or double through. Defends with King 7 and we have a King 9 5 flop. Top pair for Schaefer. He's a 94% favorite here. Holland continues for 70K. Yeah, continuing in a similar vein. Very, very high frequency continuation bets we see in, uh, in all of these hands, really. Not too much for Schaefer to have to protect against. 20,000 more. He is just going to make the call on the flop. We know he loves protecting. Taking us to the turn, which is the eight of clubs. Hollink now with third pair. Schaefer's got a gut shot to go with his top pair. Oh, Hollink slow down now that he picks up some showdown value against Jack 10 or Queen Jack. Looks like he has chips in hand. Not really sure what a bet here is going to accomplish, but there it is. Smell that oh. grapefruit. Calms me down. I don't know why only 70. Maybe you should heat up, it's better. Hmm? Maybe you should heat up. 
instead of calming down. Yeah, I need to calm down. Sniffing citrus to calm down. He really needs to have a meeting with his management team after that, if that's what they came up with. All right, Brandon, here's your thing. It's a grapefruit, and you smell it to calm yourself down. It'll be huge. So Schaefer calls the 70K. It's a jack on the river. That's two pair for Rob Hollink. Well, not slowing down on the turn might pay dividends. This pot is 410,000 in the middle. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Schaefer going to need to take a big old whiff of that grapefruit if you see a river bet. Hollink shoves on Schaefer. Straight to it. This is for call. the title as Brandon Schaefer calls all in and he is beaten. We are denied a two-time winner. Three of the final, two of rather, of the final three players were former champs. But it's Rob Hollink who was victorious and takes the inaugural EPT Grand Final title and trophy in Monte Carlo. So I think 12k, 24k. Williams raises it up. Hussein shoves Ace 8. Take your moment, kid. This for the title. Take your moment. Mom, Dad, come over here. You want to play a big pot with those two? How many you got? Let's count them up. Count them up. Two, three, four, five. You have to ask for a count. Arshan's counting his chips. Seven. He really is the star of his own movie, isn't he? Well, it's about 24 something, 25 less than big blinds by my awful mass. The bet is actually the raise is 644,000. That's a correction. 644,000 is the amount. What are you to gamble, aren't we? What are you to gamble? Oh, uh, it's not gambling. Why do you think the same six guys make the World Series of Poker final table every year? I think by 2020 standards, Ace 10 would have been a snap. Jeff Williams searching for information. I call. And calls. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Jeff Williams has his opponent dominated and is on the verge of becoming an EPT champion. The first EPT millionaire. The parents watching from the rail. The flop is 975. The flop is five of hearts, nine of hearts, seven of spades. I've already announced the flop, Lee. A repeat seven on the turn. Seven of repeat seven. On the turn. Jeff, is in the Jeff is still in front. Arshan is looking for an eight or a six. That's some chop outs. It's that is fight. not an out for Arshad Hussein. That is the end of the tournament. And that is the moment that Jeff Williams won the EPT2 Grand Final back in March 2006 in Monte Carlo, winning 900,000 euros, more than a million US dollars.
220. 210. How unlucky is this? Right after the last cold deck. Another cold deck. Unheard of. Bona says, Surely. funny how the crowd here is much calmer than in San Remo. I think that's probably something to do with, A, the location, right? Like Monte Carlo just feels more, uh, what's the word, reverent. Secondly, the amount of money that they're playing for. Oh, we have a flop of six, two, seven, two spades. Also, no one had time nice. to get tired in San Remo. We talked about the fact that it was a two and a half hour near enough final table, so everyone was pumped up. Here, I'm sure everyone was fired up at the start, but look outside. It's really late now. They've been playing for several hours. You get fatigue from the players, but you also get fatigue from the rail. Yeah, and you can totally. see it in the card room as well. Like it, it, it's definitely late, right? There's only one table going on in the background, largely cleared out. I mean, I remember this very clearly. We're talking like early hours, probably of the morning now. Bad look like Scott Siever, by the way. Four grand, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do lookalikes with other poker players, Spraggy. They have to be people who are independently well known. Even though Glenn Chorney is a dead ringer for Chris Moneymaker, that's not even a bad look-alike. That's just like a separated at birth. Does not count. Well, it's an interesting spot to see Glenn Chorney believe to decide to lead. Brown with just the ace-queen high. Maybe he's struggling to find hands that beat ace-queen pre-flop and didn't re-raise before the flop. I'd definitely be struggling to find hands that would fold to a shove here when they lead. Right. Four-handed, you'd think that eights and above are going to get it in with you pre-flop. And then if he leads, maybe he's, he's seeing where he is with something that could fold to pressure. You have two overs and the backdoor ace of spades. Tony calls the clock again on a hand that he is involved in. Cool. All in and a call. Induces the shove, snaps it off. Ace shows ace queen, and Glenn shows pair of aces. Remember, all the times that he has called clock, seven. he has absolutely had it. Isaac has an ace of spades, the queen of diamonds. He would need to Don't do it to him. Don't do it to him. And here's the turn. spade -a Nine of spades on the turn. Okay. Always a sweat. It's never easy. Now, Isaac needs a spade, or is he fourth place finisher? Let's see the river card. King of clubs. No, I... Isaac Barron exits in fourth place. 589,000 euros, leaving us with the final three players. Glenn Chorney wins another big pot, claims another scalp, and the blinds are now 60,120,000. I think this is the biggest blind level we've reached yet. Third place prize. Cool. Near enough a million dollars. Over a million dollars for yeah. third. For third place, 1.1 million, James. Love this. 10 ace four. Gut shot for Chorney. Not much for Villamio to be excited about. Check, check. check. Everybody a millionaire. Turn card, check of spades. Chorney with Broadway. And crucially, I think Villamur picking up a double gut shot of his own, a nine or a king would make him a straight. Reasonable situation for him to start bluffing in. 200,000. <coughs> Glenn Cole. Oh, yeah. Story checks out about him not feeling that well. Into your sleeve, pal. Okay, not Johnny. into your hand. And oh, Villamur makes the dummy straight. I mean, he's a little wooden. I wouldn't call him a dummy. Three-handed, flops check through. Insanely cruel run out for Villamur, who makes the second nuts. Much. 550,000. 
Maxime bets 450,000. Okay, 550,000. How much do you have left? This is such a pure run out for Chorney, not only rolling his gut shot straight on the turn, but his opponent getting there on the bottom end of things. 550? <coughs> this hand. <laughs> so sick. Literally and figuratively. I'm all in. Glenn, re race all in. Chorney shoves on Villamur. Call. And call. Who calls and is out. Queen King for Glenn. Not straight for Chorney, and Villamur busts in third place. 715,000 euros. And it's heads up in Monte Carlo, the season four grand final from April 2008. Glenn Chorney taking on Dennis Carlo for the title trophy and first prize of more than 2 million euros. Well, Glenn Chorney ran very well at this final table. I think he played a very solid game as well. But Carlo, the second time he finds himself heads up Thank this you. season on the EPT, right? Correct. Oh, yeah. very lucky river for me. And we really haven't seen much from him in this show at all. Yeah, kind of a silent, understated move into second place. And now he's playing for it all in the trophy. Marina Shufflock and Deal. So I can't say Dennis Carlo looks a little like Nick Shulman. Nope. Not allowed. Joe, you have to appreciate and understand the rules of bad lookalikes. If I find someone that looks like Nick Shulman, can I then say he looks like Dennis Carlo? As long as they are famous in the mainstream world and not in poker. Small board pass. <laughs> rules are rules. That was a walk for Dennis Carlo, by the way. First hand a heads up. He definitely looks like evil Nick Shulman. I only say that because of the goatee. It's just the way it works. If you have a goatee, you're the evil version of someone else. That is King Queen for Carlo, who is at a significant chip disadvantage. Three fifty. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, that's putting it lightly. Then it's raised to three hundred fifty thousand. Mullen. Re-raise on in. Shawnee shoves with ace five. Carlo calls it off. Not bad. Dennis on in with king, queen. King of hearts, queen of diamonds. Glenn Shawnee, a six to four favorite to win the season four grand final. Put an ace out there one time, please. Let's see the flop. Or hearts. About to be runner up again. And the flop comes. Ace, queen, six. Ace, queen, six. We have a pair of queens for Dennis, but a pair of aces for Glenn. Glenn is in the lead. Dennis needs another queen or a king for second pair. Please don't do it to me. <laughs> don't do it to him. It's a six. It's never been done to him. Well, that takes away the king outs. Only a queen's good now. Let's see the river. Card. Thank you, Glenn. No queen. It's, a it's not a queen, and it's over. Glenn Shawnee takes it down. Dennis Carlo, a runner-up, two times this season. Shawnee, well done. Thank you so much. Well done. This is the NAPT, my babies. Comeback time. Yeah, we can play for real now. One time, come on. Yeah. And mom, I'm playing heads up on TV. You'll see you later. <laughs> Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Marchese. William Reynolds is the champion. Good. Vanessa Seltz is the first ever two-time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. I think I'm gonna have fun playing with you today, sir. It has been a minute. See you on the strip.
Yes, we will be in Vegas next month for the North American Poker Tour, where we are hosting the big game on tour. But right now, we're in Cyprus. An ultimate leg of the 2023 season of the PokerStars European Poker Tour. In day five of the main event, as we continue to play down to the final six. Ten players returning from the break. I am James Hartigan, and joining me live via satellite, it's Maria Ho. Hello, Maria. Hello there. And these are the 10 players still in contention, Maria. And things are starting to get a little bit shallow. No longer any monster stacks. The biggest stack, Jose Gonzalez, has 55 big blinds. But we do have a couple of shorties. Kenny Hallett playing 12 bigs. Yannick Schumacher playing nine bigs. As we go to the 50K, 100K blind level, I ask the question, is it this level where something gives? Is it this level where we finally get down to a single table? Uh, I feel like the ICM implications are so high right now that it feels like it might take half of another level, but I think it'll depend a little bit on how active some of the big stacks get as well, but certainly some of the short stacks will just be waiting to outlast one another. Yeah, so we have got the chip leader at the feature table at the moment, Jose Gonzalez. Uh, we can see... The prize money is still up for grabs, along with the names of today's Fallen. Next player out, $74,200. And yeah, to emphasize what Maria was just saying about ICM considerations, there is now a jump with every single bust out. Make it to the unofficial final table. You've locked up the better part of $96,500. And then the sums of money become really big. We start looking at six-figure scores and more. The single biggest slices of the $6.4 million prize pool generated by the 1,320 entries. 125K for eighth. Money jumps going up. More than a quarter of a million for fifth. More than half a million for the runner-up. And more than a million for the winner. Of course, the top six prizes will be paid out tomorrow when we play down from six to a winner. A reminder that we're live with the final table tomorrow at the slightly later time of 1 p.m. Eastern European summer time. That's noon Central European summer time. So two tables still in action, two tables of five. And Maria, the key thing to let you know is that because of those ICM considerations and because we've got a couple of short stacks at the feature table, both Hallett and Schumacher, we did see plenty of, let's just say, tanking. I'm not going to use the S word. I'm not going to say stalling, but Olivier, the floor man, has warned them a couple of times to speed up. There is a feeling that people are unnecessarily using every single second of their 30-second shot clock on every single decision. It's to be expected, again, when we're playing for this much money. And again, it's just a part of the game that we have all come to, I guess, tolerate. And a lot of it is just on tournament organizers to find a good solution to these situations. And it seems the solution is if there is a perception, if there is a feeling that people are in any way abusing the 30 seconds, then they will lose the right to having those 30 seconds. It's what I like to call the Cabrel rule. Suddenly you find yourself with 10 seconds to make a decision. As we look at Jose Gonzalez and his 55 big blind stack. He was the player who eliminated Tonka a couple of days ago. Kenny Hallett, the former November Niner, made the final table of the World Series of Poker main event back in 2016. He is the second shortest stack right now with just 12 big blinds. So, guys, I'm going to insist. Oh, here we go. Pace game. That table was playing a decent pace. So I'm going to strongly encourage you to, to play the game as it's supposed to be. We still play soft and foreign. We're tracking your hands. If some people are throwing down... I'm going to monitor them. We are monitoring both tables. So, play at the normal pace. The shot clock is here for decisions. She's not there for wasting time. So, play the game. Know that if you carry on, I can take some decision like reducing your clock. There we go. Allowing only one time main card. I can do a, a couple of things. So, 
That's my recommendation. Okay. Thank so you. players strongly encouraged to use the shot clock, what it's there for, for difficult decisions. And there was the threat that if there is a feeling that this table is playing too slowly compared to the other table, if there is a feeling that certain players are just unnecessarily tanking on every single decision with any two cards, their shot clock will be reduced. You have been warned. So here we go, level 29 underway, blinds 50,000, 100,000 with a 100K big blind ante. This, the last level before the dinner break. What I want to know, James, is why did you ask me how long it would take to reach the final table? Why don't you consult the widget? Because the widget is out. The widget had us down to a single table at least a level ago. Things have got what? a little bit shallower than they normally get. We're looking at a 39 big blind average stack right now. Is there a glitch in the matrix? How could the widget be wrong? It occasionally slides, but it will get back on track eventually. With five seconds left on his shot clock, because Netsov shoves on Schumacher, all into call. Ooh. Ooh. This is a call, right? Yeah, you're the shortest stack, so you certainly have the least to lose. And you've just got to be well ahead of a lot of the hands that Kuznetsov is going to be willing to shove with. But it's just about, okay, if I fold in this spot, there'd be some collision effect later. You hate calling it off versus being the one to shove, but... He makes the correct decision. So Schumacher all in and at risk, but with the best hand right now. And again, we wait for play to conclude at the other table before the hands are tabled and we run the board. Let's see what's happening over at the outer table. It's Preet Parmasto, Halil Tashirak, and Andrea Dato in this hand. Three players going to the flop. Masto betting here. Tashirak currently second in chip, so the biggest stack at this table. He's folded. Andrea, the announcer, Dato. Start of day chip leader. Calls the bet. And these guys are going heads up to the turn. Dato has quite the posture. I mean... He's also just still, <laughs> completely still. Hard person to read, it would seem, in this spot. He has amazing table presence, quite an intimidating stature, and he's even more intimidating when he verbally announces his bets. 450,000. <laughs> Looks like this has been checked to showdown. And the pot is being pushed in the direction of Andrea Dato, which means we can come back to the main stage to run out this all-in. A reminder, 
Kuznetsov shoved on Schumacher, who called all in with ace 10. Two to one favorite, but has to fade kings, fives, has to fade ugliness to ensure he survives. Queen, queen, nine on the flop. Turn card is a deuce. So far, so good. And a four on the river, ace high holds. And that is a double up for Yannick Schumacher. Well, that changes the dynamic. Schumacher now playing 17 big blinds. Kenny Hallett now becomes the shortest stack in the tournament with 12 bigs. Meanwhile, Nikita Kuznetsov yeah. is hovering around the 25 big blind mark. The other two players at the table, Yuge and Gonzalez with around 50 bigs each. And when we mention, you know, how shallow some of these stacks are getting, we have to remember how much and how significant it is for most of these players' stacks to be even doubling up a short stack. Yeah. So even though you want to keep the pressure on in this situation, it's also putting your chip position at risk. Zephyr on Twitch says, how do you like Schumacher's watch, James? I love it. Vintage Casio's top notch. <laughs> I need to step up my watch game, James, especially when I end up making a feature table on a poker star stream. I just yeah. I didn't know that you would be You see, if you got the whoop judging. band for fitness, Maria, you don't need the Apple Watch. Okay, okay. Noted. Rolled it around to Kuznetsov on the button. He's passed. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's thinking. He's thinking. Now he's folded. So, Schumacher, small blind, jack eight. I think the standard play here in this situation would probably just to find a call here and limp in from the small blind. Hope to see a flop cheaply. Ooh. Okay, Gonzalez with kings in the big. So looking at this from Schumacher's perspective, do you just feel you're being exploited for limping? Do you feel you can actually get to the flop with Jack-8, or do you just have to fold here off a 16 big blind stack? Of course there's going to be that part of you that feels like Gonzalez with that big stack is going to be exploiting you, but there's really not much you can do about it. So even if you had that thought in your mind, you don't really have the right stack or the right hand to play back, and so you see just the fold, and you just have to... Be willing to understand that at this point, those chips are so incredibly precious and you really have to pick your spots wisely. But nobody likes the schoolyard bully, of course. E.M. Taylor asks, did they say earlier you can't wear smart watches at the feature table? So only analog watches? No, because you'll see that Yannick Schumacher is wearing a digital watch rather than an analog watch, but no watch that can receive any data, text messages, emails, signals of any kind. No electronic device which can be used for communication is allowed at the feature table.
I don't know how many times Yuge and Kuznetsov have to be warned to not speak Russian when they both have cards in front of them. Schumacher using some time here has enough of a hand to certainly get involved. It's just a matter of how much. If you're playing for chips, of course, unexploitably, a shove is never going to be a mistake. But the problem in this spot is you really just don't want to get called. You never want to have your tournament life at risk, especially when there is somebody shorter than you. <laughs> The nice part about this is that Kenny, who's in the big blind, is shorter than Schumacher. So it feels a little bit better when you do shove and the person that's most likely to get involved in the hand, the big blind, is somebody you have covered. Yeah. Schumacher chipping up to just shy of 20 big blinds. In fact, almost drawing level with Nikita Kuznetsov. This is where I feel like it's just going to get slower because once Schumacher got that double up pretty early into this level and now has a pretty similar stack to one or two other players at the table, then you can definitely afford to just stay patient, hope that somebody busts from the other table, continue to ladder up. I don't know whether you're trolling, Bernardo, but I'll answer the question anyway. What's the problem of speaking in Russian? Cyprus is in Europe, a place of many languages. People speak whatever they want, lol. Wouldn't matter whether it was Russian, Turkish, Japanese, Hungarian. There is an English only at the table rule for when a hand is in progress. All of the dealers speak English, but they don't necessarily speak every other language in the world. So if there are cards out, you have to be sure that the players aren't sharing information about the hand or discussing the hand while it's taking place. You can only police that if you can understand what they're saying. Hence, English only at the table. It's a common rule in most card rooms on most poker tours around the world. Gonzalez with a hand that you would open from the button, but facing this all in, you know, in one sense, Gonzalez might feel like you could afford it, but in another sense, you might not want to give up your chip position in a situation where Haller could also be very strong. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good timing from me. Maybe because you, you don't put the head. <laughs> Bernardo, you're kind of defeating your point. You asked a question very clearly in the English language, and now you're claiming that you don't know how to speak English. Or if you're talking about a hypothetical person who can't speak English, I suggest that they don't engage in conversation at a poker table whilst there's a hand in progress. I never understood the people that got mad at the dealers for enforcing the rules, you know? The rules are in place. It's your choice to come and play this tournament, and you have to abide by them, but... There are certain players that don't like being told what to do, I guess. Important question for the commentators. That's you and me, Maria. I'll let you handle this one. Bagpuss wants to know which pizza should I get? Meaty feast, Chinese chicken, or double pepperoni? 
Ooh, I, when I thought that you had me at meaty feast, I just love a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm all about like meat lover, Supreme, that pizza. But then you said double pepperoni. And so yeah. now I'm a little torn. The Chinese chicken does not speak to me, though. No, that I doesn't agree. really we feel like we can, we can the out, right pizza. We're rolling yeah. out Chinese chicken, so now we've got a coin flip between meat feast and double pepperoni. I'm siding towards the double pepperoni. I like to keep it simple. I don't need a variety of meats. I like pepperoni on the pizza. <laughs> Do you not like putting Parmesan or crushed red pepper on your pizza? Do you not like a, a lot of different things? No, 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 no. I, just said, I don't like a lot of different meats. Pure. I do like a variety okay. of toppings. I'm saying when it comes to the meat, I'm happy with just the sausage. Okay. So which way are we leaning? Meat feast or double pepperoni? The guy needs an answer. He's got to make the order. I'll go double pepperoni. Okay, there you go. We, we've, we've agreed. We've reached a consensus. I concur with Maria. Gonzalez <laughs> has raised with ace four only to run into the aces of Kuznetsov in the small blind. Gonzalez understandably applying pressure, but now is run up against it. Raise. Can confirm this there three is... bet non all in sizing, yeah, off of a 20 big blind stack is very strong. Kind of surprising to see Gonzalez burn a time bank here on this decision because I just imagine Ace Four is going to be in the muck pretty quickly again. Kuznetsov is repping a lot of strength to be able to do this. Granted, you know, understanding that Gonzalez, of course, is going to be opening light because he is the big stack here, but still, just not a spot where you think you need to give it a lot of thought, even if you wanted to posture a little bit. No need to. Use the time bank. Oh, bag push. Don't push it. Can you help me choose a starter? These are the options, Maria. Chicken wings, garlic bread with cheese, onion rings, garlic mushrooms, potato wedges, potato skins, curly fries, mozzarella sticks, jalapeno cream cheese. I... You know what? I feel like you got to go two starters with this list. There's a lot of good choices on here. I would go... Oh, okay, no. That might be uh, too carby. And... Yeah. Don't, don't, garlic mm. bread pre-pizza just feels like too much dough. Okay. What do you think about chicken wings and curly fries? I am with you with chicken wings. I would personally go with mozzarella sticks, but I'm happy to concede and say yes to curly fries. Well, or We don't even know if he's agreed to order two starters yet. Well, do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to say do three. Chicken wings, Ooh. curly fries, mozzarella sticks, double pepperoni pizza. You're in for a good night. Monitoring the other players as well. Face has been better 
They're very equal, right? That one's for nine. <laughs> they have very equal yeah. stacks. They have equal stacks. Um, similar, sa same, same amount. amount. Yeah. They will for sure keep holding. Everyone be with five, right? So obvious they're gonna do this. They all check for the stacks. Victor, you guys going to start the action here with King Queen. Yeah, how to raise and take it the hand before this time. It better from first position, and it feels like kind of a nice spot when you have Gonzalez person that has you covered at the table in the small blind versus the big blind because they're less likely of course to defend hands from the small and so you don't really want to get tangled up with the only other stack that has you covered and it's also nice to be raising into the short stack as well because they're not going to be able to continue quite as wide and take it for Yuge. <coughs> Who has 49 big blinds, actually has now pipped Jose Gonzalez by 100,000 chips to take the chip lead. Pretty much neck and neck. By the way, Maria, I don't want to put you on the spot. Are you allowed to say what you're doing on the East Coast? <laughs> are you allowed to say why you're in New York? Or are we just saying it's unofficial PokerStars business? I thought you would be the one to tell me if I'm allowed to talk about it okay, or not. Okay, maybe um, let's just say that you're there doing something fun for PokerStars and we can't talk about it. I don't mean to tease people, but yeah, equally, I don't, I don't know how much is in the public domain. So I don't necessarily want to upset anyone by saying something we shouldn't be saying. Yeah, I mean, I feel like generic, generically just saying it's a charity event okay, cool. is okay, right? Yes. Yeah, but I'm excited. It's not being funny, guys. It's nothing that any of you can be a part of or enjoy in any way, so... It doesn't really matter if I give you the details or not. Not like NAPT Las Vegas or the big game on tour where you can absolutely participate, can absolutely be a part of it. I can't wait to see some of the submissions and the people that were, you guys are making stars on the big game because everybody that's come through the big game, I feel like just has been so memorable. All of the loose cannons have been incredibly fun to watch and i just can't wait to see who the new batch of people are going to be this time around it's like gremlins 2 the new batch <laughs> we go three way to the flop here a button raise from schumacher sorry a cutoff raise from schumacher called by Gonzalez on the button and Newgate in the big blind and Jack Jack three on the flop means sixes are still good. Certainly not a bad flop for the sixes, but again, multi way you do want to tread carefully. It's one of those spots where you don't mind having a little protection from all of the over cards that are out there and Happy to see Gonzalez get out of the way and also Yuge folding rather quickly. It's the best result you could hope for.
Testing change. Testing change for you. It does feel like they're playing at an acceptable pace right now. It doesn't feel that the uh, egregious stalling has continued. Yeah, so far so good on that front. I feel like, again, nobody wants to be down to 10 seconds to make a pre-flop decision. And it's a, it's a pretty severe penalty basically to incur at this stage so they're going to be reasonable and it's a lot harder when you're on the feature table right you feel like there's more eyes on you versus when you are on an outer table then maybe there's not as many people watching your every move and maybe not you know a floor person just watching like a hawk i mean down to two tables a little different but if there were three yeah. or four and there was a little bit of egregious stalling people feel like they could get away with it easier when they're on the outer tables Enrique Reyes watching on YouTube lets us know he's watching from Belize and is curious to know how far a player from Belize has got in any PokerStars tournament. Great question, Enrique. I have no idea. This is a mission for Howard Swains from the PokerStars blog. Howard collates all that kind of nonsense. He'd know. Obviously, I will happily give Stat Trick the challenge of trying to find it out, but he'll probably just message Howard. <laughs> So Uge completed in the small because Netsov is going to raise from the big with four deuce. And certainly there's good reason, I think, to attack limps, especially when you have the bottom of your range. And if you just assume that your opponent has a lot of limps here, then most of the time they're not going to have a hand strong enough to continue against a raise. <laughs> For the visual? No, for the work of this man. We must be kind. Kuznetsov has a hand that could flop pretty well. There's going to be a lot of boards that you can certainly connect with and continue on and does decide to just go the aggressive route, shoving all in against Schumacher. And this is a bit of a different spot in the sense that now that Schumacher is not the shortest stack, yeah. he's not going to be as willing to call it off which means you can certainly shove wider as the covering stack.
is an ad of ace eight of diamonds. So with Kuznetsov calling, Gonzalez checks his option. These two will go to the flop. And it's seven, six, Trey with two diamonds. Kuznetsov with the best hand and the best draw. Gonzalez, a little piece of it with that gutter, has that overcar to the board. But... Again, with the limp from Kuznetsov, certainly ranges could be a little bit wider. This doesn't necessarily rate to just be a flop that only favors the big blind. I'm not really sure about the extreme close-up of that beard. I'm worried we're going to see things moving in it. <laughs> How long do you think it takes the average person to grow their beard that long? I have no idea. I mean, the most I've gone without shaving is probably a week, and I've grown maybe a centimeter of stubble. <laughs> Half a centimeter. I was being too generous. Povertron says he didn't have a beard at the start of this hand. <laughs> well, it looks like Gonzalez made his straight on the end. And Kuznetsov just bricking off what was a pretty big hand on the flop. Left with ace high, definitely considering, you know, some of the just random stabs, considering there was just X on both streets to the river. A lot of the times, you know, ace high could be good here still against the random stabs. Straight is good. So we are 30 minutes into this level. Still 10-handed in the EPT Cyprus main event. Two tables of five. I'm going to amend the target for today. Trying to get down to a single table tonight. Six might be a stretch. Right now, this is level 29. When that concludes, we'll take a dinner break. We'll come back and play levels 30 and 31. If we get to the end of level 31... It's going to be past midnight, and if we still have more than six players, whatever. We'll come back tomorrow with them. But these things do have a tendency to go in waves. We'll have a long period of time where we're going to be stuck on ten. The next thing you know, you're down to nine. Bish, bash, bosh, you've got your six <coughs> players. All happens inside of 20 minutes. Has Joe stopped traveling with the cranker? It was very difficult to get it across the multiple borders he had to travel across to be at this venue. feel like Stapes has one job when he's on his breaks and he's, he's letting us down this there time around. Also, when it comes to utilizing the cooler machine, 
Maria, when it comes to cranking it, there is some very important software that Joe needs to use to aid his cranking. And unfortunately, it's been blocked in this country. Online Surely, tutorials. like a VPN or something, can, All, can get around it. <laughs> alas, no. Trust me. Do you think this guy hasn't tried? He needs <laughs> this online assistance. He needs these tutorial videos to help him crank it. So, sadly, not only do we not have the cooler machine here in Cyprus, but Joe is definitely not able to crank it right now. Highlight that Kenny Hallett has dropped below the 10 big blind mark, down to nine bigs now. What's important is that you don't want to get so short that you just lose all your fold equity. At nine big blinds, you're still going to have fold equity, but if you don't pick up a hand in a few orbits, then the big blind is going to be priced in to call. Hello, Queens. Yes, Federico, once a player busts, we will have a nine-handed table. The final redraw of the tournament will take place. The final nine will draw for seats in the main stage. Everyone will be sat at the same table. Rainbows, unicorns, fireworks, the whole shebang. This is the second time where Gonzalez has opened and he's faced a three bet from a stack that he has covered. And again, I feel like even though you want to sometimes get involved in this spot, maybe see just how strong of a hand they really have, put them to the test a little bit, just because you have the chips to do it with, it is going to be always concerning when some of these stacks decides to three bet the table chip leader because again they're going to be playing pretty honest in this situation with the short stacks out there people aren't going to be going for a lot of light three bets against the big stack oh wow a stack that they have covered a different story but yes this four bet is gonzalez testing yuge here and this is why you're happy to get queens, but you're not, right? You're happy because you know it's a big hand, but once you face this four bet, then it's really about, <coughs> wow, do I do I five bet ship here and, and just hope that Gonzalez doesn't have it? Do I call here and invest 1.5 million chips? So what you're saying is and that what looks to me like a completely unnecessary and incredibly spewy four bet is actually a genius move because it's putting the guy with queens to an ultimate test. And, and you would think that <laughs> Yuge will pass this test in the sense that if you feel like Gonzalez is going to have some light four bets here for precisely the reason of the ICM pressure and the money at stake, then you feel like, okay, I just hope they don't actually have it. But what if, what if they do? The chip leader and uh, the chip leader at the table and the big stacks can get hands as well. So you just want to make sure that it's not one of those times, even though that that's probably going to be more rare than them just trying to push you around. Right. But it would be complete disaster if they ended up having 
just the complete top of their range and the premium pairs that have queens crushed here. And you see you guys looking over at Hallert's stack, looking over at Schumacher's stack, just sizing up the fact that now he's put himself in a really tough spot when there are shorter stacks out there. If he folds queens here, I'm walking out. See you, Maria. Ooh. I got it. I got it. I'm here. <sighs> Jeez, thank God I came in early. All right. Did that just happen, by the way? I know I just came at the tail end of that hand, but should I? There's not some, like, explanation, like, why that was okay, right? Someone just folded queens the pre -flop. explanation is... The explanation is that you guys didn't want to bust before the short stacks, right? And I, what I have to say to that is, is if you're not sure what you want to do with the hand that you have in that spot, if you were to get four bet, then maybe just flat, right? It's okay to have your hand under repped in that spot. It's okay to decide to maybe not put more chips in pre and just go ahead and see a run out and play post. But if you end up three betting and you don't know if you want to go with it, if you face a four bet, then flatting is certainly an option that might be a little more attractive. I have a pitch also. <laughs> and that what, pitch what is, is that? Just, just fold the queens right away. I mean, it would be better than okay. what happened, right? Just uh, don't open them to begin I don't with. No, I don't know about that one. I, I don't. I don't know about that one, Stapes. That. So you. you so know, you I, think that three bet folding queens is better than not opening them? Who? Which? Which one? What do you have more chips right now? I guess is the question I'm asking. If you satellited into this tournament for a dollar, <laughs> then maybe I would consider it okay if you just wanted to open fold queens. Five seconds. All right, well, we have to continue playing somehow. You guy limping in, Kuznetsov taking the free flop. Well, that's a fun one. Middle pair. Straight draw for Kuznetsov. You guy. Not looking great here. You guy checks. Both, excuse me, you guy checks again after seeing the yeah, six of hearts off, on the turn. Kuznetsov had a good hand where he can just check back and a lot of the times will be able to just bluff catch against stabs really easily with second pair on the flop and sometimes on brickier turns can easily go for value himself. This one with the four liner to the straight, but having that backdoor flush draw makes Kuznetsov feel a little bit more comfortable. So everybody who was shouting about how you wanted to hear what the players were saying at the end of the last hand, are you, are you hearing this? Are you translating this? Is that, uh, is that worthwhile? Have you got it?
<clears throat> Kuznets saw picks up that hand, understandably. Not a very big pot. Hallert in the cutoff. Sub Ted Big Blind Stack. Gonzalez folds, Haller folds, you guy folds. Kuznetsov, blind on blind. Kuznetsov and Schumacher. 26 big blinds playing in 20 big blinds. Kuznetsov already shoved twice from the small blind into Schumacher's big blind. This time, though, this will be the type of hand where Certainly not going to shove with. Sometimes you can find limps, but folding is fine as well. People still discussing the pocket queens fold. All I'll say is this, is that I completely agree that if it had been kings or aces, we'd all be praising the fold. I wasn't criticizing the fold. I was just incredulous of the fold. The same way I would be had they folded to kings or aces. I'd have been just as surprised. And I was being sarcastic when I said it's better to open muck them. <laughs> huh. Some people's sarcasm de detector seems to be broken, huh? Was that sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> Take it how you want. I usually do with you. Action folds around to Kuznetsov. King seven off on the button. <laughs> Once again to the blind, Schumacher Gonzalez this time. <coughs> Definitely more attractive spots than to take some light opens into the big stack in the big blind. But for Schumacher in the small blind, this is the type of hand where you wouldn't mind seeing a flop, these middling cards with potential. All right, another limp in, check back. All right, keep your hands to yourself, Gonzalez. Ace, 10, five, two diamonds. That 10 right there for Schumacher, that's a good one. Schumacher checks the pair of tens. Sorry about that. He doesn't want to be in a situation where he's going to have to play a big pot with a marginal strength hand. Feels pretty good about it being the best hand given the fact that Gonzalez did check back. It's not a great turn though because Gonzalez can <coughs> certainly check back the flop with bottom pair. But Schumacher also with the nine of diamonds definitely won't go anywhere if Gonzalez chooses to bet. But Gonzalez has a little bit of showdown value as well. Check any check to the rib. It's an eight. Now for Schumacher, it's about can he try to get some value from some high cards? Feeling like tens and fives with the ace kicker has got to be the best hand. And if somehow Gonzalez has another 10x and you're going to be chopping with a lot of the 10x as well that has better kickers before the flop. 
and Gonzalez giving it consideration with queen high, but does fold. And a fold there. Schumacher picks up some chips, still in the 25 big blind range. Halfway through this level. And no offense to Kenny Hallert, but if he doesn't make a move, in the next 43 minutes, he's going to be in big, big trouble when the blinds go up. He's already in big, big trouble. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> King 10 for Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov after yeah, the fold for Victor Ugay. Yeah, certainly wants to know how much Hallert has right now in the big blind because Kuznetsov wants to already predetermine if Hallert has a hand he wants to go with. Is King-10 going to be good enough to call it off? And Hallert, eight big blinds. It's going to need to pick up something. Ooh. Well... We know that Gonzalez won't be folding queens. So how are queens going to get folded this time? A big gust of wind would have to <laughs> come by and swiftly put those cards into the muck for these to go anywhere near there. And the King-10 for Kuznetsov facing the three bet goes into the muck. Sorry, I told you that twice. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's like fucking perfect. Sorry. Never again. They should call themselves. Sorry. I realize. Yeah, it's better just to... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I realize both times later. I realize that what? Sorry. It's eight chips. Won't happen again. Eight. Won't happen again. Sorry. That's nice. They should learn to count. I'm still learning. I got computers for all that. I still get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, Gonzalez playing well and seems pretty likable, so wouldn't be uh, the worst person to root for. There's, you know, 10 of these players left and I personally have only played with a few of them. Don't really have much info or personal history with any of the other players. It's not an immediate for me yet. But somebody who's nice, respectful, plays well, pretty easy to root for. Mm -hmm. Of course, Haller, very easy for, but... Things are definitely getting tougher for him. Hard to accumulate chips when it's hard to find an unopened pot in front of you. So not getting a lot of luck from the cards. Not getting dealt just the type of hands where he's, he's not needing a premium with his stack. He, he just needs a viable option. The 
Well, it seems like some bonding is occurring, at least, now that everyone's getting deliriously tired. Schumacher with 9-6 under the gun says no, thank you. Gonzalez with suited connectors as well. And connectors for Hallert as well. Let's him go on the button. And another nine in the mix for you guy. They're suited, not connectors. Gone. And Kuznetsov in the big blind. Sure, why not? Also suited connectors. Genta on YouTube asks, how long are they playing today? Genta, how long is a football commentator's name? What? <coughs> how long? He does football commentary on Fox Sports. Is this a real th is this a real person? You've never heard of Howie Long? No. Definitely oh, not. Jeez. You definitely have. Where's your where's your boyfriend at? He's gonna lose we're, he's gonna lose it when you tell him that you've never heard of Howie about, Long. Are we talking about like NFL or are we talking yes. about soccer or football? National Football League. Terry, Howie, and the mm. gang, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, is wait, I, I might know this Terry guy you speak of. Terry Bradshaw, Howie NFL? Long, yes. Jimmy Johnson. I know Terry. Well, why, why didn't you start with Terry Bradshaw? I know because Terry Bradshaw. it wasn't Terry Bradshaw are they playing today. <laughs> it was how long are they playing today? Mm. Okay, well, I didn't I didn't know that Howie, Howie Long was... A, <laughs> person's name so i didn't realize you were making this whole pun but okay i'm sorry i've ruined your joke <laughs> oh good i'm getting a little bit of support in chat though see it wasn't that obvious to yeah, everybody from europeans Most of these people have never heard of howie long they also think football is soccer If anyone really knew anything about comedy and the joke I was making, they would understand how brilliant it is. Kenny Hallard, out of the gun. King six, not gonna do it. Seven big blinds, not from that position, not with as long as he's been holding on. Now you just got to hope that in the big blinds, you're going to have a better option or that somebody will bust this hand. All right, Schumacher, Ace King, a sight for sore eyes. Does have to play out of position against the chip leader should they go to a flop. At some point, something's got to give. Is this going to be maybe a cooler? Schumacher decides to limp. Might be looking to limp 
shove. And we have seen players Ugh. like to take their bottom of the range hands and go for a raise against limps, but Gonzalez just going to check with the 8-3 <laughs> off. I mean, don't you hate this flop? Don't you hate anything that doesn't have an ace or a king on it after 8-3? Yes. After the big blind just gets to get three cards? Yeah, and in this situation where perhaps you were looking to trap pre now you're just hoping to get to showdown cheaply you do of course have some cards that'll help you make the nuts but even if you turn top pair how good would you feel about that with the board being so coordinated and gonzalez just gotta fire this stab no equity really. gotta do it does have a gut sh yeah it does have a gut shot of course but it's for the low end of the straight and also don't expect to win with eight high at showdown very often so natural bluff here Unbelievable. I mean, what do you got to do to get a trade to fold? What do you got to do other than raising pre-flop? What do you got to do? <laughs> Limp trap fail. Horrible run out no matter what, unless the jack peels off. Yeah, and Gonzalez, of course, recognizing that with Schumacher limping in pre can have a lot of hands here that of course won't fold to a turn bet most common type of holding in this spot that would check call the flop might be some nine x's is maybe there's going to be a jack x open ender continue there from Schumacher so eight high still, of course, not going to win at showdown. So going to just attack the yeah. weakest part of the continuing range. And I think this is going to be all she wrote for Schumacher's hand. Just not a great run out. Not really able to comfortably condense this sizing. Really in no man's land going into the river ton of bad river cards wow Ooh. schumacher Dickie. stations so i guess sort of a limp trap you're still trapping here on the turn four on the river does miss gonzalez schumacher's gonna have the best hand if he can somehow get it to show down And now this is just all about how much resolve Gonzalez has in this spot to fire that third barrel. Oh, yeah. Schumacher, of course, could have, you know, played Queen X this way as well, just because you don't necessarily want to just be leading top pair on that flop. Does manage to get the cheap that showdown. Check, check. Surprised. You win, Schumacher. I'm sorry I doubted you. Schumacher does jump above the 30 big blind mark, which is like third on the leaderboard at this point.
Yeah, it does feel like at some point, though, something's got to give, and then it's just going to end up being maybe a couple of quick bust outs in succession. None of the short stacks have been consolidated or absorbed into bigger stacks, and people are going to just keep getting shallower and shallower, and who knows what's happening at the other table. I bet the other table's just chilling. I bet they're not even playing. <laughs> they're sitting out. They're playing Chinese poker. Yeah, no one's watching them. They're playing hangman. Oh, well, look at Schumacher. Look at, oh. Johnny Big Shoes over here. He's got all these chips now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a really great level for Schumacher to... Of course, double up within, I think, the first three hands of this level. And then and after that, just winning some small pots, chipping up, leaving Hallert in a bad position with King 3 off in the big blind. Oh, Kenny. Poor Kenny has to commit a third of his chips to peel the King 3. Or is going to stop and go if he has any piece of it, but doesn't connect. Uh, unfortunately, That's it's going to be the stop and stop. <laughs> stop and go. Another thing I used to do back in the day that I was told was bad when I had a short stack. Now, all of a sudden, everyone's doing it. You were just ahead of the time. I was ahead of the time in some ways. You were on the next level. Now, there's probably some very simple concepts from today that I was getting wrong. But there was definitely stuff that wasn't a thing back then that I was like, I'm pretty sure with 10 big blinds, I'm supposed to just call a min raise. And they're like, no, it's a shover fold stack. And now look at them and look at you. Ace five suited? I was on that a long time ago. <laughs> Before it was named sour artisanal sourdough, not just regular sourdough. That's right. Uh Figgy asks, is there a reason why they keep two separate tables instead of a single final table with only ten players remaining? Yes, absolutely there is a reason. Thank you for your question. Kenny Hallert down to three big blinds. All right, everybody. Let's get on your feet. Everybody get on your feet for Kenny Hallert. Hold your lighters in the air. <laughs> the man needs to find a hand and won't have fold equity even if he does. Not a whole lot of control of your fate at this stage for Kenny. Schumacher with King eight. No, it doesn't want to face the three big blind shove from Kenny. Gonzalez, six tray of diamonds. Nope. Kenny in the small with okay, King Deuce. Okay, well, you got, a, you got an open lane. That's all you could ask for. You don't really want to go up against four people with no fold equity, so. Now, is this a. in this spot. Do you like a min raise here, or should we go out of control and three, and three exit? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny goes for the full three X raise, maybe a little too big. You guy asking for a count with nine high. And makes the call. <laughs> Soft hand for hand, still a thing. Got to check out the other table first. Yeah. 
Kenny breathing a sigh of relief, knowing that his job is done. It's up to the poker gods now. Thunder Nick exclaiming, wow, nine high call. I, I, Maria, can you fold any hand there for a three big blind shove when you have two big blinds in the pot? I mean, like, no. <laughs> yeah. There is no, I mean, there is no wow in this case. Unless how, somehow it was a nine and a rules for playing poker. There is no shock that this was a call. All right, other table not going. Here we go. Kenny with the king high. King high holding. Queen, queen, ten. Kenny's just got to fade the nines and fives for now. Turn card is a six. That is decent news for Kenny. Does not add more outs that he's got to fade. River card. Nine, ten, queen, jack. Kenny's good. Kenny's good. He's got the bigger four card straight. Which means a double up and a survival for Kenny Haller. Eight big blinds, okay. right back in it. Yeah, definitely back in business, has fold equity. That's the most important part. You just don't want to have a random hand call and have to face the run out. So hoping that maybe this is where it's gonna start turning around and build some momentum for Kenny. I said put your lighters in there. Only one person did. Nikki Hartman, the only person, held up their lighter for Kenny Hallert. Well, there's one person in the Kenny Hallert fan club, at least. I feel like the whole poker community owes Kenny a big one for so kindly organizing a whole summer poker tournament schedule on a Google Doc for every player to access. And for that alone, we should all be rooting for him. Yeah, I mentioned that the other day. Because I don't play the World Series, I didn't have a lot of details. I was like, I think he does a guide. It has every tournament at every property in Vegas during that time period. And I mean, Maybe at this point it's a little more plug and play, but when he first did it, it's just a lot. It's a huge undertaking to do for free, right? It wasn't even like he was like, oh, you can drop me a couple dollars in my Venmo. Right. It was really just so that everybody in poker would know, you know, where to go, what, what tournament to play next. You know what's weird is he could probably sell ads in it. It's got a bigger circulation than most newspapers. Wow. You should really hit Kenny up with that. Look, Maria, much you like my phrase, all it takes is a chip and a chair. I, I just like to give things to the community myself. I don't need to be compensated. Mm -hmm. All right, what do we have here? A pair of eights for Kuznetsov is the best hand. This was a limp from Gonzalez, a complete from you guy, a check back from Kuznetsov. So an unraised pot, three ways. Maria, did you just refer to Twitter as X in chat? Ugh, do you have I to, hated myself for doing it. Do you it, have to do but... that in case you meet Elon Musk one day? Is that... Because it's not out of the realm that you would, like, be in the same circles as him. So I can see why. Just covering your bases. Don't answer. I'm pretty sure he already knows Who's I don't like off? him, and that's why I don't get any reach anymore on my <laughs> Twitter. Are you pretty much shadow banned? Oh, yeah, I've been shadow banned for years. Kuznetsov gets counterfeited on the turn with that queen pairing. 
Oh yeah, look at that. I didn't even notice. But I didn't even notice that he had eights and fives, and now he doesn't. Yeah, but he still <laughs> actually does have the best hand, which is nice. And does get a call out of Gonzalez. And the Jacks are live, the Nines are live, the 10 is live. <coughs> River card, not any of those cards. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't hit and the best hand on the turn is still gonna be the best hand on the river. Very exciting for Kuznetsov. Wooly says, a woman I work with... Sorry, go ahead, Maria. No, 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 go ahead. Well, what I was going to say has nothing to do with what's happening here, so let's see what Kuznetsov does. Uh, Kuznetsov bets River, gets the fold from Jack High. Wooly says, a woman I work with saw a line of Starlink satellites and it freaked her out. Wait till she sees all the Nazis on Twitter. Even scarier. Thank you for your comment. That's right. I mean on X. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just typed X to be honest because it's shorter and it's faster. But I feel like in conversations, I'm just still calling it Twitter. Or I'll say tweet, actually. I don't know if I really ever refer to it as Twitter. I'll just be like, oh, I, oh I, did you see that tweet? You don't say, did you see that X? It's so vague. No. And if you just said, did you see that post? It's so vague because it could be Instagram post, it could be Facebook post, it could be threads. When the one dollar for Twitter becomes a thing, that will be it for me. <laughs> Kenny jamming nine seven suited from the cutoff. Will it get through? As Maria said, he does have some fold equity now. It's not the kind of hand you can just call it nine five off anymore. Kuznetsov with ten nine. And again for eight big blinds, probably not. Schumacher with Jack Five. Nope. Nice pot and there for the Kenny. Power of fold equity. Yeah. Yeah, nice to get a hand that's two hands actually that's better than yours to fold, which is what you need to happen to just start chipping up. Winning the blinds and annies are so valuable to I think they're going to need that card from stack. Kenny to deal the next hand, but I'm not positive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, both of them. <laughs> I mean, it was good he got to shove them, but I don't think they're so good that he wants to keep them for another hand. Nobody coming up. The only thing that hand was missing was one guy showing that he got dealt aces. My mom's French. Don't say anything about my mom, Maria. I've learned my lesson, Joe. I told you. Like, if I didn't think there was an actual chance that one day I would meet her in person, 
you know, go to your house for the holidays, then yeah, sure. I wouldn't care, but yeah, no, you, know, you gotta, I'm, I've got a, yeah, you gotta stay in the good books. <laughs> you don't want to be hit with a flurry of passive aggressive comments at Christmas. You guy opening Queen 10. Big Toro asking, did we already have the dinner break? No, we have not. Dinner break is in 15 minutes. Ooh, a domination situation. 8-4 Trey, two diamonds. No disgusting cooler on this horizon. Tom's asking me what I'm having for dinner. Marie, I'm in this really bad loop where right before dinner every night, I end up having, I, mean, I get real tired, so then I have a coffee. And then when dinner hits, I'm not hungry. So you make yourself a plate and bring it back to your room for later? That would be a really smart idea, but I did not do that. I did last night, stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Check, check, by the way. Six on the turn. Um, I finally ordered room service in an all-inclusive resort. I had to pay a la carte room service because I missed dinner. And I was in bed, and I was like, you know you're not going to go to sleep till you eat something. So, King on the river. And is it more frustrating because you know that they're basically grabbing it off of the buffet line and just putting <laughs> it onto a plate? And serving it to you? It's Yes, it's frustrating because it's probably buffet food because I'm paying for it when I don't have to, and I really shouldn't be having dinner at 11 o'clock at night. Check, check to showdown. Cheers. Let's throw you. on Victor Ugai from Uzbekistan. Ace-10, all right, here we go. A hand. <laughs> Six three suited for Kuznetsad. Schumacher. Oh, baby. Big, slick energy. Yeah, it's even nicer when it's suited and you have your opponent covered. Wait, don't forget that you guys did fold queens, so I'm not sure, A Solus, if there is carnage incoming. Gonzalez makes the tight lay down with 10-4. Kenny. Wow. Not going to play. But somehow also has an ace. Oh. So, you guy... Probably not going to get into the position of reopening the action pre-flop regardless. Just lays it down. No carnage. Pretty nice pickup for Schumacher, and he's now up to 40 big lines. All right, well, while the dealers are getting changed out, time once again to mention the return of the big game. This time we're calling it the big game on tour.
slightly different version of the big game. This is happening alongside the NAPT at Resorts World in Las Vegas. There's going to be a qualifying tournament, two qualifying tournaments, November 5th at Resorts World. And I would check out the PokerStars blog and the website for the T's and C's of this entire thing. But in those tournaments, we're going to qualify people who will then move on to the casting phase to be staked $50,000 to play in the new version of the big game. Same rules as before. You lose it, who cares? No big deal. Poker Stars takes it on the chin. You win, you keep everything above the $50,000. And we're working on lineups for the big game right now. There's going to be a mix of pros, celebrities, influencers. Ja Wass knows what I'm talking about. Says, man, Resorts World is so nice. Great poker room. Sorry for that big sigh. I just can't deal with the contrarians today. I don't know what happened. Uh, but what with inflation, stake? shouldn't it be like 75K stake? <laughs> <laughs> you banned. I just can't. Yeah, well. I can't tell you who's you playing in the big game no yet. Mind. But I can't tell you who's not playing in the big game. I can tell you who said no so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you if you need a warm body, Joe. Oh, for the big game, you mean? <laughs> Kenny with a good opportunity to shove from the small blind over the open from Gonzalez. Maria, do you think you'll be able to sell enough action to play in the big game? <sighs> well, you know, I was going to ask you if, you know, since I've bought action of you over the years, like <laughs> I see. Maybe, maybe you'd be interested. Like, like, I mean, I would even sell you 1%, you know, every little bit helps. I don't think I'd be able to do that given my position within the show. Now, I actually started... Okay goofing about big game stuff thinking that this was going to be a snap fold from gonzalez but it is not a fold it is a call kenny hallard at risk but a big favorite yeah the really good spot for kenny can't for more just hoping to hold I thought that Kenny maybe had enough fold equity to get the ace four to go. Oh no. Oh no. This is a disaster. Now in Gonzalez's defense, Kenny would probably be shoving more than just bigger aces here. So it makes sense that ace four would be a call sometimes. But it's domination rotation. Kenny Hallert needs to spike a three outer to survive. He has clung to life with the short stack waiting for good spots. Got the good spot. And it's just gotten horrifically unlucky here. Kenny on the brink of elimination. Needs the Jable. No Jack on the river. GG Kenny Hallert will be departing in 10th place. And I, you know what? All right, Kenny's doing a good job smiling through the pain. I know Kenny wants it real bad. Yeah, but always a class act at the tables. Not surprised to see him take it really well, but of course, gonna be hurting inside. Kenny cashes for $74,000. Everyone else ladders up more than $22,000. And since there are only eight and a half minutes left on the level, what's gonna happen is we're gonna take a break now. The redraw will happen, then we'll come back, finish out this level, and plow straight into the next one, and that is the dinner break. We have uh, 45 plus 8 or 45 total. 45 total. When you come back, we'll take those 8 minutes, and we will switch to the next level.
Oh my God, they killed Kenny. Jose Gonzalez. 66 big blinds. This is the quote unquote feature table chip counts, but when we get back, we'll have all nine players on that board. Gonzalez taking 66 blinds to the dinner break, 39 for Schumacher, 25 for Kuznetsov, 24 for you guy. A reminder of what they're playing for, and we have finally reached the point where this graphic is relevant. Ninth place, next player eliminated. And we're looking to get down to six players today. So the seventh place finisher, the last person that will likely lose today is going to cash for $162,000. And tomorrow we get into the good stuff. Make it through to tomorrow. You're making over 200 k And first place, when it all is said and done, tomorrow evening, $1 million. Like I said, the final nine players are going to break. When we come back, they'll be seated on the main stage, all shuffled up, all jumbled up. We'll be playing more from EPT Cyprus in just about 45 minutes. Catch you then. Marcel Luss told me he was named after a boxer. That is a hashtag. Real fact. Fun fact. Fun fact, yes. So, time to sweat with Marcel, Joe, and play this hand from his perspective. Go. What? Go. Set. How much? You oh, 24. Yes. Sorry. I was going to say, James, if I were playing this hand, I would ask the guy to my right how much I should raise. I thought you were offering me out for dinner. <laughs> we raised to sixty-five thousand. Then raises to So re-raise from Ben Grundy. How much did we okay, well we're calling. It doesn't seem completely unreasonable to only call Forty more? Is that all it was? With nine tennis spades, but this is not a dream flop for us. No. And I'm probably just gonna check back and hope to pick up some equity on the turn. Yeah, pick up a straight card or a spade. Instead, it's the four of diamonds. Man, it's checked twice, so, I mean, he's completely missed and playing like a goober, or he's got something huge, and I'm weighted towards him uh, having something huge here, slow playing aces, kings, queens, a set of jacks. Well, Marcel's going to try and buy it. <laughs> I don't know what you three bet with that you check twice, uh, other than, like, crazy value hands. Players, you do not have to be here for the race. Go ahead and take a break. Wow, okay. <laughs> Ace Queen was the hand for Grundy. He was ahead. Okay. So, I guess. That was super connected. You left the space. I, wrong. I don't want space. I just want the low flop. I guess I was wrong about the strength of his hand, but also he probably should have bet at some point. If I put my chips in there, that's unless fun. you go all in, I will not lay down my hand. You raise me 40, 50, 60, 80. I had to get hand. Three years, I'm going to be Three years. You're lucky I had the hand that didn't hit the only hand that I raised there with that I'll doesn't hit the flop. I don't know yet. That's why I took the extra card first. 
so sometimes you are rude enough to play like you have three jacks now. Yeah, but I, could, I, I would check two with any pair of the Jackson Wicks. I know, I know your game. But you take me, I know what you take me for. A pair of nines, or tens, or eights. are now 5,000, 10,000, 100 ante. Queen eight again for Marcel. This time, this time it's going to be the winner. Twenty-five thousand total, and Ace Jack with Fraser Dunphy. He's in no re-raise. Queen tray for Karam. Does Grundy come after it just because it's loose? Oh. oh, yeah. King Deuce suited. Trying to run down his nemesis. Open ended straight draw for Marcel. Checks around. There we go. So Marcel has the straight. Grundy has now got the flush draw. This is going to get weird. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. Three X rays from Marcel. Grundy obviously taking it personally. After the last time they exchanged words. Are still very comfortable. Just calls. Oh, the all important river card. Man, in that club. No club oh, on the river, but it is a pair for Grundy. Oh, is he looking to snap it off here? That's what I'm wondering. Just 60 into 200. Yeah. I mean, this might be genius. Can he induce Grundy? I mean, either way. The Milky Bar kid's hand ain't good enough. I've got so to such hardly anything here. I can beat the stiffest bluff. <laughs> not that sick of a bluff to bet 60 here. There's so much in the middle. Yeah, I like it. I'm just not going to talk. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Poor dealer is like, what? <laughs> This might be the longest tank we've seen. Yeah. It's great size value bet from Marcel. I thought it was a little small, but 
maybe Grundy would have folded for more. I think that's one of the best hands we've seen so far, especially when you realize that it was informed by that confrontation between the two earlier. I have to play those smurry hands now. <laughs> Marcel has the big blow on this hand. Boatman folds. So Hussein, King Deuce folds. So blind or blind? Blind be blind. Question is, is he going to steal it? Suit and tie versus suit. This is my best chance to get chips. You understand? So it looks a little short. I haven't been looking. I know. You want me to look first? <laughs> I don't really want you to call him. Call me old fashioned. I think the guy who's uh, has the action on him first should look first. But. Marcel all in. And looks like it's being called. Well, Karam shoved on Lusk. Lusk calls all in. It's Jack seven against eight. Marcel the at risk player, but he is ahead. The flop. Four, four, ten. ten no jack, no diamond. Seven of hearts. Seven on the turn. It is always coming seven. And Mark Caram eliminates Marcel Lusk. Marcel out in seventh place, cashing for 112,000 euros. It's a clap, Jack. <laughs> it gets so complicated it's incredible to try to recreate games over and over again and quickly what does it take to make a movie these days Oh, man. I mean, it's funny, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, over the last, I don't know, 15 years or something or whatever, 10 years, it's, I mean, in, in theory, it's gotten easier. And you can make a movie for, you know, a very small amount of money. My, my first movie, you know, I did make for like $17,000. And a lot of people who are successful right now did make their movies, you know, for that for that amount of money. Um, but all that said, like, the I think the, like the last feels like the last five years or so it's gotten a lot harder um, money the money is just sort of more difficult to get um, so there's the money part the finance which is always usually like in some ways the hardest part um, I, I, I personally spent a lot of time um, hoping and a lot of time writing and you know I've written a lot of scripts that don't get you know I, a lot of things just don't get made so sometimes it's sort of like an abstract job of like hoping and like build building something that will never get made that happens a lot too but it's right now yes yeah, very very hard to get a movie made that's what it feels like so let's talk about the cast a little bit and our sort of association we play in a home game together or did play before i ended up getting super busy again club quarantine is uh and michael sarah obviously was a member of that game and was uh did you have a pre-existing relationship with michael and that's how he came to be in the game or did your friendship blossom during this game um yeah no i had i had um so i i met michael when i made another movie called person to person and i hardly knew michael at that point but we made we made another movie together that i directed but and then and then after making that movie we became friends um and uh became closer um and did that we actually did play a little poker um off and on during that time period but yeah it was it was this zoom poker group uh, club quarantine that um that happened because of covid that um 
I got further, I got deeper into poker. But yeah, I, I invited Michael uh, into that group. And then it's sort of like my relationship with Michael in terms of poker became deeper. Like we had we had played a little bit of poker, but um, together. And he had he had played poker in his life um, off and on. But it was when he when he did Molly's game, he got deeper. And then it got even more deeper during club quarantine because like he and I would, um, he and I would uh, like play the game. And then like, you know, oftentimes after the, after the game, we would actually talk about it and what went wrong or what went right. We would like this and we would, and we discuss the players and everything. I guess I, that's kind of where I wanted to go with my next question as far as how poker um, relates to this movie using poker as a device to show you how like how how impulsive and compulsive eric can be was that your plan all along for eric or is that just like a happy coincidence that you happen to discover poker you know become sort of deeper into poker while you're writing this um yeah it, you know like that that original draft that i was speaking about didn't have poker i mean i mean oh, this cool. this other draft this other draft that we were thinking of shooting and possibly going to shoot that we didn't, um, thankfully, um, was like 90% different than this this movie. Like I completely overhauled 90% of the whole thing. And and one of those things was poker. And in fact, I think poker was in, a, in many ways the unlocking of the script, I think, in some ways, because what ended up happening was that, and and it was because of this this Zoom poker group that I had gotten deeper into poker and my relationship with Michael talking about poker. Really, that's that, I mean, maybe this movie wouldn't even exist without that, cool. because I think that I think this movie needed that aspect to it. But but the yeah, what ended up happening was that the poker really unlocked the character and the script for me. I had this other I had this in, you know this perfect device, um, that was. Uh, you know, in the film, it's about this person who has sort of stopped um, playing with or having any kind of imagination or like an unwillingness to um, participate in this childhood world with his sisters. Well, now he has this other kind of place where he can play this adult, more adult world where he feels like he can have some kind of control or some kind of power. And I think, he, you know, when he was young, I think he had control and power and like he he was sort of like the king of that sort of world with them. And and now he's in, with with poker. He's like he, he. It's a sense of like comfort and like some kind of control. Did you find shooting the poker scenes to be challenging at all? It seems like you did it in such a way that they you you missed a lot of the sort of mistakes that people make by not trying to show the entire scene. I think it also probably helps the fact that you knew the game, Dustin, because it is something that notoriously directors who maybe are not au fait with with poker really struggle with they find it on that they reportedly found it really hard to cover it and ex show the audience what's happening and get the key information out there i mean it's hard it is hard i mean it's really really hard to convey the information um yeah. just um just in a practical sense because like the prop person didn't know poker and that became like a that already that is something that's like really really hard because um like you know, the prop people have to like reset the chips, reset the cards, and when they and when the cards are dealt, the right cards have to come out. It gets so complicated; it's incredible to try to recreate games over and over again and quickly. I did it. I on, on card counter. I I did that. That was my job to set the decks to make sure all when all the players had to pull their chips back. You know, we had a very small crew on that one as well. It's it's really uh, very difficult, but I think the way you chose to do it is perfect because things aren't perfect in these home games they're not perfect in the warehouse underground game yeah i'm so, i'm trying to direct the actors and everything but like if the prop person doesn't you know the prop person not knowing poker not even knowing like trying to really understand it was really just like a big challenge we were trying to just but look, luckily also michael was there to like he was also resetting things too we were the only two people in the room who knew poker so it was like really really crazy to sort of reset with nines in the big blind. Three betting would just put him in a bit of a pickle. You don't really want to get 
involved in a big pot against the other big stack when there's two shorter stacks. You're out of position. Let's see the flop. Let's go from there. Uh, Maria, it's called playing to win. <laughs> Six, seven, eight is the flop. Dumont has an over pair and a straight draw. Not too shabby. Jang's got two over cards and a gut shot. Also, NTS. I think he's probably just going to knuckle, I think. I feel like... Oh, okay. Like I, didn't, I didn't know that it was Dumont's turn. So I thought Dumont had checked oh, okay. and I was talking about Zhang, but... Okay. We saw that Dumont led earlier out of the big blind when Zhang had opened from under the gun, so. Now this is a relatively small bet, but I think is gonna get the job done most of the time. I don't think there's a reason why the bet needs to be super huge on, on that flop. Two of diamonds on the turn. Bill Razor tweets in with a very good point. So let me get this straight. Dumont is a driving instructor from France. He does not have the shape of head I would expect. <laughs> if you remember the cone heads. <laughs> we are from France. And that was their uh, that was their cover. They were driving instructors. Another value bet from Dumont on a safe turn. Yeah, really safe turn. And the river is five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That straightenized for pocket nines. What a great run out for nines, huh? I just want to know when Dumont started staring down his opponents when it's not their turn. <laughs> it didn't happen. This whole new demeanor happened. Once he became chip leader last night, he was like, wait a second. With great power comes great responsibility. I have a responsibility to stare down everybody all the time. And here comes the value bet that can never get called. Always the chance that Zhang loses his mind. Yeah, but so far I feel like Zhang hasn't gotten very out of line post-flop. And I don't expect him to here, even with the 10 in his hand. Nope. That is going to put some distance between Dumont and Zhang, however. The two chip leaders. Dumont over 10 million in chips now. Zhang opened this pot with his king nine. Dumont is three betting now to one million even. Zhang says, let's play. First three bet we've seen heads up. Another Jack X hand, another Jack high flop. Dumont out flops Jang. An interesting. Gonna check it over. 700. What do you do now, Maria? You've called a three bet pre-flop with this. You've pretty much whiffed. Do you call the over card and a backdoor nine high flush draw? Well, Zhang actually bet when checked to him. So unless he gets raised. Oh, sorry. He yes. He's the one. He betting. will Interesting. see the turn. Yes, that question makes far less sense when Zhang is <laughs> the one betting. Thank you. Now Zhang manages to pick up a gut shot. And I think when your opponent three bets out of position pre and then checks to you on the flop, I don't think that's an auto bet just when your opponent checks. 
I think sometimes you have to think about the fact that your opponent will have traps. It's a trap! <laughs> May the fourth be with you. And Shang decided to slow down on the turn. Seeing if he could hit some of his outs on the river. And sometimes I would want to see a check from Dumont just because, you know, the draw is missed. So maybe you could get your opponent to bluff their missed draw on the river. Because when they check back the turn, they do have some hands with showdown value, but they also have some draws that if checked to, they might try to bet. Makes sense. And Zhang does let it go. Hand 105 of this final table about to be dealt. So Dumont just calls on the button with Queens. Zhang has a pocket pair, a smaller pocket pair, sixes. I think he could go either way with the sixes. 650. He is going to come in for a raise to 650,000. And again, it's probably a better decision to raise when that ante's in play, because you're more incentivized to take down the pot pre-flop. There's more in the middle, more benefit to getting your opponent to fold. And last level, they are just batting each other around a little bit here and there, but we did not see pair on pair. You would think if Dumont is limping the queens, his intention would be to limp raise them. Now, does this look suspicious to Zhang that Dumont has limp raised the button? 2.2 million is the size of his three bet. I think it looks suspicious. And again, all cards. I would agree, though. We spoke about the ante being in play, but more often Smaller. than not. Wow, he does think it's suspicious. He's all in. Zhang shoves, Jesus. snap called by Dumont. He couldn't even get the words out of his mouth. That's how <laughs> nervous he is about this situation. It was just a, <coughs> a huge all-in, and it's domination nation. The underpair for Zhang, Dumont, who is an 80% favorite here and has Zhang covered, could win EPT Monte Carlo right here, right now. And we suggested that that anti and play might, things go, ma might make things go a little quicker here. They certainly have. I don't think anyone suspected it would go this quick. Of course, there is that 19% chance that six yes, is win this. Is. And if that happens, Dumont will be left with 14 big blinds. But four times out of five, Dumont will win this coup and win the title. Queen's holding on the flop. Zhang drawing to two outs. He needs a six to survive. And the backdoor diamonds are all Dumont's. The turn card is an eight, no additional outs. Zhang needs a six on the river. He must hit one of those two cards or Nicolas Dumont is an EPT champion. It's over. Congratulations. Dumont takes the title. Well done. <laughs> of course, when they got heads up, Spraggy, yeah. Dumont seemed quite keen to look at the numbers, was open to discussing a deal. Zhang said, no, let's play for it. Right, and a lot of people in the chat might be thinking, well, that's what you get. You don't yeah, take yeah, the deal, you end up second. Yeah, but yeah, if he's yeah, confident yeah, in his ability, I think he's right to go with it, play it out. Um, a v pretty much a cooler, I think, heads up with the anti in play. You can't blame him for getting in with the sixes. Thank you. Just unfortunate to run into the queens. So congratulations to Nicolas wow. Dumont. He is now an EPT champion. He will bag the platinum the pass. Point. He'll lift the trophy. Oh, he gets good. the first prize of 712,000 euros. <laughs> well, Danian.
early position. We've only seen one of his cards, the Queen of Spades. card is it ain't better than pocket kings pocket kings once more two hands in a row Eight folds. Ten folds. Dardanian haven't seen second card yet <coughs> but Dardanian's only got about 22 big big blinds behind those so if this is Queens or ace Queen might see some spicy four bat action here Uh oh. That's a huge chunk of. Well, whatever Vardanian has here, he is behind. He is four betting to 5 2 5. There is the shove from Kozenkai. And Vardanian is priced in, makes the call, clearly doesn't like it. Some popcorn for this. Yeah, yeah. Popcorn time. Pop it. <laughs> it's got to be ace, queen, or queens, right? Sit down. Hopefully, for his sake, it's ace, queen. Well, Danian is the at risk player here. Wish good luck to everyone. And whatever his other Come card is, head. we know he's behind. The question is how far behind? Oh, he's got queens. Yeah, would have preferred an over card. It was a gift, I think. Still like this. Greater good says, James, you were 100% dead wrong. Own it. What? I'm explaining someone else's ruling, dude. He's bad. Jack 4-3 on the flop. King's holding. A little bit of a more extra. Please right. on the turn. Does right. have diamonds working in his I favor, like though. Betting, right? It's more fun, everybody. <coughs> There's always the enjoyment in the pain. In the wind, Only a queen on the river yeah, saves Timur Vardanian. Losing is more addictive. <laughs> Let's swim. He's not wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with Thank that six much. on the river, Timur Vardanian Good. is eliminated. 15th place finisher in the yeah. first ever I EPT Cyprus like main event, <laughs> cashing for $51,525. <laughs> taking us down to the final 14. That means we need two tables of seven. That means we need to balance the two tables and bring someone from the outer table to the main stage. Yeah. The short stack, Mark Foggin, ace four off. Uh. This is a Foggin shove. 11 blinds. Hate getting called when you got the ace four, but this is how you pick up chips. This is how you gotta gotta get back into it. This is a, a dream scenario. Just give me a couple folds. In all in and sevens in the small blind for cousin Kai. That's treble. The old <laughs> hockey sticks. Yeah, reshoves. Schumacher in the big blind. Deuces. Folds. And we're in a situation where we have to wait for plays concluded at the other table before this all in is dealt. Looks like we're ready to go. 
And Mark Foggin is at risk here. And two to one underdog. Yeah, Mark Foggin just needs a break, you know? This level has not gone his way, but that's the beautiful thing about the game we love is even if, uh, you know, you step in a couple potholes, one ace in this hand can just turn things around. You'll be back where you started. Well, we see an ace on the desk. King, king, six, flop. Seven's anything huge favorite now. Anything above an eight will give more outs. That's one of them. Oh, like that? Another lady on the river. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and Foggin will win with ace high two pair. We do not accept three pairs here at the EPT. I've asked about it. Ace ace high two pair is still better. River card. Here's a queen, and sevens are counterfeited. Kings and queens with the ace kicker. See Mark Foggin double up through Bjorn Kozenkai. Too many pair syndrome. Telling you. We don't want three pair. So Foggin survives and now has 25 bigs as Kozenkai drops 